As you know, great innovations start in the garage. Today we are exploring Dolby Atmos in a Mercedes-Benz. Our Burmester sound system with multiple speakers transforms into a 360 fully immersive soundscape. Meaning music comes from here, here, and here. Magic, isn't it? One of many innovations by, of course, Red Bull gives you wings.
Once again, I stand at the brink of infinity. What lies beyond the shrouded path? Death? No, nothing that simple. The best part of me will live on in the scars I leave behind. I do not fear the darkness. I will brave the shadows, trusting nothing but my strength. I have found my limit a thousand times, and still I press further. Mike, are you seeing the last man alive? Mistake? A lesson. Now I will teach them to fear me. I will become what I must be. Why? Because I can. Hello, I'm Naz Alataha, Global Head of Lolly Sports at Riot Games, and I want to welcome everybody to Season Start. We have a lot of exciting updates to share with you. First, I want to introduce our new event, Season 2023 Kickoff. For the first time ever, we are celebrating the start of the League of Legends ranked season and the start of the 2023 Lolly Sports season together. Today and tomorrow, the LCS, LEC, LCK, LPL, LJL, CBLOL, LLA, PCS, and BCS will host a special two-day broadcasted event, giving you a first look at the 2023 season in an adrenaline-packed event. Each region will bring together players from every team in their leagues to play against one another in a series of games. 
When one league concludes its event, the next league will take over the broadcast and jump right into the action. So be sure to tune in to see what super teams each league drafts. We also have a variety of updates from our regional leagues. This year, we're reprogramming our weekly broadcast calendar and start times to minimize overlap between regional league broadcasts so that fans who want to watch more than one league can do just that more easily. And be sure to check out lollysports.com for a more detailed schedule of all the action coming to you from your favorite leagues, along with updates on regional formats, events, and more. We also have some exciting announcements to share about our global events. Let's start with MSI. This year, MSI is headed to London. To tell you more about it, here is London's mayor, Sadiq Khan. We're delighted to host the League of Legends MSI here in London for the first time ever. Esports is a growing sector and presents a hugely exciting opportunity for London and its gaming community. We want to bring the biggest and best tournaments to London and MSI is a brilliant way to showcase our ambition to become a centre for esports. I'm thrilled to support Riot Games in this dynamic industry, both at grassroots and professional levels. London warmly welcomes all the tournament players and fans to our city, and we wish you all the best. The event will take place from May 2nd through May 21st, and will feature an all new format. To tell you more about it, let's throw it over to Freak. Hey everyone, I'm Freak here to give you a preview of the new format changes coming to the mid-season Invitational. MSI is expanding to include more teams, going from 11 to 13. The LCK, LPL, LEC, and LCS will each send two teams, while the LLA, CBLOL, PCS, VCS, and LJL will each send one. MSI will now be two stages and the whole thing is double elimination. Play-ins will feature two groups of four teams each that play through a double elimination bracket. The winners of each group and the winner of the last chance advancement match between the two lower bracket winners will all move forward. Those three teams will advance to playoffs with the five remaining teams to face off in a double elimination best of five bracket until we crown a winner. Thanks Freak. We can't wait to see the new format in action. We also have some exciting news coming out of Korea. So let's go to Aiden Lee, Secretary General of the LCK in Seoul for more. Thank you, Nas. Hello, everyone. I'm Aiden Lee, the Secretary General of the LCK. I'm honored to share the exciting news that after five years, Worlds will be returning to Korea. Korea is the birthplace of esports, and you cannot wait to welcome teams and fans for Worlds. We'll have more to share about locations and dates in the coming months. MSI isn't the only tournament to get a new format. Worlds will also be getting a new format in 2023. I will now throw it back to Freak to introduce the new Worlds format. The new Worlds format will invite 22 teams to compete in three rounds of competition, play-ins, stage two, and knockouts. In the play-in stage, eight teams will split into two groups for a best of three double elimination bracket. The four teams coming out of these brackets will then face off in a final pair of advancement matches, which will be best of five. The two teams that come out on top will advance to the second stage where 16 teams will go head to head in a Swiss format, where every round teams with the same record face each other, featuring best of one matches except for advancement and elimination matches, which will be best of three. Finally, the eight victorious teams will square off in the knockout stage in a single elimination best of five showdown. So Worlds will now have 22 teams with eight teams in the play-in stage, 16 teams in the second stage, and eight teams in the knockout stage. We are thrilled to welcome not only the World Championship back, but also a brand new format for the tournament. We hope to see you in Korea. Thank you. 2023 is shaping up to be a really exciting year. For a more in-depth breakdown of the format and event updates, be sure to check out our latest article on lollysports.com. And before we go, I want to extend a sincere thank you to you, our community. Your support, your feedback, your passion, it fuels this sport. And we are so excited to bring you the 13th season of Lolly Sports. 
Thank you again and GLHF this year. Chinese players are very close to Peru. I'm interested in who the player is. I'm interested in how long the player is. I'm interested in how long the player is. I'm interested in how long the player is.재밌을 것 같은 자리입니다. 음, 일단 열심히 해야겠다 생각했고요. 아, 이벤트전인데 좀 걸린, 약간 걸린 것도 있고, 약간 보상도 좋고, 뭔가 이게 좀 진심으로 게임을 해야 될것 같더라고요. 그래서 잘 준비해야 될것 같아요. 꽃피고 제가 준비를 안 해서, 바텀은 내 나오는 게다 거기서 거기라고 생각합니다. 그래서, 전략을 어떻게 짜는지가 중요할 것 같아요. 첫 세트부터 마지막 세트까지. 조커피글은 생각 안 해봤는데 그냥 저희 원래 연습하던 스크림 정보 토대로 아마 저한테 자신 있는 픽 위주로 하지 않을까 싶습니다. 음, 잠시만요. 어, 베릴 선수. 베릴 선수가 게임에도 굉장히 지식이 해박한 걸로 알고 있고 또 정글, 특히 정글 쪽에서 많이 피드백 같이 해주시는 그런 쪽으로 알고 있는데 근데 이게 짧은 기간 안에 솔직히 친해지는 게 저는 현실적으로 힘들다고 생각해요 저는 이 현실주의적인 사람이기 때문에 친해지고 싶은 선수는 베릴 선수랑 친해지고 싶고요 궁금해요 뭐 어떤 사람인지 궁금하고 <웃음> 게임하는 것도 좀 보고 싶고 그런 마음에서 그렇게 짧은 기간에 친해진다는 라 것은 불가능이라고 생각해요 저의 개인적인 생각으로는 D점멸로 시작했는데 한달 동안 뭐 D를 쓰면 결국 D점멸이 되는 거고 F점멸을 뒀는데 F를 한달 동안 쓰면 F점멸이라 생각해서 그 처음을 어떻게 했냐가 따라서 D점멸, F점멸 저는 정해지는 것 같아요. D점멸이 근본이라 생각하는 중 사람 중한 명으로서 F점멸이 사람이 많다고 해서 꼭 그게 좋다고 생각 안 하거든요. 사람이 적은 만큼 더 좋을 수도 있는 거고 또 귀하다는 거니까. 아, 무조건 F죠. 제가 F이기 때문에. 뒤전멸은 좀 그냥 그래요. 좀 애플을 썼으면 좋겠어. 탑이랑 해보고 싶어요. 왜냐면은 탑들이 다들 정글을 참 사용하듯이 쓰더라고요. 게임 내에서. 그래가지고 아무래도 탑들을 상대로 기강을 좀 잡아줘야 이 정글의 권위도 좀 올라가지 않을까 해서 탑이랑 해보고 싶습니다. 예를 들어 뭐 민드 다섯 명 대, 원대 다섯 명 해서 누가 진짜 협곡의 그런 주인인지 누가 가장 중요한 라인인지 좀 가려고 이런 것도 재밌을 것 같아. 솔직히 미드가 제일 붙고 싶은데 솔직히 미드 다섯 명 있는 팀을 이기기가 제일 힘들 것 같아. 게임의 중심을 역할을 하잖아요. 근데 이 상위권 미드 선수들을 보면 다른 라인의 그런 이해도 같은 게 되게 전 풍부하다고 생각해서 좀 힘들지 않을까라고 생각. 저는 원딜을 만나보고 싶어요. 진짜 잘하는 원딜한테 맞아보고 싶어요. 어떤 느낌이지. 솔직히 감정 표현이 저는 이해를 할수 있는 감정 표현, 귀여운 감정 표현, 영, 아니면 상대방을 좀 약올리는 감정 표현 이렇게 세 가지가 있다고 생각하는데 만약에 제가 우승을 하면 어느 걸 할지가 되게 고민일 것 같아요. 저는 개인적으로 이제 페이커 선수의 따봉을 감정 표현으로 좀 만들어, 만들어 보고 싶어요. 페이커 선수 따봉 그 포즈가 있잖아요. 그게 전 굉장히 좋아요. 
싸울 때 싸울 때 쓸수 있는 감정표현을 만들고 싶어요. 좀 최근에 그 재미니 펀치라는 좀 짤을 봤었는데요. 최대한 그거랑 비슷하게 하고 싶습니다. 음, 이런 좀 영광스러운 자리에 제가 팀을 대표해서 뽑힌 만큼 최대한 또 준비 잘해서 좋은 모습, 또 재밌는 모습 많이 보여드릴 수 있도록 노력하겠습니다. 좀 재미있게 빡겜 할것 같기도 하고 아니면 조용히 빡겜 할것 같기도 한데 어, 그래도 이벤트 전이라도 결국 승리한 팀에는 메리트가 있, 있기 때문에 열심히 하겠습니다. 보시는 분들은 즐겁고 재밌게 보셨으면 해서 저희가 이벤트 매치지만 또잘 준비해서 좀 좋은 그런 퀄리티 경기를 만들어 보겠습니다. 뭐 제가 우리 모건 선수 가뿐하게 이어보겠습니다. 아, 이 윌러는 윌러는 제가 꼭 잡아야겠습니다. 저는 그래도 아 어렵네 사실 이제 안 뽑힐 줄 알았거든요 저는 이제 저희 팀의 시우 형이 뽑히지 않을까 했는데 제가 이제 혁규 형한테 뽑히고 나니까 아, 아 이거 나였네 라고 생각 들더라고요 어, 저는 그리고 솔직히 제가 딱 들어갈 거라는 생각을 딱 해본 적이 없어가지고 효도 만에 들어가게 되면 저는 혁규 형이랑 친분이 있으니까 그래도 내 뽑힐 팀에 들어가고 싶었어요 딱히 그런 건 없었고 피고 나서는 그래도 데프트 선수가 뽑아주셨으니까 아, 내가 데프트 선수랑 같이 팀으로 라인전을 해보는구나 좀 뿌듯했던 것 같습니다 인정받은 것 같아서 <웃음> 어, 우선 솔로 랭크에서 같이 많이 만나봤는데 굉장히 잘하는 것 같기도 하고 또 워낙 귀엽, 귀여운 선수다 보니까 <웃음> 부모님한테 감사한 것 같습니다 어차피 저는 미르니까 한 팀에서밖에 못 뽑혀가지고 네, 알고 있었습니다. 팀에서 한 명만 한 포지션 상관없이 뽑았으면 뭐 어디 라인 가도 <웃음> 가능하기 때문에 네, 아쉽네요. 제가 또 렉사이 장인이라고 사람들이 많이 알아주시는데요. 이번에도 렉사이 한번 꺼내보겠습니다. 조코픽은 이제 그 당일날 확인해야 되는 거기 때문에 노코멘트 하겠습니다. 그거는 당일날 보여드리겠습니다. 저는 사실 디전멸을 좀 이해 못하고 있습니다. 그냥 디전멸로 시작해가지고 자연스럽게 디전멸로 된것 같은데 이해가 되는 것 같기도 하고 모르겠네. 저는 F전멸인데 학교 형은 디전멸 아닌가요? F전멸이랑 이제 얘기를 하기 싫긴 한데 제가 뽑아야 되는 선수들 중에 F 전멸이 있어서 일단은 네, 둘다 존중하는 쪽으로. 만약에 제가 하게 된다면 음, 그 원딜 선수들과 한번 해보고 싶습니다. 저는 롤에서 제일 쉬운 라인이 원딜이라고 생각하기 때문에 원딜 정도는 이길 수 있지 않을까 생각합니다. 오 미드 vs 저는 오 탑을 해보고 싶어요. 어, 이탑 라이너 선수들이 저희가 이제 딴 라인을 가도 잘했을 거다라는 생각을 하는 선수들이 있는 것 같아서 이겨놔야겠습니다. 아 저는 정글 강화부터 하고 싶어요. 정글이랑 근데 수도 되나? 그 다르니까 어떻게 보면은 어, 탑의 마음을 좀 알아 <웃음> 뭐 이런 것도 있을 수도 있고 <웃음> 좀. 서로 알면 좋잖아요. 이제 정글의 고충이나 탑의 고충이나 서로 이제 해보면 직접 경험하는 건좀 다르니까. 저는 무건 선수랑 비록 적팀이지만 윌러 선수가 가장 반가운 것 같아요. 아, 뭐 작년에 같이 했고, 전 작년에 같이 했던 게 재밌었기 때문에 뭐 상황이 안 맞아서 떨어지게 됐지만 다시 만나니까 즐거워서 그렇습니다. 또 너냐 정지훈 막 이런 느낌인 것 같은데요. <웃음> 좀 저인 걸 알았으면 좋겠어요. 약간 좀 이제 티를 눌렀을 때 그냥 이제 제가 땅 이러고 있는 거죠. 아닌가? 어쩜 뭐 이런 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 느낌?
제가 작년에 그 하나 생명증 이거 나서 좀 카메라 잡히는지 몰랐는데 끝나고 손에 떨리는 거예요. 그래가지고 야손 떨린다 했는데 그 카메라 잡혀가지고 그게 한번 그게 잠깐 생각이 나네요. 저는 이모티콘 만들게 되면은 제 특유 포즈로 만들고 싶어요. 보여 보여 보여드릴까요? 네네. 뭐 이런 식으로. 인스타그램에 알파카 키우기라고 포스를 올렸던데 무슨 의미예요? 어, 요즘 바텀 메타이다 보니까 제가 한번 혁경을 좀잘 시팅해 보려고 그런 의미로 썼던 것 같아요. 어, 사실 제 생각 분위기가 절대 이벤트 매치가 아니거든요. 그렇기 때문에 뭐 어쨌든 이기는 게 좋은 거니까 네, 이기려고 합니다. 아무래도 이제 팬분들이 즐거웠으면 하는 경기이다 보니까 일단 최선을 다하기도 할 거고 또 이제 재밌는 모습들도 많이 보여드리고 싶어요. 좀 작년에 하나 생명 때 같이 봤던 선수 있잖아요. 뭐 지어, 초비나 뭐 데프트나 이렇게 있고 이게 좀저 개인적으로는 좀 이제 좀 작년과는 달라진 모습을 좀 보여주고 싶다는 게좀 가장 크고요. 어쨌든 다 주어졌으니까 잘하겠습니다. 베델 선수가 그랬나? 서포터는 땅따먹기 게임을 한다고 말씀하셨는데 이번에는 그 땅따먹기에서 안밀 자신 있습니다. 저는 f 전멸입니다 롤 처음 할 때부터 대표여가지고 디전멸 하는 사람인데요 관심 받으려고 <웃음> 저는 디전멸이에요 어느 순간 써보니까 디인데 저는 살짝 잡종인 게 저는 정글 갈때 전멸이 F로 봤어요 그 페이커 팀인데 대표팀 팀 한다는 소리를 듣고 이제 룰을 모르는 상태에서 저를 뽑아달라고 막 그랬었는데 알고 보니 저를 못 뽑더라고요 그래서 자꾸 혁경이 뭔 소리 하냐고 어차피 못 뽑는다고 해서 그냥 광영이라도 뽑고 재밌게 하라고 했는데 일단 얘기를 다 해놨어요. 그 김씨라고 있는데 게임을 우리가 같이 이제 할수 있는 기회가 별로 없다. 같이 하고 싶다. 이렇게 했는데 자기 마음이니까 원래 그런 거는 또 제가 뭐, 뭐 어떻게 할수 없는 거니까 뭐 아쉽게 된 거죠. 카톡이 오더니 광희야 미안하다라고 카톡이 오더라고요. 일단 뱀픽이 꼬였대요. 3픽에서 뽑으려 했는데 상대 팀에서 베리 선수를 뽑을 줄 몰랐대요. 데프트 선수가 드래프트가 끝나고 라스칼 선수 얘기를 하는데 카메라가 라스칼 선수 그 그림 거기에다가 계속 확대를 하는 걸 보여주는 걸 보고 좀 웃겼던 것 같아요. 클로즈업 해준 건잘못 봤고 그 사과하는 것만 봤었는데 혁경이 저한테 사과하는 거 계속 언급하고 근데 다 위선이라고 생각했습니다. 제가 얼마 웬만하면 기분이 안 상하는데 그때 그냥 좀 삐진티 낸 다음에 하루 정도 카톡 안 했나? 그러니까 막 다음날 민석이가 단톡에다 아, 분위기 점점점 뭐지? 너무 싸하다 막 이런 식으로 얘기했었던 것 같아요 보상을 좋은 거를 걸어주셨다고 걸어주셨더라고요 그래서 아 납득이 되는 좀 명분이 있다 네, 그리고 제가 진짜 이기고 싶다는 가정으로 뽑으면 은 사실 다른 쪽 먼저 뽑을 것 같기도 해요. <웃음> 네, 그래서 이해했습니다. 아무 동은 안할것 같아요. 저 빼고 재밌게 경기하는 걸 두고 볼수 없습니다. 저는 무조건 페이커 팀. 모든 걸 잃었으면 좋겠어요. 네, 우정도 잃고 보상도 잃고 승리도 잃고 네, 진짜 진심으로 네. 페이커 이스 갓. <웃음> 정글 아니면 서포트라고 생각합니다. 그리고 아무래도 게임 이해도가 다른 라인보다 높을 거라 생각하기 때문에 무조건 정글 서포트라고 생각합니다. 저는 100% 확신. 어, 서포트는 너무 <웃음> 어, 아닐 것 같은데 서포트 5등 탑이 무조건 1등 할것 같아요. 아무래도 이벤트 매치다 보니까 텐션이 많이 올라서 이상한 또 아재 개그나 그런 거칠 수도 있기 때문에 그냥 화탕한 웃음으로 잘 받아주면 좋겠습니다. <웃음> 장난이 좀 섞여 있긴 한데 진심도 많이 섞여 있고 그래도 네, 뭐 재밌게 하다 오셨으면 좋겠는데 졌으면 좋겠어요 사실. <웃음> 화이팅! 그래도 화이팅! 
Hello and welcome back to the LCK Arena here live at Seoul. It is me, Valdez the Rabbit, with Wolf the Hare. And uh, we're going to be bringing you this awesome little event match that Riot has set up here, the kickoff event for the LCK, which is happening right now. How are you doing, Wolf, with your awesome hat? Thank you. I'm doing great. Uh, it, the hat makes everything better. Um, you know, the hat right now is not that excited, but if it was my level of excitement, it'd be more like this. Uh, and I'm very hyped because we have the two iconic players, of course, who faced off in the World Championship leading two all-star teams. We have representatives from all 10 LCK teams battling it out. We will have a best of three with traditional League of Legends rules, mostly traditional League of Legends rules, but we're going to have some 1v1s and some really fun matchups tonight as well. Fans are going to get involved, you know, sending messages and stuff like that. We're going to have a lot of interviews, so there's a lot of content for you guys here tonight. Not just a best of three, I think that's an exciting part of this. We're playing on patch 13.1 as yep. well. So there's a lot to look forward to for this matchup tonight. It's the first Korean League of Legends of the year, and it is the year of the rabbits. Guys, that is why we are wearing rabbit hats, so a little bit of an explanation. We would probably just wear these anyway, but we thought it was a nice little opportunity to shout out the year of the rabbit. Anyway, this is all about Faker versus Deft and the teams they have drafted together, and which is better? Is F Flash better? Flash on F, is that better? Or is D Flash better? Flash on D, what do you use, Wolf? Uh, I, my, I, I used to be a Dlasher, um, but I switched to F at some point. Okay. Um, I think good. I went to a PC bong and I like didn't good, change good. my settings. And I was like, you know what, Flash just makes sense on F. So I'm a, I, yeah. I, a Flasher. Because F, uh, you know, is the first letter in Flash. So it does matter. Um, I'm also a Flasher myself, not a Delasher. I think Atlas is the only Delasher, but I'm not 100% sure. I think sure. Papa Smithy was a Delasher as well. Probably. That makes sense. Those guys down under, they don't quite get it. Um, so let's talk about how this was decided. So this is to decide who got to choose the 1v1 champion these two played. So uh, they, this is basically a punch-out game. You punch it in as fast as you can. Pop it. Pop it, rather, is what it's called. Um, and then they made an agreement. So... Baker was like, okay, I want to play Yasuo. And then he's like, like let's play the, the uh, brothers. And then Def was like, but I'm really bad at Yasuo. So Faker's like, I'll play Yasuo. The 1v1 match ended this quickly. Uh, it was not very long. Yes. It was very one-sided. So Faker was able to get draft advantage here for the all-star teams. That's yeah. it. That's the whole highlight. He, uh, he doesn't look at the explosion. He gets the kill. And yeah, I, I think you said Yasuo, but yes, Faker on the Yone. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, Yone, um, excuse me. Did do a little bit of stompage, which means that first pick went to Faker and he chose Viper, which you did see there on the uh, little pad. Yeah, um, and we'll talk about the draft a little bit more as we go forward. But first of all, let's talk about the matchup itself. So that draft happened on December 16th, so it was a really long time ago. But now we're moving forward to Yonks. January 10th for the, the actual show match. And we are going to have a 5v5, but as we're about to show you, there's a lot more in store. <laughs> um, the 5v5 is in the middle, and we have stuff before that and stuff after that. So we're going to start with Mundo Dodgeball featuring Karthus, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. The Bob duo is going to go 2v2, and Karthus will be uh, in there as well. And then we have the show match, best of three between the two teams. And uh, it's not going to be like, you know, normal pick ban or anything. It's you only get one chance to pick the one champion. There's no bans at all. And once you pick that champion, it can't be played by either team again. For example, if the blue side picks Fiora first, Yumi. Um, or Yumi, then the for the red team will not be able to pick Fiora, nor will they be able to pick Fiora in subsequent games. So. Every yeah. champion can only be selected once. There are no bans. You're basically banning by selection. And that means we'll probably see some really cool and wacky and weird picks with the new patch 13.1, uh, obviously on the preseason rift with new jungle items and all that stuff. Uh, the chem tank, uh, or chem tech, Drake, is back. Yep. I haven't cast in a while. It's like hard to cast, <laughs> Valdez. Hard to say <laughs> the words. The chem tank? Direct Chem Tank uh, has changed as well. Yeah. Uh, no longer a mythic and all that, but. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, but here are the teams. And uh, you said you were going to talk a little bit about the draft. This is how it ended up. So you'll get a first look at what Dref, uh, Deft rather, was able to draft and what he was able to pick for his team. Yeah. So for Team Deft, it's Morgan, Cuz, Chovy, of course, Deft, and Peter. And for the side of Team Faker, Barrel was drafted, Viper, Faker, as you see here, Wheeler for jungle, and Dudu as the top laner. So 
Pretty surprising draft if you were considering the pick the best players from the entire pool of the LCK, but the rule set was that because Baker and Decker representatives, no T1 players and no the team formerly known as Dom One Kia players were to be in the draft because Deft is the representative, of course, from D plus Kia. And so as a result, the draft came through with first seeing Viper come through. So no more Hanwha players are eligible. Then you have Chovy and Cuz being selected, of course, by Deft. So no Gen G, no KT, and the list goes on and on. Uh, some surprising names in here. I think Peter shock a lot of people. Deft no. said he plays. A no, it didn't surprise me at all, Wolf, <laughs> actually. I thought he should have been first pick, actually. <laughs> Dev said he plays a ton uh, of duo games with Peter in solo queue, encounters him a lot in solo queue, and he says one of the best supports he's ever played with in solo queue, so really wanted to play with him in particular, so shouted him out and chose him. <laughs> also said he was really cute. Yes, which also I, that. I thought was very appropriate. And uh, yeah, we also had Willer coming in, which I think was pretty interesting, but uh, Liv Sandbox, the team to be picked last, might show a little bit of what we have in store uh, for the LCK 2023, but. You know, it's still very early on. It's before spring even begins. And uh, Willer, you know, was the jungler, and Baker needed the jungle. So he picked up Willer. And that's the way it goes. Yeah. So here's the lineup, as mentioned. But I think Dudu is a player who gets a lot of respect here coming to this one because he's one of the most improved top laners that we had last year and I think was on a lot of people's all pro team, um, you know, one of the first few teams because he did so well individually as a player. Rascal was the one that, that Deft really wanted to have, obviously, but um, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not able to select him in time there with Barrel coming over. Uh, it's, you know, it, it's really interesting to see how this format makes these all-star teams be so LCK oriented because you wouldn't necessarily say these are the best players for the role, but best players for the team of the players or the positions left available yeah. becomes really interesting, actually. Yeah. It's, it's cool. I think it's very appropriate for an event match as well. You know, you get a little bit of flavor from everybody. It's not just, you know, the tippy tippy top all the time or anything like that. So Mundo Dodgeball, if you guys have never seen this, everybody, well, I say everybody, but it's a 1v1 most of the time. You go into the Baron Pit, you throw cleavers at each other until one guy dies. Yeah. You have Ghost and Flash and Boots and a Control Award. That's it. And whoever kills the other guy with cleavers only wins. That's right. So. It's a cleaver battle. Um, then you could dodge with the flash. You could use ghost to trip them up, but obviously those are really long cooldown summoner spells, so you basically only get one. Uh, so it, it, it's very interesting. Now, when we get to the 2v2 tag match, Karthus will be in play as well, and you can tag in and out, but that's, of course, only for the bot and support players. Mm -hmm. We are playing this basically as a best of five, so whoever ends up getting the most points out of this, and we'll play all games, will get the choice of side selection going into draft. So this is an important moment here to decide. And we it was mentioned, of course, earlier, but we haven't really touched on it yet. The winner of this match will get a permanent in-game emote as well. So yeah. there's a lot on the line here. You can make yourself a part of League of Legends forever. So I think these players are going to take this very seriously. As serious as you could take Mundo Dodgeball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way, a little cool thing we have for this event. We, for the 1v1s, you can listen to the player comms. Not for the 2v2s, which I guess... It might maybe, be too much. Yeah, some overlapping and too many voices and stuff like that. But in a 1v1, you know, we're going to be able to hear them talk. So that's definitely something that will be pretty original. You know, even if you've been watching a lot of... Uh, <laughs> LCK or Korean esports for a long time. You know, we do like the mic checks and stuff like that, but this is while they're going to be playing Mundo Dodgeball in a 1v1 scenario. And apparently their teammates are going to be standing right behind them. So no pressure, guys. Yep. We'll be Dudu versus Morgan, the top matchup first. And, you know, if you guys have watched some of the Mundo uh, 1v1s that have happened to Dodgeball, it's kind of popularized by T1. Faker was playing against his viewers on the stream and stuff like that. It's very common for you to chat with your opponent during the game itself um, and talk trash and get in their head a little bit. All right, here we go. Control Ward down, <laughs> making the halfway point. Here we go. Yeah. So it said it starts at 1 minute 15 seconds. So I would imagine that uh, the second we hit 1 minute 15, the first cleavers will be thrown. So as mentioned, boots the only item that you can use to make sure that they have enough speed to make this interesting. 
Practicing their auto cancels here. Uh, what do you think about the skins? Who, who wins in the skin war? Uh, I like... I don't know. That's that's really hard between these two. I do like the old cell phone, you know, yeah. from the old days. By the way, we have begun. No cleaver lands. Oh. By the way, um, Mundo's abilities use health. So uh, if you are not familiar with that, you're also going to be losing health while you're throwing yes. cleavers. Oh, that was close. Still not a single cleaver. <laughs> okay. Oh, and gets the flash, too. That's pretty big. Currently, definitely Morgan. Morgan in a massive lead here. Still holding his flash. Use the ghost well. Yeah. Oh, and he's able to flash that. I didn't really hit that one. Oh, man, he's crushing it right now. Oh, that was so close. <laughs> You'd think this would be the most high level, right? I mean, this is one top champion here. One more cleaver will do it. Good hit by Dudu. He's staying alive. Oh, okay. Oh, we'll do it. If he can hit it. <laughs> He's animation canceling to not show when the cleaver is going to come out. <laughs> Here we go again. Oh, he gets oh it. got him. Morgan oh. with the first win on the board. And All right. The dodgeball. So Team Deft taking the first win here. And what will be a three points to gain side selection match. <laughs> uh, that was... It, it got a lot closer at the end, but it, it looked like it was about to be a very one-sided affair. Yeah. It's rough, you know, like, even if the other guy's really low. <laughs> we're, we're talking about, like, the strategy of Mundo Dodgeball, but there's still a chance because the other guy's losing health every time he gives it a try, and if he gets low enough, you can hit one cleaver and win. Shout-outs uh, to Pyoshik, our most, you know, recent top Mundo player here in the LCK. Not eligible, of course, for this kickoff event because he left our region. But when I think about Mundo, for me, my first thought is, you know, since I've been casting, is Pyoshik is the first more recent player to come to mind. Sure. He's definitely a champ that has uh, been around for a long time, but he hasn't seen much of a heyday in competitive. There were definitely some years here and there. But uh, now we're going to have the junglers go head to head, as it is going to be Cuz against Willer. Cuz here picked on Def's team was actually a pretty early pickup. On side of Jovi. Yeah. Cuz picked very early, I think, because Def, you know, he's the AD curry. I want to prevent Faker from. Um... Well, no, he already picked Viper. Okay, hold on. We're going in. It's okay. It doesn't start until 1.15. Um, I was going to say to prevent him from picking aiming, but he already picked Viper first, so I don't know if that was really the reason. I'm just speculating. They, they're like actually commentating where they're putting their words and stuff. <laughs> it's like because they got to make sure it looks like a nice even line. But I think also it's like where you would stand yeah. to animation cancel and that can kind of like mix with the you know, like the positioning of the moon to dodgeball. Yeah. We're, we're getting like really high level on yeah. this for the animation cancels to trick oh, shot. They are pros. Okay, here we go. Two seconds. Let's see who's going to get first blood here. Okay. It's not Willer. <laughs> it's Cuz. Okay. Comet is the rune, by the way. I guess we didn't mention that, but you guys have probably figured it out by now. You yeah. get a little bit of extra damage. They also get the spell shield yeah. uh, from the same tree. Pretty unsurprising, but uh, might as well min-max if, <laughs> if you're trying to win Mundo Dodgeball. These guys are much better. Yeah, this is, this is surprisingly... I mean, I guess Jungle Mundo was more popular than Top Mundo recently in the LCK. But you think Top, right? You uh -oh. think Top would have been the best one as Cuz is in trouble. You mean Willer. Oh, right. Okay, it's reversed. <laughs> yeah. Willer is... Uh, yeah, he's currently on the screen. Oh, he's going to miss that one, too. He's getting low. Cuz right now dominating him. Cuz definitely... Here we go, yeah. You know, I... Okay. Okay, gets the flash out. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, man. So clean. Cuz actually destroyed him. Like, that was insane. Cuz looked very good at this one. Yeah. You uh, know, it was the... Uh, it was the windowed mode, but also the not... Um, what's it called? You know when you you the don't smart cast? Yeah, the non smart yeah, cast. Yeah. I think that it gives you a little bit of extra time, obviously. Um Okay, now that was this is the this is the one everyone was waiting for, right? Because 
Faker versus Chovy, right? And yeah, not not really known to be a mid champion Mundo, but still, uh, these two going at it here with really good mechanics. Obviously, they're landing fantastic. Really good at harassment and lane. Chovy, in particular, very known for that. Uh, Faker, of course, too, over a longer period, more famous. And this one, I think, could be the most fun. That's just my prediction. She says, I am a flasher, but I'm team deft. Today, white team to team deft. Um, she's hoping for the Faker's thumbs up emote, which I, I mean, it, it would have to be that, right? Like, what else would Faker use as an emote, right? Unless you've got some other ideas. All right. Let's check out that word placement. Uh, floating Mundo. <laughs> this is some new tech. I don't, I don't get it. He's good now. He's walking. <laughs> All right. These guys should be the best. I mean, there, there's more skill shotting champions in mid than yeah. That's what I was thinking. Role. That's what I was thinking. Maybe support is like next up or top. I'm not sure. Some moonwalk here from Chovy the skating. Yeah. Uh, uh, but then the misplay on the ghost. You don't get that early. one back. And then the Faker just immediately capitalizes, punishes. Yeah. Faker's not messing around, by the way. Like this guy. He's in it to win it. Okay. Nicely done. See how he's getting up close? He's trying to, like, cut the distance off. But that also gets Faker a bit closer. Makes him easier to hit. Ooh, Faker with a nice one there. <laughs> Ooh, the return. Jovi getting low. And the dodge. Yeah. The ghost oh. being used at a real time here for Faker. Oh. Miss on the flash. Miss on the cleaver. Still anyone's game, Faker has a nice advantage. <laughs> They're not talking at all. They're just <laughs> making noises. Okay. Got his flash. Very close. Magic shield oh, there. Oh, table. Faker's going to miss. Big turnaround. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got to hit this one. Got to hit this one. Oh, Hits it. Oh, ah, Has to ah, dodge. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Faker lines it up. He was so calm. Jovi was just freaking out. Faker knew he had him in his clutches. Any thumbs up from the man? Let's see the emote. Where's the emote? Hey! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right, this is really important for Team Faker, of course, for side selection. Had he lost that one, that would have been the end of it. We still have the 2v2 to be played now. This is where things are going to get crazy because you have the Karthus tag in. And we don't really know yeah. exactly how this one's going to work out just yet. And the rules were explained to us at the last second. Um, so I think it's you can be attacked while you're tagging yes. in and out of the pit. So uh, essentially, you know, it's a 2v2, but there's only one champ in the pit at one time. But if you run out of the pit, the other guy on your team can run into the pit and take your place. Yes. It's like a tag team wrestling, you know, as here we go. This is some uh, extra rules. Yeah, so first team to kill both is the winner. Um, Karthus starts with a tier of the goddess item. And so no boots for Karthus. Uh, Unlucky. So it's going to be really interesting. I think that's probably a safer and better thing to do um, so that it's not just zooming around. Skill shots are already hard enough as it is to hit. Uh, and Trying to rotate out as Karthus also, as a result, will probably be pretty risky. Any uh, any A flashers, a lashers, Team Alpaca? Uh, I didn't I didn't see the sign. <laughs> There's just a sign that said Team Alpaca. That sounds hard. If you bind your flash to A, you're a real pro. You know how do you attack? I was like, I put you, my attack key on F. Yeah, you just yeah. You know, <laughs> I guess so. I, I suppose it's technically possible. I, I wouldn't recommend it though. So the supports are playing Mundo. And the 80 carries are on the Karthus. This makes sense to me. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like they're both equally. Wait. What? Offsides! Offsides! Where are you <laughs> going, Peter? You can't just go wherever you want. 
I'm calling off sides, uh, Valdez. Okay, okay, we're back. <laughs> They're both uh, the corporate Mundo, the CEO Mundo. Peter has an unofficial yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he started it. We're using uh, five-year-old rules. Okay. First blood to barrel. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. No misses. Looking really good. Ghost used. Traded. Barrel three for three. Might be time to tag out for Peter. He's thinking about it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is okay, the time there to he goes. get the slow okay. and go in. All right. Def's in there. Okay. And before Barrel just 1v2s this. <laughs> he never leaves. <laughs> that is such a Barrel thing to do as well. Nope. Okay. He's going to give Viper a chance. His first time playing in Korea for 2023. Is Karthus the Karthus? And, you know, he's doing a pretty good job. He's hitting death really well here. That one was pretty far off. Flash. Remember, you have to kill both. Deft, he's getting super low. And, and look at this, he's kind of like zoned. As up. Oh, tagged in. Viper also pretty low. Viper's trying to get one more hit off before he gets. Uh, we'll get one more. Uh, <laughs> Oh, probably got, okay, he's got like one cleaver left in him. Okay, here comes Barrel. Barrel, Barrel flashes that. Oh, oh, Def going back in. He's so low. This is nuts. I love that lineup from Barrel, but it didn't hit. Oh, gets oh. hit by the Comet. Yeah, Comet back up. That's huge for Def. Ooh, Def's going to die. One Q away. Oh, nice placement. That was sick from Viper. Now it's a 2v1. Peter versus the world. <laughs> Viper, like, gave him a free one. It's hard to tag out if you get hit, you know, so Viper's kind of stuck in oh. here. He's definitely trapped now. No flash either. He's trying to do damage. Uh oh Barrel's in there. Bo okay. They didn't attack, though. Seems legal. Barrel, a uh, Peter. <gasps> oh, my God. So <laughs> close. Barrel is so low. And he's down. Okay, all up to Viper now. Peter versus the world. <laughs> Viper's missing. I think Peter's got this. Ooh. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, and he gets taken out by Viper. Oh, what a crazy <laughs> one, man. They should have all been 2v2. We should do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> cut, the, all right. cut the 5v5. We no, won't need this. No more coin tosses in professional League of Legends. <laughs> just it's this. It's just a Karthus Mundo 2v2 <laughs> for side selection. And... Big comeback with Viper taking that last hit. Team Faker uh, will get the side selection here, three to two. And that's pretty big. You know, we, we talked about the uh, the rules for the 5v5, for the Summoner's Rift War. And if you get first pick, it's even better, right? So blue side should be the choice. Uh, we're going to see in a little bit what side they do choose. So. Um, in a way, you know, you could you could theorize that getting two super OP champions is better than one. But I think getting the one, if you think there is absolutely one champion that is the strongest. And I think that's going to be a most exciting moment with no bans. And this, the, the blue side first pick is like the S tier one that we're only going to see on that blue side game that one time. Might be Fiora, could be Cassante, could be Yumi. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ones that, 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 you know, really jump out. You could be Jax right now on Jax, this match too. Yep. See what Faker decides. Yeah, we're gonna listen in a little bit and uh, see what he has to say about the match and about what side he wants to select, of course. Uh, so we've been also rocking the Year of the Rabbit hat. Faker. He wants to win with the side selection. Not surprising. Uh, I wasn't nervous at all. After throwing some cleavers, I got a little bit nervous. Glad I was able to win, thankfully, in the end. I'm worried about the, uh, the rest of the positions. <laughs> Top in the jungle, especially. Yeah. 
어 이제 본 게임이 남았으니까 본 게임도 열심히 재밌게 해보겠습니다. 그리고 진영은 블루로 하겠습니다. 네, 알겠습니다. Blue chose blue. He's excited for the real match. All right. Well, no surprise that he picked blue. Yeah. In our rehearsal, we had the fake blue selection as well. Yeah. If you're a flasher and not a delasher, you would also select blue because that is the correct choice. And you, of course, did make the correct choice with your uh, flash on F, of course. So uh, good job for that. All you delasters out there, you have to be on red side. Sorry about that. Looking at you, Papa. All right. It's time for the selection. So to remind everyone, no bands whatsoever. And we will also have each Every single game you can only, or every game, any champion that's been played, regardless of your team or your opponent's team, cannot be selected again. So it says in game two, all the 10 champions that you played in game one are banned. In game three, if it occurs, all 20 champions that were played from game one to two are also banned. So if we go to game three, we're going to be going into the depths of some champion pools here for these players. Yeah, and uh, the winning team, this is actually for all the marbles. Uh, we do have a very fun DOG match later on today, but for the winning team, you can get an emote that will be sold on the shop. People can buy that in the League of Legends client. So uh, definitely want to get that, and even more than the money, of course. You just want to leave your mark, uh, even more so than obviously the fantastic pro play and championships some of these guys have won. It's much easier to win this one to immortalize yourself in League of Legends than to win the World Championships. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, some of the guys that quite haven't quite gotten there, you know, guys like perhaps Dudu or Willer, they might be like, man, I really want to get that emote. So I will be in League of Legends client forever. Some of these players have, have really been so far removed from Worlds. I mean, you think about Peter, for example, like he's so far in his very young and in, in early parts of his career is so removed from Worlds. But a lot of the other players have been there, right? Even Willer, who brought Honda Life Esports arguably to Worlds in 2021. Um, he didn't get that close to the sun, but he's he's had his time there. Cause as well, you know, Chovy, so many Worlds appearances, Deft and Faker, the leaders of these teams, just standing on stage with Lil Nas X, Barrel, two-time world champion. He wants an emote too, though. Yeah, you know, that's just more sales for more uh, purchases of whatever he might want in another game. Um, so yeah, I mean, also <laughs> it's, going to, it's going to be Barrel up against Deft in the bottom lane, which is going to be really cool to see. Um, Deft picked Peter to go alongside of him, but also we get to see Viper and Barrel, <laughs> which is insane. Like one of the most hyped AD carries of 2023, coming back to Korea, gonna be playing with Barrel, a two-time world champion. Uh, that is like a insane, like world champ level bot lane. So we were talking about predictions for this, going into this, but right before we go into the, the picks here, yeah, I, I told you my money's on Team Faker, and for one real singular reason alone, is because Barrel's on the team. You have Faker and Barrel on the team that doesn't have synergy, right? But you have two great shot callers. You have two extremely experienced players on the same team. And for that reason alone, I feel like some of the mechanical skill differences between positions, we can kind of forgive because it still is a five player team game um, or 10 player, you know, five per team. And I, I give the advantage with, to the team that has Faker and Barrel, not gonna lie. Uh, I, I have to say I, I'm leaning towards, I think Team Faker is gonna take this. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like the shot calling, like if we had like a pie chart or whatever, the, the shot calling, well, maybe a pie chart's not best. But anyway, their their column would the be- pentagram cha chat. Huge. Or thing, yeah, but, you know. exactly. Because I mean, with Faker and Barrel alone, it's insane. Um, the raw skill that is on Def's team is not to be overlooked, of course. I mean, you're looking at Joby and Def back together. That's already insane. Um, Peter. No, Peter. That's I, broken. <laughs> don't even have to say anything else. Um, and yeah, they also have some tools in their cabinet as well, uh, speaking of which. Yeah, let's not forget. And himself. Cuz had a huge uh, resurgence at the end of the season yep. in 2022. Like he was arguably the, the weakest player on KT for most of the year and then suddenly just found his groove again. Um, he was joking in the pregame interview that, you know, everyone's like, I'm the Rek'Sai guy. I would not be surprised if we see one game of that, considering the rule set here. And I hope we do. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be a lot of fun. We probably will. I, I think maybe there's a chance that Willer could, like, try to counterpick him. 
Um, because, again, if Willer plays it, then Cuz can never play it for the entire best of three. Uh, one more thing to mention, guys. It is a best of three, so we won't play game three if it is two to zero. So not going to get that like extra for fun game in or anything like that because the winner is the winner, and we'll move on to the yeah. POG that's, match that we have later on today. That's the sad part. But the good part, the good news, too, that we have is that we are going to have this on patch 13.1. The Tournament Realm has moved to 13.1 here in Korea, so... Today. It's not live. <laughs> it will be live this evening, uh, or late this evening, but it's not live yet. So first look at 3.1. Um, so I don't know what uh, the Jack, the new Jack's old animation looks like, you know? <laughs> there's, there's a lot we're going to discover <laughs> yeah, together here. True. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't think there will be any surprises if Jax shows his face, especially in this uh, kind of format. And in the meta, being what it is, because, you know, we, we could spend the entirety of game one, to be honest, talking about the new meta and the new changes and stuff like that. But you guys have been playing solo queue. You know what's happened in the preseason. Um, good changes, not so liked changes. There have been a lot. There have been a lot of changes. And uh, the meta currently with a lot of bruisers, Probably going to be seeing a lot of Jacks. A lot of Jack show. Oh, maybe. Ah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Um, yeah, it, it, we're going to see him at least once. So maybe not a lot of him, but I think at least one time. Based on what uh, we saw in the Weibo Cup, which I know is not the, always the most accurate. It's not on the same patch, and what I've seen on streams and the way people are talking from the scrims, I've you know been able to take a quick quick look at. Fiora is definitely one of the picks that everyone is talking about right now. Cassante as well is one of those picks that everyone's like, this pick is really strong in the right hands and the right team comp. So with no bans, like Faker gets to say, we're getting the one, right? Yeah. The one most plus champion. Now, obviously the other team gets two. So <laughs> yeah. it, it gets it gets really tricky. This first draft is going to be nuts. Yeah, I think, you know, keep it simple. I'd say just go ahead and pick whatever you think is the strongest champ right now. Uh, you know, you, you could try to counter pick. You could try to get like, I don't know, somebody's favorite champion and then save one of the better picks for later in the draft. But I don't think you want to take chances like that because if the enemy team takes it, then you're just SOL, right? So I think just go ahead and pick Yumi first and then move on with your life. That, that would be my uh, advice. Um, maybe we'll see Cassante. Maybe we'll see the new Jax. How much have these players played with the two jacks? Well, yeah, Another that's a question. That was the thing that you know there was like some some discussion happening. Like, which are we? Are any champions like globally banned? Like, no one's played this patch yeah. really yet. So, like I said, it's it's been like you know a lot of this has been hidden. Some of the changes coming to thirteen point one until very recently. So, has not been really playable for these teams. Uh, I, I heard through the grapevine like that it came to the tournament realm today. I don't know if that's true. If there's been any scrim time, these players are not on the same team. So we're not going to take this match too seriously, but we're going to have a lot of fun. It looks like it's time to start that fun right now. By the way, there was a fan that <laughs> it nearly killed me. Um, by the way, Cassante's already picked. Um, <laughs> the, the skinny emote for Toby is uh, very much wanted uh, by the fan and uh, might just be the choice as Varus is the choice uh, here. Maokai as and well. Maokai. Definitely a pick that's probably trending towards support right now, but you know, was it, of course, at the World Championship, a very viable jungler, especially in the earlier points. Yeah, and nowadays, I mean, <laughs> anything can jungle, except maybe Yumi. I'm not even sure about that. Maybe she can. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, potential flex pick, but Forest Maokai, an insane amount of poke. Here's Ash. Yeah, and what's really interesting about this too is you you can get all the OP picks, but they don't necessarily work well together. So you have to balance your team comp here. Uh, and picking up something like Maokai gives you a lot of engage. You already have poke range here on Team Death side. So you're very flexible, I think, at this point. Um, team Faker, of course, having the Cassante this early is one of the busted picks, but you have Great long range engage too with the Ash. And now you've got two amazing uh, engage options with the Sejuani ult and the Ash arrow to come through. So a lot of initiation here yeah. for Faker's squad. Asante can always uh, throw his body in there if he wants. Not True. scared to do that. And uh, Toby's got a 
quizzical look on his face, <laughs> thinking about Rise, but also thinking about Fiora. And there it is. Now these picks, Cassante and Fiora, both be in the same game here. I think is only possible due to our no ban rule set, because <laughs> uh, these are on the, the Very top true. of the list right now. Yeah. And should be fun to see them actually clash against each other. We might not see that on this patch even Ever. a single time in the LCK. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say it's extremely likely. Um, well, let's see. Who knows? We'll, we'll see how the meta changes as the times come around. Yeah. So. I don't know if there, this might, we might just be waiting for like the second ban phase to tick down. Uh, might, you know, because even though it doesn't exist, you know, we're not showing it on screen, it might actually have to run out or we might be jumping back into this in just a second. But the rise pick from Chobi is, was really cool because obviously Faker and Chobi are both insanely <laughs> uh, notorious risers, right? And very strong in this meta right now. Any risers? Any risers? Um, so. <laughs> I thought that was cool that Chovy hovered that for a moment, but he was yeah. like, nope, I'm going to take the Fiora. Can only be one Rise player in this True. match. Yeah, in this entire best of three. As uh, maybe that's the alpaca emote that she's hoping for. I uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that. I, I'd probably pick that one up. It's got a really shortened version of the... Um, the most important thing, you know, Death's famous quote. Yeah. Most important thing is not losing your your heart. Lose. I. It's always. I feel like that phrase is always very difficult to translate into English. But. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you're still in it. You know, keep your heart in it. Don't lose control. That was uh, even that that famous quote was used even in the World Cup um, by some yeah. Korean players. It's a very trendy thing to say right now in Korea. Death. Changing the uh, the world, meta. the world. <laughs> All right, so now the bands have ticked away, since we're not allowing that here. Yeah. So what's going to be the choice? Maybe a mid laner. The rise locked in. Jovi snatching it away from Faker. Watch him just play his ear. It's like okay. Well. <laughs> I do wonder. Next game he plays Ari. Barrels Heimerdinger. Me at all. Ashheimer seems very likely. Seems very strong into what Deft's team has put together here, too. Yeah. With the Fiora. And Varus can obviously chip away at the Heimer a little bit, but it's going to be hard to close the distance on a, a team that has insane damage plus engage. I actually like this comp for Faker's team a lot. Yeah, I, I think their start, I think their first three picks uh, really got them started off on the right foot. This mid lane, okay, well. You called it. Yeah, I mean, it's still a good pick. It's good into the rise. Just gonna go for that. <laughs> As Peter is going to play support Jin, no doubt. Support the, Jin has the been. The talk of the town. Has been um, a thing, but uh, like I've seen it on a lot of high level uh, streams on, in the North American region. I've seen it a few times in Korea, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen here. Will be the karma. So the Maokai heads to jungle here. So it is going to be more of a world championship style play here from Cuz on the Maokai. The Sejuani jungle, Kasante to top lane. And Viper's Ash, Viper's first champion back on Korean soil here. It's been so many long years. I told everyone the <laughs> one thing I want from the <laughs> offseason is I want Viper to come back to Korea. I got my wish. Yeah. You did have to trade um, I did. some other players, but that is the way it, it does be uh, during the offseason generally. But we got Viper back, and he is quite a talent. He's going to be going up against Peter, the greatest talent of them all <laughs> in our hearts. And uh, yes. Uh, cute Peter. Cute Peter. Yep. And she did the uh, Spider-Man. You and I made the greatest meme. In League of Legends history, <laughs> nobody knows it. Yeah. Wait, it looks like the progress bar is a little bit past zero, though. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think uh, might be bugged. Someone's iPod's bugged. <laughs> All right, it's time, guys. Still using the original iPod. It's time. F versus D. <laughs> Battle <laughs> of the Summoner's Spell Flash Key. <laughs> 
Azim Cops here. Look, I, I'm going to have to say I side with Bakers. We're not going to analyze this too much, like I said before, but what I think this comp need? is busted. It's what you're here for, Wolf. No, nah, I'm here to just. You're here to bring the hard hitting analysis. I'm here to explain you the didn't Mundo even rules and then. the Freljord <laughs> combination. I'm here, I'm here to just explain the Mundo rules and then get the player wrong. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> we almost got Jin support. Yeah, it would have been fun. Uh, Fiora and Cassante are both in the game. Let's see how that works out. They'll be going head to head in the top lane. Uh, it, it's going to be a fun one. I, I think the wave clear in this comp and the side laning is pretty strong for Team Death. So if they get ahead, yeah. catching up for Faker Squad is going to be very difficult, especially with that long range Maokai that could stop any sort of aggressive rotation to punish the side laning Fiora. Really strong duo here. Yeah. Their ability to just run around in team fight is going to be really, really fun. I say team fights. What I really mean is just run really fast and kind of chip away at them. Straight up 5v5s. Maybe give that one to TF uh, versus touchdown on the right side. Twisted Fate versus touchdown as we are three manning the bottom side because we're trying to get some saplings. Yep. The bush. Turrets making this very annoying. Some Spell Thief's edge stacks here for Barrel. But some gold traded back. For the turrets. GG. This dueling over control of these brushes. Really important in a matchup like this with the poke that Varus can provide with Karma too. Yeah. Mid lane might just turn out to be a little bit of a farm fest. I think, um, <laughs> you know, both of these players, especially, I think they're going to be trying really hard. Everybody wants to get their emotes in the game. So, um, you know, the draft looked really real. Everybody seemed to be trying to pick their best stuff. It all makes sense, right? And I think we're going to see equally serious gameplay. So, should be fun to uh, see, you know, who's actually better in terms of these two teams. Um, one change. Okay. Oh, oh, here's all the runes. That, that's definitely a change to the broadcast. This is very nice. Yeah, it's very easy to see. And you get to see everything. I mean, you used to get to see everything, but this is it looks bigger, you know? Yeah. Much cleaner, nice. I'd say. Yeah. What change were you going to mention? Were you going to mention the jungle pets? Yes. I was going to mention the jungle pets. There are new pets in the jungle. If you don't play League... You know, maybe you're just one of those watchers. One of those guys, you know, used to play a lot. I know there are a lot of you guys out there. You know, you used to play seasons one through five or whatever. And then, you know, real life took over, but you still tune in to Pro League of Legends. You're watching every day. You're, you're a big time watcher. You might be like, what's going on in the jungle? Well, there were a lot of changes. There were a huge amount of changes in the jungle, but there are now uh, pets in the jungle. No, the pets will help out a lot of junglers who had really bad clear in the past um, be able to push through. Um, adds a lot of extra damage. Depending on which pet you've chosen, you might get um, you know some extra shielding when you're running around and stuff like that. You'll get some passive healing and stuff like this. And We're not going to go into all the changes. That's you know, better for some upcoming broadcasts, say, on challengers that we will be commentating officially. Wait, what? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the LCK. We're also going to be commentating that officially. Yes. So Make sure you're watching that. Yeah, big news. <laughs> Taking a chance <laughs> to promote it. Um, yeah. But anyway, the jungle pets are going to make it a, a, you know, a lot more junglers viable. But I think at the pro play level this early on, you'll still see more common junglers at use. Um, in this series, who knows? <laughs> we go down yeah. the rabbit hole a little bit. I feel like it kind of evens the playing field, you know. It, it kind of, as you were saying, brings up some of the, the lower tier junglers and it, it kind of pulls down some of those Omega clearers because of some of the changes to, um, you know, just getting resources back and stuff like that. So. so Willer can engage from a really long distance away with his flash and with the speed boost his jungle pets can give him from Bush. So Chovy respecting that a lot. I, I say that, he walks forward, but it looks like he'll be fine. Chovy, by the way, used to be the teammate of Willer, and Willer was his bodyguard during that 2021 yeah. uh, resurgence of Hanwha life. Now his enemy there in the brush for just a moment. Yeah. And Chovy's going to come in here. Touchdown, Chovy. Obviously, 
Team Death, Chobi, if you haven't caught on to that just yet. Clears out some vision. And the Rise, uh, another big change here, if you guys haven't heard. You probably have. Uh, Rod of Ages back in the game. It is very good for the Rise. It offers you a speed boost at times after you cast a bunch of spells. Um, and it also gives you a free level when you complete it. Yeah, it's massive, for, especially for champions that want to have levels. Um, Rise, I mean, any champion wants to have a level, but like some champions are going to get huge benefits out of it. Um, and starts the tier here. And before this patch, and we'll see if it ends up being true on this patch too, but there was a combo, of course, with Rod of Ages and Seraphs. Um, it was really commonly built together. Changed on this patch, combined costs a lot more expensive, so you don't get, like, the buying tier first and getting, like, that free extra 400 gold towards it feels a little bit bad, but the stats are better, arguably, so we'll see if that ends up being a, still a thing. Not as strong of a combo as before. We will potentially have a skirmish here. Barrel's <laughs> rotated up. Yeah, uh, the barrel gank, a uh, bit confusing. This is very much seen. There are about 7,000 approximately pings uh, on the bottom side of the river here. And so Chovy's just going to play that safe. They should know that he knows. You ever think we'll see the hook ping in pro play? <laughs> the <bait? laughs> Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I, yeah, maybe use for its original uh, meaning. I would assume, but uh, not for its alternate one. Yeah. The uh, the Chemtech Drake, it's alive. Yeah, it's not going to be a Chemtech uh, Soul this time around, so yep. we'll get to see the cool new plants and stuff in this. No game. rift. Yeah. That yeah. When it, when I saw that Chemtech, I'm like, they're just doing this to spite me, aren't they? Yeah, you're not a big <laughs> fan of the plants. I hate the plants actually. <laughs> first um, but I know that a lot of people like them. They do add to some of the jungler's mobility early on in the game, something like that. But uh, yeah. Either way, that's a that's a topic for another time. Just just you know, for the future, if we do get Chemtech Rift, something to mention. Certainly true. We'll get there. Barrel just put a little bit of damage on Chovy in mid, while Viper was coming back to lane to lose control of the lane here a little bit bottom side, and Barrel's Karma could be very annoying to deal with here. Barrel keeping himself topped up as best as he can, but lane control now to uh, Deft and Peter. And we saw Willer down here for a moment to potentially punish this as, ooh, big damage onto Viper with that early dirt. Barrel is uh, not scared to get in there and try to fight this one as well. Very curious to see where this top lane eventually goes. For now, they're just trading almost exactly evenly. Viper definitely having a rough time. Uh, with this harass, I mean, they do have a decent amount of harass themselves, but not quite the same amount that uh, Avaris, who's hitting all of the stuff with this early item, can do. It's like Peter wanted to potentially go for an all-in there with the speed up, and they have Ignite, of course, but I think better if it's still pushing them out of lane here and might be able to push for a plate once these turrets are cleared. This is really unfortunate for Team Faker. Barrel going to try to hold down the fort. Uh, Willer nowhere to be seen, so we'll just be some extra play gold. Slightly buffed on this uh, mm -hmm. new preseason patch. Yeah, you can see that Viper was considering staying, but he this knew that, you know, it was just too obvious, right? Because if he stays, you, you can do like the Faker thing where you hide behind the turret, you hide yourself, pretend you back, and then you just stay. But Deft and Peter were not going to back in that situation. They wanted to play, so it's better to just get the back in. You're going to lose that wave anyway, and now you can actually... Uh, fight. Well, with that crash coming through and uh, Viper having to come down and catch, this means that Team Death, of course, will get control of the Herald here. Toby having control of mid for just enough time to rotate over. Peter here, too, with the roam. And that should just be a free Herald going over to Team Deft. Not going to look for a dive with it, though. Yeah, not quite yet. Uh, this top lane, we keep on panning up to it, but nobody's really... Uh... <laughs> Getting in there, Dudu and Morgan. Um, definitely not the most aggressive of laners, but Dudu, you know, I, I say that, but in the past he used to be that way, but he definitely started to get a bit more aggressive in uh, recent times, for sure. His Gnar in particular was really a big standout pick for him um, in recent times, but he's had lots of aggressive picks too. Chain of Corruption. This is a massive amount of damage. You see that Viper again 
He has a refillable, and he did take biscuits. Definitely uh, both sides of this matchup taking the biscuits, all four players, it looks like. Maybe Def didn't. Um, yeah, I don't certainly could have. I don't think he did, but I may have just missed it. But uh, everybody else having biscuits makes sense for the lane being what it is. Willer able to hit that smite. Nicely done. Yeah, Willer having a slight lead in terms of the clear uh, with the blue pet. You have a lot of ways to, to speed that one up, obviously, with the bushes and whatnot to get through the jungle faster. Hasn't really been seeing much action in this early part of the game. No Drake take as we crest the 10 minute mark here. Still just so contested between these two squads. And with Fiora on one side, if you make a heavy commitment, it will cost you big. And uh, I think Team Deft have just been happy to sit back and have mostly control over the bottom side of the map here while Fiora takes the weak side, top side. There's the Drake take. He's picking it up. And this feels very much like the LCK Wolf, doesn't it? It certainly does. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, just kind of hanging out. Everybody really wants those emotes. I do not blame them. You got to win these games. But that's two objectives now going over to Team Deft, because doing a good job with that. Both junglers getting pretty close to finishing off uh, their pets, getting them into adult mode, fully evolved. Okay, get those big smites. To get the bonus effects as well, as here's Willer. Uh, Faker gonna totally miss, as Willer is not going to miss. Does a bit of damage, but Jovi doesn't even have to flash. So because Faker kind of goes in there and whiffs early, uh, there's not too much of a threat onto Jovi. Yeah, barrel shows, so there's an opportunity here. Bottom side, Oh, Aw, chains. <laughs> if those land, Viper is, at the very least, would have had to flash there to avoid if they were in range. But he gets away without using it, well played. Yeah. I'm glad you used the correct version of, of Flash as well, because Viper himself said in the interview that he is a flasher and not a flasher, and he recommends that everybody use Flash on F. So if you want to be like Viper, put your Flash on F. There's something weird about using Ignite or Exhaust or Teleport on F as well, isn't there? You know, it just doesn't seem right. Yeah, it just doesn't fit. Yeah. I don't know. Not about that life. I'm not. I don't discriminate against la Dlashers, but I do. I do suggest. <laughs> um, the How about Deliporters? <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Cuz ulting. Oh, here we go. Dudu is going to ult away, but he is still going to get rooted. But uh, you know, just Cassante is going to go a million miles down the lane and say no, and that's essentially what he does. Going to be totally safe here. His dash uh, lets him be unstoppable, so he has a pretty decent escape from a lot of ganks like this. Yeah. He also already has Iceborne Gauntlet, by the way. This is now Iceborne Gauntlet. Uh, yep. Very much like what Iceborne Gauntlet used to be. Old school. Yeah. <laughs> We're bringing it back retro style here. I mean, just, just the less Jack shows I see also in this game, the better. Uh, yeah. Every soul in the game I play is like seven Jack shows in the game. Supports Bill and Jack show, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it, it does feel like, you know, it is a very strong item, but. I feel like people are so hyped about the item itself for a good reason. I mean, it's very strong, right? Um, but the the amount of people that build solo queue is probably too many. Yep. Um, well, of course, slightly anyway. nerfed on this patch too in terms of the healing it does. So you can't get healing. Oh, minions. Faker! Whoa, a miss. rare Faker oh. double miss. Ooh, maybe a little rusty here for the old man in the mid lane. As Dudu, he is going to dash once again, does not have his ultimate available, but now he's getting dove under the turret, but he is so tanky as that arrow's just going to sail wide. Morgan taking away too much damage and hit away, but Faker is not going to miss this time around, and he should have been able to sweep them up, but Toby at least going to trade one back somehow under the turret, and Maokai is just so unbelievably tanky that it took forever for them to kill him. Now, now Barrel rotating down here to try to perhaps engage on Def. He has both Summers and a Ward here, so we'll be fine. We'll back away. Really cool uh, arrow attempt there as well from Viper, even though it went wide. Morgan's uh, timing of that parry almost perfect as well, as Chobi will pick up Rod of Ages here at 14 minutes. So 24-minute mark to have that fully stacked and to get the extra level. It's a pretty nice timing to have this one. Just like old League of Legends, you want to build that as soon as possible. Oh, Barrel! <laughs> Where is he coming from? <laughs> Where did he come from? 
Oh, man. Okay, well, this guy's dead. Poor Deft. Viper doing a good job of baiting that with his heel. Didn't even have to flash. But uh, got into the thick of things. Slowed up Deft. Deft using both summoners. And Barrel, you know, you talked about it. The guy goes for crazy plays. He's got some great shot calling, and he makes it happen, most important. Yeah, look at the position here as well for Viper's arrow angle. Like, he's shooting it down from left side here. Flash gets taken. Morgan doesn't get the repost, or rather the parry, because he's the arrow misses. But then the follow-up here from Baker is good. Jovi gets Dudu with the root, blasts him with one extra Q. Well, the trade definitely favoring Team Faker here. And on the bottom side of things, Barrel just hanging out. You know, where is he? I don't know where he's at. And then suddenly, flashing Heimer over the wall. Holds out, Deft is doomed. Deft trades Flash, hoping he can trade one onto Viker. Viper. Excuse me. Also, the cleanse goes down, but he's unsuccessful. And uh, we do see the Ravenous Hydra start here for Viper. Yeah. So very important, he did not die as those get stacked up. Yep, that's uh, also a thing in the bottom lane here. As, okay, maybe going to try for a bit of a dive down on the bottom side. The arrow to be used as well as the flash. Barrel going to try to eat the root, but they both get hit. And now they're both just totally destroyed here. Viper also going to go down. Very nice play from the side of Team Deft to get down on the bottom lane and take the summoners and the kills. Yeah, just barely on the edge of Kuz's root there uh, with the Maokai ultimate. Feels bad, man. Then, of course, the follow-up combo from Deft is deadly and Deft rushed Ghost Blade so he's got some extra movement speed to close the distance on those plus the lethality with the early Dirk build. Standard, you know, lethality, Varus variation here. Don't think Doodle gets punished but that's going to be second break going over to Team Death. Easy peasy. Mountain Soul to be the one as we do have the jungle item here completed for the side of Willer. Almost for Cuz, probably just one more camp, considering he's probably got a bonus treat at this point in time. No and doubt. they'll have the Rift Heralds here in mid. This is the second one, so no plates, but still should be mid turret, just based on the fact that everybody was backing after uh, that one. As in goes the ult for Dudu, he's really getting in there onto Morgan, who doesn't seem to care too much. And the last auto will be Viper on mid lane turret to take down the first turret of the game. TP here from Chovy to try to catch Baker between a turret and a hard place. Yeah, and Baker is just going to ult Chovy. Will Realm Warp, dodge please. that. Here comes the Realm Warp. He's got a bunch of minions, too, that's going to force the flash out of Faker. Definitely some nice uh, movement there from Chovy. Oh, man, we're going to see this at least twice in regular season. Faker versus Chovy in 2023 spring. Looking forward to it. This is the Maokai ult that starts it off bottom side here. <laughs> Follow up from Varus. Puzz gets in there, knocks him back. That was beautifully played from Puzz and Team Def. And down here on the bottom side, I mean, control remains in Team Def's favor here for the bottom side of the map so much. And Fjord hasn't fallen so far behind here for Morgan to where you feel bad about things. Still holding on to this turret. Still a side laning menace later on. Yeah. Sante, still just as annoying as before, maybe more so. He's stacking up the armor, and he does a fair amount of damage as well. So all the trades are very nice. Ooh, Death going to force, be forced to cleanse. And so they're kind of just getting that off cooldown here. Very nicely done by the side of Willer to be very proactive in the mid lane. To be so careful here as Death playing with fire, trying to trade these arrows in for damage against the Sejuani. Obviously, Willer's ult being down. Cuz, speaking of ults, looking for a trap on the Viper. He's trying to get in there. Viper is going to be rooted up. This guy is totally gone. He does not have Flash. He does not have his support. Not that that would have helped, I don't even think, because the Maokai would have sailed under that stun. So Viper going to be caught out in the mid lane. The heal expended, just hoping he can get past that Maokai ult. The first time we've seen the near escape when Cuz decides to engage, but he's not able to make it happen at this time. You can see the upgraded smites online. That's the new logo for the 1200 damage. It's AoE as well, which is usually not that important, but can be for that smite is 
with Tudu really wants to try to take Morgan out. You're trying to bait him <laughs> into this engage with Willer with his ult back up. Yeah. Just one thing to mention. I, I don't think we mentioned this, but of course, with all the melee tops, it feels like Sejuani just goes up in value even that much more. She's got the speed boost from the brush as well. Oh, no. Morgan totally baited out here. The repose not going to work out well for him. He is just gone. The damage way too much. And Cuz was, like, kind of there, but by the time he was already caught out, Cuz and probably Morgan himself knew that he was not in a good spot. As the knockup also coming in here. Cuz going to be slowed up. In they go. Kind of missed there, but in comes the flash from the side of Willer. And he's looking to chase down Cuz. The knockback and the ultimate use as the whip went ahead and the oh, arrow comes in but it gets plant, over the wall the plant buffer gotta love the plants yeah i knew you were i knew you had to say something about yeah. it but this is cause this heroic okay. attack we had a you know but you can get a caught there a moment ago but viper seal used but still can't get away it's the knockback There's plenty of damage here okay. even with uh willer nearby and he's in the brush here with the speed boost sejuani with the melees you're talking about so strong in situations like this and no ultimate for Cuz. Still on cooldown here. So he does get chased down, has to flash, yeah. use his ultimate to escape. So still on cooldown as we speak. So a lot of resources burned here for Team Depth. And Baker Squad getting a small gold lead here after that turret goes down. Yeah, it's feeling pretty good for them. Uh, it's kind of insane what Asante and Sejuani can do together. Um, you know, we were, we were talking about it a little bit during the draft, but we're probably not going to be seeing this too much just because of how strong um, Asante is in general, but also this combo. We're With already beginning to see just how strong it is. With Thornmail done too, his ultimate is just yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun time. As now, of course, Team Faker going to be challenging for this Drake. Not going to let this third one go. I mean, two item Faker here with Void Staff and Leandris. This is definitely a good team fight for them if they can extend it out. Yeah. They have so many great engage options, too. So if Def gets caught, that's that's basically the end of the story. Same with Chovy. This poke isn't really hitting, and Viper's able to get in there and push out the mid wave. The arrow is going to sail totally uh, right down the middle and not hit anything as here comes the ult on to Cuz, but they're not committing. They want to turn on to Morgan. Here comes the Maokai ult as they will just try to burst down the straight. They should be able to get it. No smite seal here for the side of Team Faker. And it feels like Team Faker could have probably gotten a little bit more aggressive, but maybe playing it more safe for this one. It's really tough. You know, Morgan's on that flank angle. Resources committed, and they, they actually end up hitting Cuz. Worst possible scenario, right? He's got his Radiant Virtue. He can heal up, and he's going to be so obnoxious to kill there. can just ult everyone away, and you're kind of caught in this Team Faker there after that. And they say, okay, well, let's just do the Baron. I mean, they have a bunch of turrets. They have an Ash as well. It's a lot of damage coming in, but Vision given over to the side of Team Depth. As the knockup dude is doing such a good job of keeping Cuz out of the pit. That is going to be Baron to the side of TF. As now in goes Baker, but he's all alone and immediately gets stunned. Trying to go for the TikTok highlight, but unfortunately, <laughs> he is going to be put in the bin instead. And that's uh, Fiora getting a lot of extra money here, a lot of extra value as her side laning phase is coming online here. She's got to TM it up. And, you know, you could argue this is definitely the right call here for Team Faker. Take a risk like this. Looks like a straight up out of T1's playbook move, right? Faker's like, I think we could do Baron here. This is the T1 style. <laughs> you could take Faker out of T1 for the show match, but you can't take the T1 out of Faker. Yeah. They get the Baron, but there's so many sticky champions here for the side of Team Death. toby has got the flank angle, so two will go down. Morgan picks up the double, yeah. and that's a ton of money in a Fiora's pocket at the worst possible time. Yeah, there are post stun on to Faker. I mean, even if he doesn't get stunned, I feel like he probably just dies before he kills anyone anyway. So maybe not the best uh, moments for him to go in, but maybe he just assumed he would die anyway. Uh, not going to amount to too much. It is two members on the side of Team Faker that still have the Baron. Should be the bottom lane, Viper and Barrel. About 20 seconds for Chovy's Rod of Ages to finish. I think that's why the observers are highlighting here. Has level 16 already. So um, in this case, he's going to get a lot of value uh, in the experience and the base stats, but he's already got what he wants in terms of his skills. Is Morgan? OK, that's an insane amount of damage. Chovy just flashing on top of Viper, his former teammate. He's like, yo, what's good? Welcome back. <laughs> In goes Baker, he's got a nice one. Gets reposted again, and the damage's not quite there. They finally are able to kill Death. 
Darkness now. They're trying to play the long game. They're trying to use that sustained damage, but Toby is such a monster right now that I'm not sure that you really can. Some really nice poke on the side of Team Faker, but as you can see, they're not quite able to match the damage here from Chovy. Dudu's still trying to land that knockup. Not going to be able to, though. As there you go. <laughs> Level 17, by the way. Yeah, and that's a full bar of experience. It doesn't just complete what's Boom. left of your level. It goes straight to that percentage on the next one. So still very valuable. Is That's annoying, but... Got him. Ash Arrow, basically a free cooldown. As Dudu wants to challenge here, don't know if that's advisable because Realm Warp is up. <laughs> it's level three Realm Warp. It's like, okay, yep, yeah, we are everywhere. And we are on lower cooldown. It's Imperial Mandate Ash with this Ravenous Hydra. So, you know, even fully stacked on the Hydra, the damage is pretty good, but it's not a super hyper-fed AD carry late game. It's more utility here for the build. So I think when Faker is killed in this exchange with the Repose, you just can't compete with Chovy's damage on this fed level 16 rise. Beautifully played here from Morgan, predicting the angle. Repose is Faker. It's a trade of damage dealers, but I think a trade up for Team Death. And you could see Team Faker want to push the issue further, but they just don't have enough damage there. Lots yep. of initiation, but not the sustain they need. If they had Faker's Leandri's damage, different story. Yeah, absolutely. And you see that we have seen a little bit of split pushing from Morgan, and certainly Fiora can still be an insane menace in the side lane, but Morgan just showing off some of what the Fiora can do in team fights as well. And with some of the new itemization, you know, you can kind of be anywhere. As Faker now, speaking of anywhere, he was about to get reposted for the third time by Morgan. He's getting dunked by Morgan Dude in this rooted. game. <laughs> As Peter, you know, he's, he's in a lot of trouble here. He's not dying somehow. He survives a long time he's here. He's actually immortal. Um, just karma things, I guess. As now he's going to get another speed up here. He is going away, trying to avoid the Naga, but eventually just dies anyway. Yeah, they don't commit to try to trap Dudu there and kill him. We'll just die in the trade. But yeah, I was, I was literally going to make the joke. Faker's like, I've had enough of these repost stuns. I'm going to buy a stopwatch. <laughs> and then he has to use the stopwatch because of it. Yeah. Moments later when he's found and caught oh, on Gromp. Speaking of side pushing, side laning here, Chovy hits level 18 and takes out an inner <laughs> turret. <laughs> 26 minutes in the game. 319 CS, something, something, rise hack. Chovy rise hack, 320 CS. Yeah. Yeah. Jonah Strong is back. 2023, by the way, guys, so you'll get more zoom ins like that. Okay, Mountain Soul, by the way, incredibly important for both of these teams. Yeah, look at that, look at health bar of Dip Barrel already. I mean, this is, uh, and, and fake, uh, not fake, or Willer. They both, you know. <laughs> but either way, let's see if Willer can actually get into the pit as actually. Team Death, they're just going to let Fiora split push. He does have teleport. Yeah, this, this, they have three Drake advantage. They don't have to fight for this. Yeah. Slow it down. That's true. Looks like they're just going to try to give this one away because it's still sticking around. But they're getting so much value elsewhere on the map. Realm Warp to the minions onto the mid inner and Your base. inhibitor turret <laughs> is open. Chovy Realm Warp those minions on top of it here. So they will trade a solo Drake for double turret worth of value here. 4,000 gold the advantage. They won't it's be able to get the inhibitor, but it's open now for a fed Fiora. I think it was three turrets even, right? Yeah, yeah. Either way, a, a massive chunk of value going over to, to Team Deft. And, you know, the draft here from the side of Team Deft, as long as they didn't fall behind, was always going to be insanely strong in these later game situations with the split pushing. That's exactly what you said yeah. early on, uh, Wolf. And... Here we go. I mean, this is exactly what happened. They got a small lead from winning a couple of team fights, maybe a couple of overzealous moments from the side of Team Faker, and all of a sudden, I mean, Jovi's going to be level 18 for the rest of the game. He's miles away from everybody else. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and the the thing is too, Team Faker have a lot of single target blow up and a lot of ways to isolate someone. But Def's positioning has been good. He's had most of his summoners up pretty much all game, or both of his summoners up pretty much most of the game. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to target him. You hit Cuz, you don't want that. You hit Peter, not the greatest. As Def can just cleanse that. I mean, that's a good trade for Viper, of course. But still, it's just so hard to lock this Varus down, sitting on three items. Yeah. And it's the Varus who is so consistent in the poke damage, but Chovy is actually just a moving machine gun. 
Not to mention, you know, as, as I talked about when we first saw the rise, the Rod of Ages, it gives you that speed up, that little bit of oomph behind everything else, you know, not to mention the extra L level, not to mention the stats that you get from it. He's just flashing in, look at Barrel's health bar! It's nearly gone and he's so tanky. Did he go too far is the question, as Depth is gonna snipe Barrel from downtown, but huge stunts coming in from the side of Team Faker, and they will put two of them in the dumpster. They turn this one around. Toby, this time, overestimating his power. They also didn't even have Morgan, who's in the bottom lane, still being very annoying. I think the idea here is, look, we've got a lot of ways to slow Team Faker down. We engage here, we get a pick, we can disengage, buy a ton of time. This should be in Hib, even with Dudu coming over. Morgan should be able to kite this one out. Has Ghost as well. Um, but you're gonna lose a Baron for this. Definitely an overextension. But it's not all bad for Team Death. I mean, there's still 3,000 gold ahead. They will give over a lot of that Baron gold too, but they're still in firm control of this game. Could have been better there, and Team Faker will get that Baron as a consolation prize. Yeah. But how can they utilize that against Rise Split Push? The 131 is just so amazing here, as this is the overextension, right? Trying to blow up Barrel here on the backside. Toby takes so much damage. The Ash Flows are gonna be such a pain to deal with here. And there's just not much you could do. Faker hits the double knockup. That's the punish. And they're like calling, Morgan, go, go, go. Get what you can get. Yeah. Toby being forced to stopwatch for a lot of after his engage as well because of the Cassante, right? I mean, his ult is just insanely game-changing. The amount of CC he has in his kit is just ridiculous. So you see he tries to get in there and tries to blow people up, but immediately he's like, oh, oh, crap, I got to react. Um, I gotta, I gotta react really quickly with the stopwatch, and I have to stop doing damage. Otherwise, I'm just gonna get 100 to zero because, you know, Cassante being what he is, and, nope. and all the other CC they have in their comp as well. Let's see what Team Faker get done with this Baron, right? And there's a, a lot of gold to be picked up here. The uh, bounty has fallen off, but still standing gold on these inner turrets, and it's going to, of course, really equalize the bottom push here of the inhibitor being down. Take a lot of that inhibitor time away here. Uh, gonna push it down to about 130 of real active time. They can 4 1 this a little bit and keep the Fiora back. Force Morgan to defend. There's no, you know, split push win condition at this moment in time to kill the Nexus. Ult is out. It is an immense amount of damage onto Deft already. The shields are good. So much peel for him, though. He doesn't actually have to worry. He doesn't have to expend his flash. His cleanse is coming back up. He does take a ton of damage, but this turret stands. Yeah. Will stand. The Baron certainly is going to give Team Faker a breath of fresh air. Please, not again. <laughs> if he got Repose stunned after going in again and then somehow turned on, I would have uh, been dissatisfied, let's say. Every Faker stand sheds a yeah. tear. And we're all Faker stands. <laughs> Even if you think you're not, you really are. <laughs> yeah, I mean. This dragon about to come up here in 10 seconds. TPs to be used. And the Baron's still available. You see, this is actually going to make a big impact on where the lanes are at. Team Deft, as a team, are able to push out bottom lane at least. But now Toby, this time, he's not going to flash in because, of course, he doesn't have flash. Uh, but he can just walk at them and be a little bit less aggressive in that case. As the arrow, everything on Takuz, he eats so much of the damage. And that's actually really good for the side of Team Deft. As in goes Baker, he's going to hit two of them. There's a Crazy amount of damage to Peter, but it's not a great follow-up. Yeah, no follow-up on the Maokai ult here great either. Space, I suppose, gets his team positioning now. Toby pretty low. In goes Cut, and he steals it away with the Flash Smite. And his these smites, man. <laughs> his Smite just came up. He used it on the Scuttle. Morgan's trying uh -oh. to win the game, meanwhile. <laughs> so Dudu isn't here. That's one of their best tools here in this fight. He's not here. Yeah, and they kind of forcing them into a fight as well. They don't want them to go back and deal with the Fiora, as now Fiora, Morgan. here comes Morgan. He's level 18, too. He's looking for the big wraparound here. He is going to be spotted, but I'm not sure that that matters. He is a little bit ahead of his team, but he's still looking to get this angle onto Faker and Barrel specifically, as over the wall he goes. He's got Grand Challenge, too. I mean, he is going to rip somebody to shreds. Uh, it's kind of difficult for him to go in 1v4, though. He really needs his team to back him up, and it looks like they're not quite able to get in the position in time, not a position they wanted, at least, to take the fight. Yeah. So, Team Faker does get away, <laughs> but they lost an inhibitor turret, or rather, a nexus turret. 
and the Mountain Soul. We get Cuz's smite timer here. He used it to grab this scuttle. So they delay here in this fight, fight back, and Team Faker torn between rushing the Drake down or actually just winning the fight. Need to do enough damage to keep this poking Varus away. Puz gets his smite up, flashes in, steals it away. It's 1,200 damage yeah. on Season 13, so just enough damage to take that one out, and they end up getting the winning play because of it. Morgan grabs that uh, Nexus turret in the base and forces the enemy top laner to stay home when yeah. he comes back for the chase. That's why Faker has to, Team Faker has to rotate all the way up to the top side of the map, losing valuable time. Yeah, and actually I was watching Dudu and not one. He had to leave the fight early. After Faker ulted, he actually just ran into the enemy jungle and had to TP back to base. It was such an awkward timing for him. He wasn't able to do Cassante things in the team fight, and then he was just there to essentially stop the game from ending. So talk about removing a guy from the team fight. That's definitely a fantastic way to do so. You haven't really been able to see some of the crazy Sante highlights so far. Not compared to what Morgan has able, been able to do on this Fiora so far, at least. Yeah, you could see what Dudu was able to do in the lane, but because the strong side for Team Deft was bottom, okay, we're posted again. This guy can, or uh, rather parried. He can block anything. Um, but yeah, what the strong side for Deft on bottom side just meant that they didn't have to care about the Cassante top very much, and Morgan held his own, survived, then got that double kill in the mid game, and just exploded when he ended up getting the hull breaker, which is an item we haven't talked about in a while, but yeah. relevant here. Still exists. As uh, Viper, very much in no man's land, uh, he is going to have Willer with him, but Willer also had to flash away from that one. Rise ult used. But, uh, Heal as well as a flash will be used on the side of Team Faker as once again everything kind of just thrown into a Maokai who just laughs at them. Moves on with his life. He just really doesn't care, doesn't even pop his uh, item. Creating virtue, just doesn't need it. We don't need this yet as now he's going to lead the charge into this one as he's trying to get into the pit. He does not have flash and it is going to go the way of Team Faker. Dudu in the back line just doing so much work on the feeder, but he. Doesn't quite want to go in all alone, and the threats on the side of Team Deft are insane. They are looking to move in. Deft over the top. We're going to get that damage on the Viper. Not quite able to land it. Cuz still looking to lead the charge, but he's taking huge chunks now from Baker, and he is the one that has to run away now. That tank not quite so tanky against that very fed Azir. Arrow not going to connect. TP here from Chovy back into the mid lane to try to take out this inhibitor turret, but. Very risky call to make. Won't actually find himself getting too much value here as the bottom inhibitor has also spawned. Team Faker holding on what felt like for a moment a tiny thread, just barely hanging in there, but now really winning some convincing team fights here. As we move into this Baron fight, lots of ultimates used early. Deft gets that Radiant Virtue, cooldown reduction for his Qs, wants to be the big damage dealer here, but it's really Dudu who makes the hero play into the backline that gives enough space here for Team Faker to kite back and use Faker's level 18, Leandri's damage to win that extended fight. And it's really the Azir damage with Death Cap online now that's going to be so frustrating. We talked about he keeps getting picked, he keeps getting picked. There's not enough sustained damage for Team Faker, but when he's alive, when he does survive through that initial initiation because the Baron is really the pivot point, he can do so much. Yeah, you know, if we talk about the extreme late game here, the range advantage should go over to the side of Team Faker, especially just with the Azir alone, but also the Ash and the Heimer to just kind of zone them away. They're fantastic at kind of kiting and, you know, running backwards while they're fighting, you know, just essentially kiting the enemy team. And that's why Toby's flashing into fights and stuff like that, because he has to get into close range to actually do some big damage. So Faker's positioning, I feel like, going to be extremely pivotal when it does come to these team fights. And with another Baron buff, they're really starting to close the doors here on Team Death's split push win condition with no inhibitor down. Look at Morgan, he has no TP, he's just looking for a flank angle here to try to punish, try to catch Barrel, maybe Viper on the backside, but there's a lot of peel for him. Faker sitting on sums too. Okay, here we go. This is one way to get straight in your opponent's face as they're just going to rise up in and they're going to find Peril on the backside down. He goes immediately. They get in range and they're able to burst them insanely. Here's the knockback now onto Viper. He is in huge trouble. And this is exactly the team fight that Team Death were looking for as down should go to do well. He is Cassante. 
Um, so he's just going to get away, I suppose. Maybe. Maker trying to push mid in the meanwhile. <laughs> the flash is going to come in. Baker going to miss that one. Stopwatch comes out anyway. Who's going to win this? Baker flashing the Q. He does an insane amount to Toby. Forces him away and Wants continues to, to push. Hit. But the, the base is open. I don't think Baker could defend this. He's not back. They have to back. He's so late on it. Are there any minions there? Oh, uh, it doesn't look like there are. Nope. That's actually going to help here. Is it enough, though, is the question. As Morgan gets in, tries to zone away Baker, and they should have enough here now. As Sejuani goes down, Willer not enough. And the Nexus will be taken here by Team Death in game number one. No joke. Pretty sick game of League of Legends, actually. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't know if we were going to have just for fun games today. We we're going to see some, you know, some really silly drafts. But of course, with all these champions open, we got to see an amazing game. We saw some really nice macro. We saw Team Faker really play some great team fighting when Faker was able to keep his position good and stave off the pressure in those fights and then do that Leandre's damage. They looked very good uh, in the late game there. Not enough, of course, in the end, as Faker was trying to push mid, that really big collapse on the barrel really, I think, messed up the comms a little bit for Team Faker because Faker's in mid. He could have peeled for Viper a little bit after that, but they're like, okay, barrel's down. We don't have those slows anymore. It's going to be a really hard fight without that Rylize to peel for the Azir going through, even if he has Flash, even if he has Zonia's. Baker's very vulnerable. He decides to make the call to push mid, does get shut down long enough. And with that open bot inhibitor, it's just a really easy call for Team Def to come in and, and kill the Nexus. But great <laughs> game, 40 minute game. Yeah. We saw a lot of new stuff. And uh, I'm Wait, excited for the coach. season, but I'm excited for team two, or game two. Yeah, who's the coach in here? Who's gonna pull up the replay and, and talk about what went wrong, what went right? Uh, looks like maybe Peter, not 100% sure. Pretty back and forth as well. There was a very nice lead taken by Team Def there at about 27-ish minutes into the game. And it actually swung back. There were there was that good team fight that Team Faker was able to get. And three for three on Barons as well for Team Faker. Yeah. I joked about it being T1-esque, but each Baron was a calculated call. And this is the calls we're talking about with Faker and Barrel on the team. You're going to make some risky calls, but they have the experience. They know we could just barely sneak this one out potentially. And yes, they were a little bit punished with some of those takes, but the idea was definitely good. Look at Faker also topping the damage charts more than a Lethality Varus, who had a pretty nice lead in the early game. Faker does 36.5k damage with that Leandre's with the death cap online. Those team fights were won or lost by his positioning. Yeah, they definitely were. Uh, certainly the icing on the cake at the end of that one was the Rise uh, team warp into essentially the front line. But really all they had to do was find anyone and blow them up. They were able to get in range with the Rise ultimate. Team Faker a little bit out of position, not all five members there. And that was eventually what led to it. Again, these are five guys that uh, not necessarily everybody has played together, but some of them have. But, uh, so there the is teamwork not going to be totally on point. There is going to be an interview. We're not going to do it live here on the global stream. It will actually be for you guys in the break. So Valdez and I are just going to talk about how awesome that game was for a little bit. So if you want to go take a break now, like literally now, run to the, the restroom, go grab a drink, and then come back because the interview will be yeah. translated and ready for you on the break here on our stream. Just not at this very moment in time. Or you could listen to us talk about how great that game was and uh, look at us play with our rabbit hats again. This is me telling Wolf to shoe. <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, uh, we will have the wonderful g -Sun translating in the break, uh, just to let you guys know. Yeah. We're not just gonna throw you to the wolves and, <laughs> you know, best of luck. Um, so make sure to thank the curve for that. Year of the rabbit and year of an amazing LCK, uh, you know, we had two LCK teams in the finals. LCK teams overperforming our expectations at Worlds. Uh, we've had a Pog State episode to talk about this. I've talked about Monty Wolf Show. We've, we've, there's been a lot of discussion, right? LCK won, ha ha! I can sit in the LCK chair and say it. Um, but like we we had DRX not only overperform, but win the whole thing. Um, yeah, the team split up, but I, I'm really looking forward to this year. I think the changes we have for Season 13 are really good for the player base overall. I think a lot of people, the jungle change is somewhat controversial, but good changes usually are, right? Because they have to be big and sweeping enough 
to actually get people to care. And I think for new players out there, jungle might be a little bit easier. But I like the Rod of Ages is back. You know, we've got some reworked items, the Rift. It's going to be a fun place to be. Yeah, I think we've had some uh, bigger sweeping changes in pre-seasons before, especially the big uh, item, you know, like all the new items that came in that one 2021. Season. I think it was 2021, yeah. The one where we got like Gore Drinker and Was that when you and when you and Chronicler first joined the LCK as well? <laughs> it's like, oh by the way, here's this giant new bunch of items. Make sure you're ready for them on day one. I had the craziest on my first like real League of Legends cast when I did Tesco Cup, I had like two books worth of item information in front of me. I was like, don't mess this up, Wolf. Yeah. Day one. <laughs> so all these jungle changes are like, you know, they're pretty big. They definitely change the game in a big way. The items in this preseason are also quite large. We've seen what they have done in terms of turning the meta to a bruiser fest. And uh, I don't know. It's still not quite on that level, but it's still quite large. So I think some of the Maybe some of the changes the to how invades work and how the early game jungle works, that some of the more controversial changes at the high level of play, um, those symptoms uh, that people are feeling right now will be seen more later. It's too early to tell, but pro play starting soon, we're going to get a lot more ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, we're going to take a break. We're going to hand it over to Jason for the translation. During the break, don't go anywhere. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason for the SKE event in Tokyo. First up, joined by Dudu and Morgan. Congratulations, Morgan. How was that first game? I mean, like, I thought it was for like a show match, but I think it was actually pretty competitive, so it was really fun. Dudu, it's a bummer that you lost. How was game number one? I mean, it was pretty winnable, but in the end, our decision was not good. Like, my decision was bad. So, yeah, I'm a little bit bummed. Yeah, we were really curious to find out whether you guys are going to have fun or, like, try hard. And it was, like, full try hard mode. Is it about the emotes? 
prize for the winner. I mean, yeah, but also it's a match, you know. A lot of fans are here to watch this game. A lot of people tuned in. So I wanted to make it, you know, really, really, really good for the fans to enjoy. And we have two more games potentially to come. What kind of emote do you want if you can win this tournament? Nothing in my mind yet, but I want to make something that everyone can recognize that it's me, Dudu. What about you, Morgan? Like, that's the, like, living in my head rent-free right now. So I, I want to wait until we get the full result. And right now, it's all about Sante. Is it good? It is good, you know. Right now, it's he's pretty good. And you are trying to go for a backdoor in game number one, where you're pretty sure that you're going to end the game. I mean, I had the perfect build to take down turrets, so I thought it was pretty doable. What was going through your mind, Dudu, at that point? Fiora, she's so good at taking down towers, and it was faster than I expected, so I was a little bit flustered. Who do you think is the strongest player on the side of Team D, Team Def? Rise for sure. He was like intimidating. Every time he was throwing his skills, it was so painful. So I want to say Chovy. I want to put it this way. Then who do you want to like bring from? Team Faker. I played one game, and everyone have their own characteristics, so I want to keep my team. 2-0 will bring you the emote. Are you confident? I'm pretty confident. Well, we are never going to make this a 2-0, so we're going to bring this game to game number 3. I mean, we lost one game, but I'm going to bring it back for Morgan in game number 2. And we'll be back shortly after the break. Thank you. Bring me the next shiny new thing. 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 I strike gold. Yeah, I strike lightning. I bring me the next. I bring me the next. Hey. As you know, great innovations start in the garage. Today we are exploring Dolby Atmos in a Mercedes-Benz. Our Burmester sound system with multiple speakers transforms into a 360 fully immersive soundscape. Meaning music comes from here, here, and here. Magic, isn't it? One of many innovations by... Of course. Red Bull gives you wings. Hello and welcome back. We are here in the midst of, of course, the kickoff events here for the LCK, and it is Team Faker versus Team Def. Team Def able to pick up game number one. Those are the Korean casters. There in the middle, and here is us. We don't have the hats on anymore. Um, we got the sweater look going. We yeah. get this very rarely in I'm Korea, down. but I, I say like very rarely. It's usually like a once a year thing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Sometimes <laughs> we have broadcasts on Christmas, um, and sometimes you wear the sweater then, but not this yeah. year. We're wearing it later in January. True. Um, it was pretty cold there for a moment, but it's not too cold today or yesterday. Yeah, I drove to work today. 
I was brave enough. Yeah. Did we'll you see. hear a big padding anyway? I, I brought, I you know, got my inner wear on. Stay warm. Okay. See how it is when I drive home at night when, I saw when it gets below zero. We'll see. <laughs> Celsius, of course. Yeah. Um, not, not so anyone worries. It's going to be all right. Yeah, uh, I was curious to see who was going to coach these teams. The answer is nobody. They coach themselves. Rabbit's messing up, messing up my Yeah, head. feeling a little flat, you know. It's just the way it goes with the Rabbits sometimes. Um, so this is a best of three, of course. Uh, we are in the middle of <laughs> – now it just looks like a face. It doesn't even look like a rabbit. It's just waving its arms there in the middle. It's um, hard. It's hard. I tried. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. And uh, so that does mean we have potentially two more games. Yeah, we do, potentially. And, and then the OnePlus POG uh, selection event match. That's going to be really fun. Um, but that's later. Yeah, the Mundo the Mundo dodgeball was very high level and <laughs> very exciting. The 2v2 was the sickest part. But then, you know, I was like, all right, the first game is probably going to be the most serious, right? Of course, of the three, because... It, no bans, every champion's available, we get the most meta picks, etc. We're going to be trading those back and forth. We had two really cool team comps. It was a really fun game, actually an excellent game. Game two, now all of those 10 champions that we had in game one are no longer available. So, you know, if you're thinking like, oh man, like, Cassante, I want to see that again. Sorry, not going to happen. But Yumi's still available. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yumi's so available, fun. Jax is available. What are other big picks? Like Aatrox, we saw a bunch over in China recently. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Um, there are a lot. <laughs> there are a lot. <laughs> it's like almost too many. I feel like the... Victor is, is really strong. The carry pool is very open. I mean, we had Ash versus... I mean, the, the Ash Heimer seemed very, you know, barrel-esque. It's interesting to see Viper playing Ash. I feel like if you want uh, the old Zeri Yumi combo, um, which is definitely not as strong as it used to be, but it's still strong. You probably pick them on red side if there's not a Yumi first pick. Like, that's yeah. your chance to, to lock them in. Because if you first pick either of those champions, you're not getting the other one. I wouldn't say at this point in time. I'm trying to think of what else, like, really might stand out that would surprise people. But I think we kind of covered the, the main part. Poor bruisers. <laughs> I think the top lane is going to be pretty... Top and jungle are going to be pretty filled out. You know, we're going to have a lot of different, you know... Could pretty much play whatever he wants. Jace uh, could could sneak into this draft, I'd say potentially. He's he's buffed right now. He's pretty good on this path. Got a yeah, three AD base uh, buff, but that really counts, especially for where he's strong. As they have selected red, maybe they are going for the Zeri Yumi combo. Could be the strat here. So interesting. I was surprised to see that uh, after they obviously first picked Blue. Um, after winning the Mundo Dodgeball side selection combat tournament trial. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what they end up doing with this pick. I love our draft music for this. I still think my favorite draft music of all time is the draft music that played in Game 5 of the World Championship Finals. We, we get that so much for epic matches and general international events. Yeah. Well, this one's pretty up there for me when we go to the draft. It's pretty sick. Ooh. I like that little... Uh scratching. It's pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> really builds attention, you know, as we go into this. For sure. New look at the uh, Live yeah. Sandbox jersey here. We've got a lot of big lot jersey of updates. Jerseys. Yeah. Kate to rolls for not so much. <laughs> it looks, looks the same. I think it is a new one, but it is not changed very much. Uh, yeah, it's just the black with the logo. It's very minimalistic, you know? I think uh, of the jerseys we have today, I still think T1's the best. That's my personal take. The new Gen.G one is very cool with the jacket. Yeah, I, li I like the, uh, what is it called? Like a bomber jacket? Yeah, it's almost like a it's letter like jacket. A, yeah, like a letterman jacket, yeah. yeah. Or a letter jacket? Letterman jacket? I think both might be right. Is it both? I always oh, I called it a letter jacket. Yeah, I always called it a letter jacket. I think it's a letter jacket. Maybe a letterman, is, leatherman. Someone, maybe a letterman <laughs> is someone who has a letter jacket. Huh. Um, the the D plus Kia uniform, the jacket very minimalist, but the jersey itself very cool. Two on players, I saw them backstage. Here they are, not quite on stage, but they are here to cheer for Team Faker, no doubt. As we're already in the draft, Victor, and there's Victor. First pick. <laughs> uh, the bans, of course, are the picks from Game One. That's right. So no champ can be picked twice in this best of three. All right, just do it. No. No. Well, Aatrox is another Seriously? good option. What? 
I, I mean, Dude is very good at Aatrox. Like, yeah, it's I think it's okay if, if you go for the Aatrox, but you're also giving away a potential amazing duo uh, pick. And then he would ban both of them for the rest of the day. Uh, well, they're just going to go ahead and pick Zeri. Well, you don't want the Zeri Yumi to go through on the other side. And I think Zeri is still strong with many different supports, actually, not just the Yumi uh, on this pack. We've seen it, again, referencing the Weibo Cup, which is the probably highest level tournament that's happened on the preseason patch. See what uh, Team Deft is going to look for here now in their second rotation. A Draven pick, a Classic versus Zeri. We've also seen Caitlyn do extremely well in this position, so definitely another option. It's Deft. So we'll be picking up the Draven. However, Vi still Vi another one. Too, yeah. yeah, forgot about that. Lock down that Zeri. Yeah, Vi a great choice in the Zeri. It's also just in general a still a, a very strong jungle pick, and no doubt because can pilot that very easily. Uh, this does leave the Yumi, if this uh, is what Barrel wants to play. This isn't necessarily a Barrel pick by any means, and so maybe he'll just play Wukong. Well, the cool thing is, with <laughs> since there's no second ban phase on this, you know, normally you'd be like, well, I have to get Yumi here, right? But they don't have to get it here because Draven Yumi, True. not really a thing, right? So you can grab Wukong right now, grab a top tier jungler that works well. It's setting up your Zeri and your Aatrox, the CC that's there for the Zeri to pop off, and save the Yumi pick for later should you want it. As I uh, mentioned in the previous draft, because the draft system still has a second ban phase, we kind of just tick through that. So there's some time here. Oh, actually, this time looks like we're skipping right to it, luckily. Nice. Uh, a big Team Faker fan here, hoping for the thumbs up Faker emote. Uh, of course, whoever does win this, each player will have an emote that will be purchasable in the League of Legends clients. They can... Uh, essentially design it themselves, or at least, you know, the theme of it. Baker's Galio. Yeah, Wukong Galio. We got the Aatrox as well. Definitely a considerable consideration. <laughs> sure. Well, there's Akali, though. Some wild Akali builds right now going through on the, the uh, solo queue ladder. See what ends up coming through here for Faker. As Renata will be the choice for Draven. Very classic. Uh, pushing lane into the Zeri. There's no Karma. Of course, she was played last game. So it can make it very challenging. And we'll get Morgan's Renekton, oh, the Lord man. himself. <laughs> the Lord himself <laughs> stepping up to the plate. Picks Renekton. He's got it for the counter pick. And Lulu. Lulu is fantastic in this comp, even though it doesn't scream, you know, the strongest lane ever. We've seen it a lot. We've also seen the power of Wukong's double knockup with an additional knockup, Aatrox engaging with the knockup potential, living even longer, and this, the ability for Barrel to save Viper in team fights if that hard engage is there with the Vi, with the Renekton, the follow up burst damage. Yeah. I think it's really critical that Peter hits big ultimates here with Renata Glass. The hostile takeover, I think, is really what could dismantle. Team Faker's composition here more than anything else because, yeah, Vi can single target, you know, ult Zeri at the follow up from Renekton, blow her up, but if the positioning is good, it's going to be easier said than done. Hoping for a good season here for Faker. Generally, T1 is strong in spring. Very few weak seasons for T1 just in general. Yes, <laughs> very true. There have been one or two, but uh, it is very rare. <laughs> She was like, let me just stand right in front of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Deft team is dealing machine. Deft is the AD carry. Yes. That's what she predicts. She, she was right. Uh, you know, I'm trying to call her out here. Um, but yeah, this is kind of interesting. You know, even with the preseason, uh, we just had a world with the most variety in terms of champion picks, right? The most unique champion picks. And uh, now we have a scenario here with the format where you have to pick a bunch of different champions, so I suppose that's not too much of a problem. In this Might meta. be the most champions played in a best of three in Lull Park if, uh, if it goes to game three. <laughs> but not if it doesn't. If it doesn't, it might still be, but I don't think so. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I think there's probably been games with more than 20 champions picked. Yeah. Best of threes, rather. Especially in 2022. Yeah. 
this is going to be a sick one. Um, this this game definitely much harder to call in terms of which comp I like better. I think the wing conditions are pretty clear. It's just going to be about whether Zeri and Faker, you know, on this Akali can get the job done with the great front line they have. Strong engage. On the other side of things, lots of ways to get on top of that Zeri. And here we are. No fan chance for Team Def to Team Faker. I'm actually a little bit surprised. We have a lot of fans here in the audience. Wait. Someone did it impromptu. And it was Team Usually, to give you guys fan chant lore, as this is a sign of respect, never happened in solo queue, but... <laughs> I mean... Fan chant lore, you know, is someone is actually designated usually from the fan club as the chant starter. Oh, oh man! That is the most respectful thing he could have ever done in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, did, did Morgan flinch? Did he stutter? No. His former teammate, he trusts him. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are two peas in a pod. I love the level one moments that we've had. Yeah. We had a good one. I think it was, uh, was it BDD and Faker? Yeah, I remember that one. I think I was casting with you. Yeah. That was a, that was a lovely one. Somebody misclicked, and we were like, <laughs> the disrespect! <laughs> yeah. It might have been BDD Chovy. Also. Maybe it was, yeah. It's a good one. Thanks to Cisco, but we got to take a look at these runes. Yes. Um, so power. we have Bruisers, and we have Conqueror. Yep. Yeah. So I'm gathering Storm, a little bit of Scorch action. Um, Victor is scaling. Kali Conqueror, no surprise. Thorin Shield start. Yeah. We have a another uh, blue pet decision here from Willer. The uh, green one is the most common because of the tenacity. Moss Boy. Moss Stomper. I, I call him Moss Boy. That's fine. Or Green Boy, that's also good. Yeah. I feel like call him Bulbasaur, but <laughs> some people like yeah. to call him Froggy. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't know about Froggy. I, I wouldn't personally call him Froggy. Well, if you don't like it, I won't do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, please don't. But I was joking with you that most you know meta jungle champions take Moss Stomper. So if both had done it in the first game, which didn't obviously be the case. Like, so there's only one jungle pet in the game now, guys, but we've actually yeah. seen all three now. The variety is real. Wow. This is a hard laning phase for an early Akali. Willer's going to try to punish. Yeah, he's going to get the slow with the Q. Chovy might be forced to flash over the wall. Willer could have decided to chase, but they had no real vision over there and might not have been able to get in range as he had already used his gap closer. Either way, a nice gank here early on to get the flash of Chovy force him to be a little bit more respectful. The uh, jungle pets will do AOE damage to raptors. You talked about earlier the changes to the jungle and how a lot more junglers are viable. You notice Tuzz just walk away. So you can oh, run into oh. Miller. He was, he, he was revealed. They knew where he was. That's really bizarre. And he was just walking towards the enemy jungle. Well, I think Willard does match with this one, but he messes it up. We don't even counter jungle. <laughs> it's uh, not a thing anymore. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, trying to get position on the Scuttle Crab just got owned. <laughs> Willard really wanted to hold the flash and decided to go for it in the end. Flash a little bit wrong, but it doesn't matter. Still has, of course, that E to get on top of him. Yeah, a little bit of greed, a lot of punish. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he was revealed really was the big difference maker, right? Because <laughs> if he wasn't, uh, well, these guys might just be dead. Here's Willer with double buff. The flash polymorph trying to divide that. But Peter with the huge handshake is going to keep them both alive. That is massive as now Deft is just going to chase them down. Has to be a little bit careful. He's got Cuz nearby who will just uh, smite the cannon and help push this one away. Yeah, that was a very tense and scary moment there. But great handshake from Peter, as you mentioned, to actually shove them back, keep himself and Deft alive just narrowly. Both summoners burned here, of course, on the side of Team Deft there in the bottom lane. Still better that they escape than lose out on another kill with Willer having that double buff advantage. Um, of course, taking the blue jungle item, pet, whatever you want to call it. So Will, of course, as a result, yes. 
uh, Water boy. fast clear, and yeah, the reveal comes through, and Cuz is like, well, I know he's there because he hit the Scryers, and then just promptly punished for it. Willard does have to flash. He waits for a moment here. Yeah. As Viper doesn't have the extendo range nor vision to guarantee the kill, I think maybe that was the hope, is, okay, Zeri can probably zap him, but doesn't commit. Yeah, I'm just curious about, like, the thought process, right? Maybe just assuming he could go 1v1. Maybe he had Pryo from the bottom side, he thought. And, you know, potentially. I mean, it is Renata and Draven. Um, but, <laughs> as we did see, even uh, the bottom lane of, of Team Faker was able to get there on time. And even besides that, I think the 1v1, he's going to have a rough time against the Wukong, uh, even with the blue buff. But either way, it is what it is. Toby pretty low on mana here. So despite Faker having... A lower health pool here. Jovi is not a real threat to him, so I like he's taking this opportunity to push through and see what he, what harassment he can get done. Svaker knows he's sitting only on Doran's ring. No more pots to keep him off or anything like that. And this game has been a lot more tense from the outset than the last one. <laughs> I can really feel both sides trying their absolute hardest, which is really fun to see. It's like an event match in quotes, but everybody's like, I'm playing for my League of Legends career for this one. <laughs> nice little trade there from Morgan. He's got the whip out. Yeah, he's got, you know, a nice ult here too. He's still pop, wants to go for another aggressive trade. The whip comes back up. Chovy uh, picks up the early crystal here. Um, likely Rod of Ages build has tier two. So it's going to give him some extra sustain in the lane. And he uh, uses his ult as soon as he has enough mana for it to push the wave out, buy himself enough time, get that easy teleport back. Faker, of course, to match with the Hextech alternator. And an amp tome. So still a competitive lane, but getting easier for Faker as time goes on. Willer's got the push from his bottom lane currently uh, to go for this dragon, but there is a control ward in here. Faker, you can see he's getting a little bit frisky. You know, he's trying to get in there, maybe look for some vision, try to see if they can see the Vi or anything like that. Vi, because uh, currently on the Krugs, so he's nearby. It's been such an interesting mid matchup to watch, but there's so much else going on bottom side. Oh, the push coming in. Deft forced to heal. Barrel a little bit too far forward. He is going to have to get out of there himself and use his own heal. As the ward has been pinged, they're going to know the timing of that, as Team Deft will know the timing of this Drake going down as well. I know that it was going down. Faker greeting for a ward. Just nearly going to die. He does have the shroud, though, and he's going to survive. Wow. Hashtag calculated. Yeah, doesn't get the ward, unfortunately, but he'll be happy to walk away with his life. Does not expend flash. Just gets caught by the last moment of that gravity field. Gets stunned. Very close call there for the unkillable Demon King, living up to his name once again here. The dragon does go over to the side of Team Faker in the meanwhile. So... Huge win for them. Solo Cloud Drake will be Mountain to follow, so maybe we'll get that Chemtech Rift this time around. Much yep. to your chagrin. Yeah, more powerful plants is not really what I wanted <laughs> with the preseason. I thought they were good enough, but here they are. Not all the time. Really nice setup from Cuz. He's going to land this one 100 to 0. This dude who doesn't even get the flash away. The poor guy. And uh, yeah, that is the power of Vi, alongside of Renekton's insane gank assist. Well, the great gravity field from Chovy as well, blocking Willer from coming over to make any sort of impact. By the time he's here, it's too late. Faker has ult, of course, and he's healthful, but there's nothing they could do here anymore, despite Cousin Morgan expanding their own ults. Bottom side here, Team Faker also to grab a turret plate. Oh, flash available for Toby, but I'm not sure it's going to get him out of here. A lot of damage on the Willer, but it's nicely calculated. Faker even given the kill. That is nicely set up. Maybe assuming that Willer had gone back, Toby was positioning pretty far up the lane. Yeah, I think that's definitely the reason why he was like that. You feel some degree of safety with your gravity field and flash under turret like that, but with wow. the dashes, <laughs> Peter's not messing around. He says, let's trade flashes, and Beryl doesn't have a choice in the matter. Oh. Faker just trying to stop it back. Okay. Not sure. Yeah, this okay. is the call. Cuz gets the call from Morgan. He's like, what do you think about it? They commit in. Morgan flashes early. Okay, talk about it. Also, so really like follow up. Ball Jean, ball CCM, ball blow him. Blow him up. And then rush down the Herald. As 
Toby has flash here, wants to use the gravity well under turret, but Willer flashes away. Faker's got the dash. So no real risk here for the Team Faker players. Yeah. That's uh, the power of Wukong and Akali as well. I mean, you can chase a low mobility control mage in the mid lane all the way down the lane, and you're probably going to get out alive, especially before Victor's really got any items. This build certainly takes a while to get online. So I think the timing of it was really fantastic. They're able to get something back after essentially just losing the Rift Herald and a kill on the top side. So they're going to feel pretty good about that. Pretty even game from where we stand. Yeah, Viper and Barrel did pick up that plate bottom side too. That was happening. Man, Peter wants to be aggressive. I don't know about this. <laughs> this is just maybe a little bit too much. Bait, bait is so huge. And that is a pretty huge Zeri who is just going to do Zeri things and say, you know what, actually, it, yeah, I just, I'm not feeling this fight. Let me just get out of here You know, with a basic ability. I think six months ago, that's probably a kill for Zeri, but not yeah. on patch 13.1. <laughs> I, think we're all, I think we can all just put a sigh of relief that it's not perma Zeri anymore. If that weren't Zeri, probably would have had to flash away from that one. And then maybe even then still would have died. So that's the other side of the coin. Baker is uh, being very annoying here in the mid lane. But Chovy, he's got one job. That's to farm and to get rid of So here we go, going in with that Dominus. Morgan really trying to bring this top lane into his favor. Dudu does get some nice movement, but he gets too close once again. And Morgan's like, oh man, you made a mistake. Yeah. Let me just kill you right here. We've mentioned it a few times, a former teammate's right. Morgan understanding Dudu's tendencies, I think, very well here. Blocks, or not blocks, but avoids both of those knockups extremely well. Flashless, and uh, Dudu goes down. Flash. And he does a good job here of avoiding, because Peter here as well, of course, because Peter has kind of gone insane in this game. Not sure what's going on with him. But either way, he's here for the push with this Rift Herald. Trying to do a bit of extra damage to the mid turrets. Note that the Rift Trail doesn't do always two plates worth of damage anymore. Yeah. Um, has been essentially, quote unquote, nerfed in that sense. Um, you're just not going to get two free turret plates all the time. Anymore. You do a bit more damage. All right. First Q hits, second one misses, and he's like, all right, I'm going in. Dashes through the third Q. Gets the stun, has the ult. Flash comes through, steps down, avoids the first one, goes inside the second to guarantee the kill. Well played there. I think a bit of an overextension from Dudu, but well punished by Morgan. And you mentioned that calculation on the two plates. It's just about one auto away from getting another plate there in mid. So frustrating for the side of Team Death at the same time. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's frustrating as well. Toby's got his Rod of Ages online this time, a little bit later than the previous. Twelve fifty-ish. Toby stacking that up. Fourteen last time. I thought he was. I thought it was 14 and 24. I think this is actually yeah, you might earlier. Be right. You might be right. Yeah. I, I think he's got this uh, even earlier. He like totally skipped boots, I guess. Or yeah, he's yeah. just farmed a little bit better this time around. Either way. Yeah, he skipped boots. And I think you are right, actually, thinking back on it. In my head, it was 12 minutes, but that would be crazy. Yeah. Still a. Uh, extremely early Rod of Ages, either way. Yeah, I mean, that's the up. best the best kind of Rod of Ages. Yeah. It's not quite your, you know, solo Q9 minute rod, but <laughs> can't, can't always get those in every game, especially not in pro. So the Rift Herald got the one plate, and I think the gold went to Cuz. So even though the plate gold is yes. buffed a little bit, it's still not the biggest game changer, you know? I, I think the damage almost <laughs> is better than the one plate uh, in the mid lane. As Peter feels like he's trying to bait here again, but they're not going to fight the bait this time. Nice try. We'll get control of this try brush though. Will Viper and Barrel. And this mid battle continues. Baker trying to set up for this. Nice. Yeah, and I get the dash out of Cuz essentially. He's got Willer nearby, but Willer on vision. <laughs> it's a bit of trading back and forth here. Not as greedy for that ward as Baker was moments ago. And they really want to push this turret down, but it's not going to be off this wave. Huh? Or is it? Just yeah. barely. Only Deft is here, so he actually can't stand up. And look at this, Cuz also just going to go into the river. Assuming he's safe, just gets once again comboed down by Willer. That's now Faker. There is Peter nearby, and no ultimate anymore for the level 11 Akali. And now Faker all of a sudden is 2-0. and zero. Yeah, this is 
really starting to become a problem. Cuz was hovering around mid lane, but he wasn't able to make a play, wasn't close enough, nor was he close enough to keep Deft alive, and I think Deft was probably expecting that Cuz was gonna be there to back him up when that turret was taken down. He wasn't, then he was caught, and unfortunately, as you say, Faker picks up a second kill here, and things are getting a little bit out of hand for this Akali in terms of the power spike she's gonna be hitting here in this mid game. Toby and Morgan gonna start off this Herald, Cuz rotating over. Trying to get something out of these back timings here for Team Faker. They scout it out. Yeah. Question remains if they'll actually challenge it. Looks like no. I don't think they can. Drake spawning in 2.30, so not a whole lot of cross map. They already got the bottom turret. So this is a pretty huge win for Team Deft, all things considered. An uncontested Herald take. That ward not pinged. <laughs> Unfortunate. I think the Observer is just trying to highlight how low that mid turret has gotten. So Cuz rotates down, I think, in an attempt to find Death, sees that he's spotted, and then kind of gets a little bit indecisive. Flash goes down, he gets picked. Really unfortunate positioning there. He's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, not able to help out either parts of the rift. And take a look at this. In the 1v1 in the long lane, the Sakali is going to have a lot of fun. That was a decent amount of storm damage here from the Joby. The Q is going to miss from Faker, but can he run him down is the question the Shuriken will miss. That one minion such a bro right there. Yeah. Shout out to that minion. Actually was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was it. That was the difference maker. Minion wave coming in at that exact right time. If that wasn't there. Joby has to flash. Yeah. Or he dies. I mean, if the shuriken lands, it's like, well. You flash, you still die. <laughs> you still die. Yeah. Faker just flashes out. Just laughs at you. Just faker things. Dudu just kind of sitting up top, alone here. His flash, or rather his uh, teleport, not quite up. Drake spawns in 70. So this is going to be a, a moment where Team Faker is looking ready to fight. Gore Drinker online. Wukong, of course, you know, fairly ahead here. and. In terms of the itemization, it's not massive, but the one thing that Team Def really has going for them as this Drake spawns is that they have a Rift Herald they can place elsewhere and try to pull that attention away. Morgan has teleport, so... Team Def really need to utilize this Rift Herald right now in this timing here at 40 seconds, or else they're going to find themselves with Team Baker having that Infernal Soul point. And how they find the value with this for cause is going to be challenging, right? Could try to set up a dive onto Dudu. Teleport is coming up shortly. Yeah, it looks like they just want to group up mid. Maybe just do like a, a natural push. You know, push out the wave, try to stick around mid for a little bit longer, then drop the Rift Herald and maybe try to bait someone, someone over here. Here's that Rift Herald. So that's going to come down here. 485 stacks currently for the man on the bottom side for Team Death. Death himself. A lot of money if he can get that kill. Charge will happen. Look at Baker's flank positioning here. He's able to get into that back line. Deft in a lot of trouble. He has to flash, and he's getting some good autos down. He is going to be put into the possible takedown, but it is not quite enough. And the Zeri has so much room to pop off in this fight. As Morgan and Chovy monsters on their own right, but nothing compared to Zeri. Yeah, they get the mid turret, but it's going to be a trade of kills here. And one that almost didn't go into Team Death's way. Like, they almost just lost one as Dudu's looking for angle. Oh, the polymorph is huge. Is it enough to save Viper's life is the question? Yes, it is. No, no, it's not Chovy. He's able to get in there, doesn't even have to flash to secure that kill. Well, this is a huge change here in this game. Toby looking to come over here and contest this Drake, but he's alone. He is. He's crazy, but he dead. wants it. Yeah. Not quite enough. It's a big, it's a big smite. 1,200 it is nowadays. Big, yeah, it's a big 1,200 smite. Things looking really bad for, for Team Death there for a moment. Getting those kills onto Chobi is going to make things a lot easier, but the fact still stands. They walk away with the turret. Two kills here. Baker traded, of course, in this one. Beautiful play from Morgan at the last moment, but Baker's flank angle was great. And there's no way to get a takedown here, unfortunately, to get the reset for Depth. If that happens, he gets his cash in. A lot of crazy things happen yeah. in the game, but he's just not quite able to do it. Then Chobi punishes this overstay here. <laughs> They're almost baited in by Dudu, I guess. Morgan flashes for the stun. Not the stun. And Barrel gets caught in the second beam here with a Q. It's a double. 
Dude was just not able to close the distance on Trovi there, and that's huge because if they lose all of that oh. and they okay. don't get the dragon. <laughs> well, Deft is dead again. Yeah. Hmm. So, looks like he was just top, and Faker was like, huh, you you can't be here alone. That's weird. And then he killed him. So that's that's my analysis of the situation. I don't know if there's much more to say, but we'll watch the replay and see if there's any more details. Yeah, it looks like the same might happen here to Dudu. He does have a lot of help, though, coming down. Morgan, this is a long fight that you got yourself into, and it might come back to bite you. Teleport has to be used to try to save him as the value coming out right now from this Renekton is insane. Same as the Polymorph, but at the end of the day, I'm not sure that Jovi can really do much in terms of damage here on a barrel. He's desperately trying to get the kill, and he does, but just the one, as that will, in the end, be a win to the side of Team Faker. Yeah, Willer up here going to be forced to ult. See if he wants to push this further. He can get uh -oh. the second knockup. <laughs> Cuz wasn't able to dash away. Now he has to flash, and then he comes, smacks him over the head with the piece of wood. Nicely done as Cuz was the one who hand shook that fight and Willer said, no, you can't kill me. Cuz ends up with an 0-4 start to this game as we hit the mid game. Really unfortunate. This is a replay of Def farming here solo against Faker. No defense. Notice Cuz and Peter are trying to block the rest of the rotations of the members over. But he ends up losing the 1v1 because they're a bit too far away. Morgan in this extended fight does some serious work, as you pointed out. Look at that massive heal. Still just not enough. Toby flashes here looking for the kill on the Viper, but he gets away, and that's the big problem. If you kill Viper here, this fight could be a completely different story, especially with the bailout. Just not to be the case. Viper avoids the last part of that victor ult and will survive. And then, yeah, Cuz opts into this double knockup and basically full duration of these swings. Yeah. He ate about 100% of the damage that he could have taken. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like 100% of avoidable damage he took. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a good look, as that gravity field, nearly enough to save Toby. He's got some help from the Vi this time around, because trying to save some face here. And he's going to save his teammate, at least. That is not going to be another kill here for this super fed Akali. Faker is just pushing the boundaries of Akali once again here in this game. You love to see it. For Team Def, the big problem is, right now, Chobi, he opted into the Rod of Ages build, right? And he's getting close to that level hitting, but he's sitting on the Archangel's Rod combo. Pretty strong, obviously buffed on this patch, the, the damage for that Rod of Ages, or rather, the um, Seraphs. And he's looking to fight, but there he doesn't. There it is, by the way. Yep, there it is. And like, he's gonna have it right before this soul fight. But it is, is going to be a fight right now that I think Team Faker is happy to take. You know, they've got a BF Sword on Viper here. Faker is extremely, had, had a Shadow Flame and that stopwatch. Gore Drinker Aatrox can peel so much for the Zeri. And I think you're hard pressed as Morgan to get on top of this Zeri in any way. We talked about how killing Viper is the goal. And so far, it hasn't really been successful in these fights. Yeah. There hasn't really been a. Uh clean, straightforward 5v5 that Team Def kind of look together for, you know, as you're mentioning. You know, you, you got to use your utility in the right spots. Otherwise, uh, the damage and the flank ability of this Team Faker team is just too much. Uh, speaking of flank ability, Ariel is able to kind of get on top of Faker, but Morgan can land his stun. Having neutral advantage here for Team Faker as this Drake spawns is massive, especially if they can clear all this vision right in the center here where Faker is, between his Shroud and the peel that Willer can put off with his ultimate. It's gonna be, a lot of work has to be done here from Chovy in terms of damage, but he didn't go for Leandre's oh. build. <laughs> Look at Morgan's positioning. The Lord himself has situated himself on the throne. Now that control where it's gonna be really telling, suspicious. Yeah. And you see that Team Faker will back away from the throne. Morgan's still sitting on the throne, though, and maybe they didn't back away far enough. Dudu is going to have to get the wild growth on top of him. The Zeri damage trade back is not so great. It's Faker. He's got that backline access. They're trying to kill Peter, but the hostile takeover comes through. It's not a huge amount of utility, but they might be able to get on top of Faker. No, they can't quite take him down. And Morgan's the first one to be taken out here, as now Team Faker can just fight front to back. They've got this Zeri. Everybody kind of knows the way this one is going to go. 
as the rest of the members here at Team Death will fall like dominoes. Death hands off the keyboard three times as Cashin has been denied. No value with this Draven pick in terms of getting that big boost you'd like to get in early mid. And Team Faker now find themselves with both Baron and Infernal Soul at 25 minutes. And Morgan, you know, he's hiding here. He's looking for the setup. But they buy enough time here. And look at how untouched Viper is in this fight. Faker comes over, deletes Peter. Has to stopwatch if the ult comes through. But this means Viper has absolutely nothing to worry about. They front to yeah. back it. Uh -oh. Peter? Oh, no. <laughs> this is just bullying now. <laughs> As uh, down he goes, Faker will collect the free kill. And even a teleport from Chovy as well. Just a little bit of bonus action, essentially. Bounty is online now for Team Death. Chovy could be a menace later on in this game. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, with how behind Cuz is, it's going to be really hard. And for Team Faker, all you got to do is make sure Hyper's alive, right? Your first draft pick as Faker. Now on the Zeri, you chose red side, you got the Zeri. You've got a Lulu to back it up. Faker's got the cross angle to punish when they commit. If Morgan's not on top of the back line, Faker can get in there. Well, Cuz is not gonna have luck with that clone. And uh, there's not much luck here for Team Death in Look terms at Faker. of trying to get into this pit. He's got the angle, he sweeps it. Yeah. And they can just pull the Drake out. He can threaten this backline if Morgan's on the other side. Maybe a stun here, maybe a one-shot potential. Can they 100 to zero Faker? No, they can't. He will live on the back side of it. And Death immediately goes down. That's the end of this one. That's the Infernal Soul also taken to add insult to injury. We will be going to a game three. That's going to be the end of it, as you say. And Faker's on the edge there. If you collapse onto Faker, it means Zeri is going to be able to have free reign, but if Faker gets perfectly wild growth and every single resource is put into Faker, the rest of the team fights a wash here for Team Deft. And as you say, we are going to game three. No questions asked here at the end of this fight as these double cannon Baron buff yeah. things come through. Not a lot of Fiora action in this one. Viper does uh, flash and say, yeah, I'm, yeah, by the way, I'm Zeri. And they do have to wait for some minions, okay. It looks like they will actually back for now. As we do have teleport available for Doodoo. -Doo. Yeah, you should be able to just come straight back in, save the cannon minion. It's unfortunately, not in range. Like, they could push the envelope if they wanted to, but it looks like they don't quite want to. They're going to play it extremely safe. It's a bit early in the season since it hasn't started yet for this game is over moment, but... <laughs> even though, even though they survive and the Nexus doesn't fall, the amount of control that Team Faker has in this game is immaculate. As Faker hits the shuriken through here, I think Peter thought perhaps he was behind the minions. Handshakes are trying to save him off, but that's all yeah. he's got. He's got no ult. He has flash, but he's not going to waste it. You see the belt to avoid the handshake too? That's just prime Faker right there. The Faker eats a ton of damage here, dashes into the wild growth range, barrel saves him, and then Willis here for the peel, and everybody on the side of Team Death is way out of position. Chovy's not there to help do any damage. Dudu's immortal here. That fight is about as self-explanatory as it gets. Chovy, he does a lot to clear the minion wave, actually, because he dies, but he actually clears everything. So that means that they're not able to end the game. So it looks real silly. And he did die very quickly. But he actually gave them, you know, a very, very slight chance. Oh. To try to save this one off. Like, so you're saying there's a chance. And the yeah, answer is yes. Exactly. Um, Powered by AWS. We have our damage dealt 30, on the left 000. side. And yeah, a couple of members pretty close to 30,000. Jovi on top, Viper vying for first place. Now, can you defend this one, Team Death? That's the question that Team Faker proposes here as they try to crash this top wave into that inhibitor turret while threatening bottom side here. Faker's angle to execute Death is pretty good here, so Morgan has to juggle trying to clear these waves and staying close enough to Death and Peter, which means the top side is open. You're just 
You just don't have a whole lot of room to work with here. <laughs> Any Victor Wave Clear believers? Okay, that's a nice handshake. I'm not sure it's going to matter, though, as the Hustle Tate over is going to sail wide. There's a lot of value there. As Baker just goes in, goes out, and now the Zeri ult is popped. They do get into that back line as Viper did take about half his health and damage. So that is just about as far as he'll go. As everybody else is going to be wiped off the plate, as Viper will go down, <laughs> funnily enough, but that will be the Nexus going down as well. A pretty one-sided one this time in favor of Team Baker. Yeah, definitely not quite the same level of back and forth action as we saw in game one. A much more dominant performance this time around from Baker in particular on that Akali. Even when he made arguably a mistake, got uh, you know caught by the Victor gravity field, he still gets out, still survives, doesn't get the ward. But beyond that, he played an immaculate game of Akali, both threatening as his teammates look on, both threatening the backline, but also trying to pull the <laughs> attention away from the Zari. By the way, you're on camera. They're used to just being on camera, not having to look at it, you know? Yeah. Barrel's the coach. No question there. You can feel it. Well, actually, maybe it's Faker. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, Barrel's the one standing up. I think it's, I think it's the burden that's shared between the two it's of them. Probably both, yeah. Well, we've eliminated now quite a bit of the meta champions. Yeah. Yumi is still available. That is the one that we have not yet seen. It's kind of deceptive how much damage uh, this build can do on the Victor, you know, but a lot of this damage is put into Dudu, put into Faker who nearly dies, but escape, put into Willer, right? And Chovy has so many threats and get on top of him. Deft has so many threats. It's really hard to stay in range as Victor against this comp that has such a great frontline that is so ahead, has positional advantages on these objectives. And you're just flank bombing the enemy team over and over. Like, there were a couple times that Def didn't even really get to play the team fights out. So, um, pretty unfortunate. I think there was a way for Team Def to potentially come back, or maybe not come back, but to win that game. But it did not pan out the way they wanted to. So, now we are all tied up. As you mentioned, we have 20 bands now. All the champions played in game one, all the champions in game two. They cannot be played again. So, Yumi definitely stands out. We're just going to take another look at that here. Yeah. And the third game will decide which of those five players are getting in-game emotes. Uh, and it's going to be, by the way, if you notice the parentheses there, which is pretty high in the first quarter of 2023, yeah. so very soon. It so takes a lot. like world skins, yeah. which take a uh, a long time for a good reason. You know, yeah. There's I mean, these a lot are, of work that goes into those. Yeah, these are going to be, you know, these animated emotes, which can be made very quickly. You have to imagine. So as was the case after game one, there is going to be an interview here with these players on the stage. But during uh, our break. Yes. So not right now. Right now you're going to have to stare at us until the break begins. Um, I'm going to put this hat back on. Yeah. It's probably for the best. Let's do that. It is the year of the rabbit. And so we, uh, we brought our rabbit hats. And... Uh, that's really what this is all about. It's not really about the League of Legends. It's actually just about the Rabbit Heads. And uh, yeah, we'll get one more game of League of Legends between Team Death and Team Faker. Any champions you want to see as we go into game three, like one that you're like, oh man, I hope we see X champion really badly. Talia, I'm always a fan of Talia. Um, just in general, I think it's also strong. Um, Maybe Faker's Ari could be fun to see. The Galio kind of scared me. I'm like, oh, you know, you're good at Galio, but I want to see you pop off here in the events. And he did. He did. He so he was like, no, that would be boring, and then I'm going to pick yeah. Polly and carry the game. Um, I want to see Jax, uh, just because new Jax, very strong right now on this patch. A lot of the probably will. Go for. That's what I... Although that Gragas hover really was kind of scaring me. Yeah, very boring hover there. Yeah. We didn't get it, thankfully. <laughs> Oh, we might small. get it. We could get it here. Especially now there's no Aatrox for Necton. There's no Cassante Fiora. So those are our four top lane picks. Might just be the Gragas. But guys, we are going to take a break. We're going to have G-Sun during the break translate that interview that just happened. So make sure you're staying tuned if you want to hear what those guys have to say. We'll take a break and we'll be back.
맞았어. 드레이븐. 들려온다. 깜빡이 포탑 쳐볼 수 빠지면서 빠지면서 천천히 천천히. 나 피업 좀. 바이 도궁 바이 도궁. 포탑 좀 포탑 좀. 가자. 어 와우. 아비. 에이저 막 죽었어. 어 나이스야 근데. 나이스 한 판. 나이스. 선수들과 이야기 나눠 보겠습니다. We are joined 안녕하세요. by the junglers of Team Faker and Team Depth of the season kickoff event. Congratulations, Ruler. Now it's a tight series between the two teams. How were you able to beat Team Depth this time around? I think we had a really good comp, you know. We, our comp really likes to fight a lot, and then our late game will be carried by Zeri as well. So I think we had a really decent draft. So I was pretty confident as soon as we, you know, we had the draft completed. I was pretty confident. What about you, Cuz? You know, one first game, but you lost the last one. My early death was, you know. Well, a very big mistake there, so it's unfortunate, but I'm going to do my best in the game three. Because I have a question. Why no Rek'Sai? Was that a bluffing? I mean, if this event was a for fun stuff, you know, I was going to play Rek'Sai and then like we were like so all in for the emotes, so I don't see the angle for the Rek'Sai. I'm waiting for the Rek'Sai for the third game still. And Willer, you know, compared to Cuz, you are relatively a very young player, so who are you relying on on the side of your team? I mean, everyone is doing a fantastic job, so I'm relying on all of my teammates, but for sure, Burrow, his calls are so on point. And even in the previous interview that was released, you actually said you want to become friends with Pearl, and it's really nice to find out he made great shot calls, but not a surprise. How was game number two? I mean, it's a big honor for me to just play together with those players, and also for the kickoff event in front of such a large audience, and the game itself was really fun too. I'm having a lot of fun. Because now it's time for game number three. You abandoned your favorite pick, Rek'Sai, so any last words for the fans? Game three. I'm going to carry my team and win. And this will be the end of the interview from Willer Kuss, and we'll be back after the break. Thank you.
Welcome back, everybody, to F versus D. It is me, Valdez, with Wolf, and of course, it is Team Faker up against Team Depth. And so far, one to one, a pretty even matchup. Wolf. Just notice I have a F in my name, and you have a D in your name. I do, in fact. But I don't feel like we're <laughs> against each other right now. No, yeah, no, definitely no. not. No. Um, I'm a flasher. I don't have D. Yeah, I'm also a flasher. I don't have flasher, flash so. on D. That's just unnatural. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, I would never. Um, but I do have it in my name. That is true. Um, um, you're you're kind of a default controls type. You know, you don't really you don't really okay, aren't you? You don't really change settings that much. Uh, it depends on the game. I'll generally turn down the sensitivity if it's like a. I don't know. All right, roller game or like an FPS or something. One question for you: If you play a first-person shooter with controller, are you like normal uh, Y-axis or are you normal. inverted? I used to be inverted, but actually, I'm normal now. Same. I actually had the same thing. Same with when I had like that temporary Delasher phase. On yeah, that was weird. That is weird. We also have a colleague who uh, uses inverted mouse when he plays FPS. Don't be that guy. Uh, <laughs> That's wild. Anyway, um, <laughs> enough about that. Team Def, they're gonna have to bounce back. Um, yeah, we were just like this. Yeah, it sounded like you said they just want to see. It. Let's take a look at what champions are left, um, because you know we've eliminated now 20 from the pool. Yeah, so there should be like 130 left. <laughs> One of the impacts of this draft system that I didn't really think about before we started commentating it was the fact that it's really difficult to protect your comp because you don't have those secondary bans uh, like you have normally. Mm. But you can also get extra advantages as well because of that, uh, especially on red side where you're like, ooh, what am I going to pick third? You don't know. Then you get that third pick and then the fourth pick after the second ban phase that doesn't exist. So you have some, some cool edges yeah. uh, in the draft. And Piper looks like he's wearing a wedding a suit. <laughs> Just with the lighting the way it is. Yeah, I, I could see what you're saying. I thought you were going to say, just based on the angle that we had of him, it might have been like, a, it looks like he's wearing a coach's jacket or something. I was like, I could see that. The Hana Life jackets yeah. have evolved, but they're still very similar, very close to the original. We're just going to gain, gain like more and more layers as the years come along. It's going to be packed with like five jackets on top. It's going to be like the old Samsung you giant know, long shoulder jackets. pads. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the uh, the old school old days. So right now we're just taking a look at some of the fan messages uh, across the audience and stuff. We have a pretty full house. Actually, I'd say like almost completely, if not completely here for this matchup tonight, yeah. uh, as you guys can see here. And what does I, POS stand for? Um, <laughs> I'm just curious. I had the same thought, and I was like, I'm not going to say anything. Player of the series. Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where I'm from, it means something a little bit differently. But, yeah. Uh, Pancakes over sausages. There's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a, um, there's a company in Korea that's called POS as well. Um, there's a POS bill. There's a, there's a lot True. of POS in Korea. True. Um, there's also a Kappa organization. I, I th for, <laughs> that's true. That's one of the sponsors of one of our teams. Yes. I thought it was player of the split for a second when I first saw it, but player of the series, I guess. Well, otherwise makes, makes known sense in this context, I guess. Yeah. In, in fact, it is like the official designation. Um, wow. The one plus POG, otherwise known as the POS in our there you go paperwork. So yes. there you go. Player of the series could happen. And uh, later on, we will have that one plus POG selection event match. Yes, it is going to be very fun. Definitely do not want to miss. That will happen after this best of three. It will be within the team that won. They will fight for the best player, essentially, of the team. And one, one way to put it. And one player will take home, uh, that one player will take home a million won. So. A million won? Yeah. It's about $1,000. Yeah. A little bit less. We, yeah, we, we <laughs> usually said that, but I'm like, as time goes on, I'm like, we got to stop saying that. Oh, <laughs> the exchange rate, like, it changes a lot, you know? Some days it's about a 1,000, some True. days it's not. Um, but, you know, we're not here to tell you guys about the economy. <laughs> Team Def picked red side. So, yeah. two red side picks in a row here. Maybe both teams recognizing the power of having no second bans and just getting to pick two in a row twice. Yeah, it's really, really strong. Yeah. 
So, especially in this case where a lot of the super incredibly OP stuff is gone, you're not really scared about them first pick. Even if they first pick a Yumi, it's like, okay, well, they got Yumi, but now we're going to get double double response pick, right? And they're not going to have any bans against it. Uh, especially with a, a, a more cut down champion pool, I think this is definitely the choice. We've also, you know, changed a lot of the. Like, some, a lot of the jungle pool is thinned out here, too, and there are some jungle picks that could work well with Yumi, but, you know, Zeri's gone, so it feels like Yumi might just not be played in this whole show match. And there also could be some sort of gentleman's agreement, like, hey, <laughs> what if we just didn't? No cats, you? no books, <laughs> none of that. Because that does happen in show matches where all 10 players look at each other and they're like, you know what? <laughs> We're just not going to play that. <laughs> Nobody plays Warwick, okay? And if it happens that way, I hope one of the players says we all decided, then like all the other regions have to like follow suit. They're like, oh man, the LCKs yeah. banned Yumi globally in that event. Like, let's ban it. No, I'm not going to play Yumi until she gets reworked. <laughs> yeah, you know, a that's kind of a message from the pro players. <laughs> Riot, perhaps. I mean, that that rework is coming. They, you know, they've been mm -hmm. talking about it a little bit. It's been changing some changes. Yeah. Look, just not. It's not ready yet. But anyway. Yeah. Viper back on the LCK stage. I mean, Viper. Make no mistake. Faker from Canada. Faker love, love from, from Canada. Canada. Okay. I got scared there for a little bit. Okay. Uh, uh oh, there it is. Ezreal for Viper here. I was gonna say Viper has grown so much. I mean, not locked yet. He he looks like a different person as he's returned to the LCK. He's seen so much. He's won a world's title. You know, he's come back to Korea to to try to do it here in the LCK. And a lot of respect. You know, a lot of players have questioned whether they want to return to Korea or not. There's a lot of career opportunities in China, but Viper said, you know what, I'm coming home. First draft pick for Faker at first choice here and making a splash. It will be his Ezreal. They just finally locked in. Yep, for Viper. Maybe we see a Callista here. That would be fun. Def certainly can pilot that. Viego going to be the choice in the jungle. Most likely. Does seem to be the case here. And see what comes with it right now. Again, the Yumi doesn't feel that <laughs> great at this moment in time, but it does feel crazy that it's gone completely through two drafts with no bans. Yeah. Um, and this is, of course, from our world's perspective and how strong the champion can be in isolation. It feels like we're not going to see it here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it anymore for sure. Ezreal, Yumi, Kaisi, Yumi. <laughs> nope. Not really uh, the best of lanes. Will they potentially looking to lock in the Lee Sin here? Yeah. The junglers are like, yeah, it doesn't matter what's, you know, what format's happening. We're just going to play the same six things. <laughs> it's fine. You can just ban whatever you want. You can pick whatever you and, want. though, Gwen, kind of an old favorite of Doodoo's. Yeah. Uh, Morgan, also a great Gwen player. And yes. a lot of the counters taken away, yeah. too, right? No Akali, no um, Renekton, something we used to see. Is it time for Jace? No, it's just going to be the boring Gnar pick. Don't do it, Toby. Gwen versus Gnar. <laughs> we have this insane, this awesome format. It, like, is supposed to produce new, <laughs> like, combinations and cool new picks. I think it's it's really cool, though, because going back to what you are saying about how, you know, versatile the champion pool was in Worlds, at the end of the season, like, this could have been an almost like a normal draft, you know? I mean, yeah. not the positions of where these picks are, but these six champions. And we, this is with 20 other pretty meta champions removed, we could still have this, which just really goes to show that the game has changed a lot. And even the most recent meta, which won't be the strongest as we move into 13.1, is still pretty viable, still pretty fun, still you know, still pretty optional um, to, to pick up here. Is Peter's Nautilus, uh, you know, Efforts Nautilus, one of the more controversial picks he played when Peter wasn't playing. And uh, now Peter will get to try his hand at it this time around. Yeah, Kaisa Nautilus should be pretty strong down on the bottom side. You can even potentially lock down the Ezreal. The Braum feels very nice into what you're looking at right now. Just go ahead and pick that one up. Very nice defensive pick. However... Uh, but it is Beryl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Beryl Leona. He does have a skin. Yep, he is. He does not use... No, he usually doesn't, but one of the more famous Leonas uh, of the modern era of League of Legends, post-modern, if you will, and 
you know. <laughs> is, that, is that the official title of this I era? I think that's the era we're in right now. Okay. Baker's Twisted <gasps> Fate. It's TF for TF. Oh, my God. The prophecy is real. We heard you like TF. So we put TF in your TF. Oh, Jovi's like, well, Galio. Now this. Yes. This would be fun. Okay, now this is Chovy throwing a gauntlet. He's gonna do it, I he's think. He's gonna do it. Yeah, he's gonna do it. <laughs> Showmaker-esque uh, call to make here. Of course, no um, D-plus Kia members in this tournament. <laughs> Good catch there, uh, Outside of Deft. So Showmaker was often the one to challenge Faker with the Cassidy pick. We've seen it. We've seen it go both ways, actually, in that matchup over yeah. the last two years going to be Chovy this time around. Yeah. And everybody's expecting Cassidy to be very strong, right? I, I think a lot of the new items slash old items that are back in the meta, uh, the certain builds you can go on Cassidy and you can even go tanky Cassidy, right, with some of the new items. Um, and again, old items. And Rod of Ages, very good. You know, he gets an extra level very quickly. Um, he had some changes to his kit as well. What do you think, Wolf? You think Cassidy's the new mid-meta pick? I think we are still too early to, to tell right now, but I think that he's definitely going to be more of a niche pick that you absolutely can mix into drafts like this. And I think that, you know, we've seen a, a rise of Syndra a little bit on the preseason patch as well. Just control mages in general are kind of king right now. And the amount of engage that you need in this meta, especially with all the bruiser threats, is, is pretty important. But this is a more direct approach here from Chovy. Going to have a ton of damage in the late game. We can get there. Plus that extra level if he go ops for the Rod of Ages. One of the reasons why people are raising eyebrows at Cassidy a little bit right now. But up against this Twisted Fate, this is a well-rounded, almost evergreen style of composition here for Team Faker. A lot of rotational power, a lot of side laning opportunities with the Gwen TF-131. And if Willer can actually keep uh, Faker in a pretty safe spot in lane, keep him ahead to push down that Cassidy, Chovy will have a, a tough time. And I think Deft's composition here, a little bit tougher to pull off in team fights. Not an easy comp to actually make work. You've got some engage, you've got high damage, but it's not a comp that works as well together, I think, as Faker's does. Chovy, I think a lot relies on how well he can get through the lane and how much of a late game threat he can be, as is always the case in Cassidy and team comps but especially with what he's got around him. As let's go into this one. Faker's back on TF. He has gone Cull. He's playing against Cassidy, so pretty free lane. Not a, not a bad choice, especially because TFs can certainly go for, you know, more hybrid builds. It's kind of fine if you have some ADs, whatever. Yeah. You can just stack it up, get as greedy as possible. It's like he's got his passive twice when he kills me. Whoa. <laughs> Is that too much gold? Or no. Just enough. <laughs> no. Let's see if he took Dematerializer. <laughs> Any uh, Moss friends? Enjoyers? Yeah. Hey, with these meta Maybe melee junglers, the Moss <laughs> Stomper is the one you need. Does he really stomp? I mean, I feel like Moss Stomper was a questionable choice. Well, the weird part about the name of Moss Stomper is. You, it's M O S S Tomper, basically. Yeah. So it's Moss Tomper. It's not Moss, Moss Stomper. Stomper. Yeah, or it's I noticed that. As Moe's well. Stomper. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah, I mean Moe's a pretty cool guy. I don't really need to stomp him. Uh, uh, just for confirmation, no dematerializer here. <laughs> yeah, this is just the way it's gonna go. This is the way it's gonna go. Baker's going to harass. Chovy is going to try to survive, stick around in the lane, try to farm as well as he possibly can. Really curious to see what Chovy builds here. Um, because, you know, I've seen the, all sorts of wild stuff in solo queue, but mm -hmm. I I usually trust Chovy's opinion more than <laughs> what you see on uh, certain websites I won't mention here. Mm. Um, for the high win rate, I'm like, what about the Chovy build? Yeah. Let me look at that one. What is the best build, actually? Oh, no. um, Cassidy didn't get, did get changed a little bit in his kit. Mentioned it before. His E is no longer the same, where it gets you know charges with spells that are used around him. It's just the cooldown gets reduced by spells that are used around him. So um, it has a much higher cooldown now because of that. But 
also, especially in team fights, you're going to be getting that off like over and over and over and over again. So while you're also flying around, yeah, um, like Yoda in the prequels, <laughs> he was very nimble to that guy. Yeah. Jovi just trying to harass here, as you say, and keep the CS numbers low. Imagine counter jungling in 2023. Yeah, well, we'll steal some of them with the shockwave. Frog battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they gotta like drop. <laughs> they gotta drop their weapons and just. Moss Chomper wants to fight. <laughs> Barrel is uh, he's just doing barrel things. I mean, this is what the Leona is meant to do. Just get in the face of his opponent. Ooh. Not much else is going to really happen down here. I think there will be more action than if it were a Braum, of course. True. But. Oh. Clips is pretty strong to commit okay. the heal. Peter, yeah, Peter's getting pretty low and viper going for the auto he's gonna get aggro here as maybe a trade back but yes deft will be able to get that trade back I and mean, at the end of the day this is a good trade for team deft and for deft himself That's flashes Beryl. for it. he's dead yeah he's dead double kill for the kaisa yeah and that cleanse from deft guarantees the barrels reliant on getting that stun to make sure viper gets out he flashed forward to get that auto so you know that you're going to end up getting uh, a ton of damage done. You know that Leona's there for you with that extra stun onto Deft, but Deft has cleanse. He cleanses it, has the flash for the chase. Ezreal's cooldown on his E is just too long at that stage to get him out of there. So what looked like a really amazing calculated play from Viper, and I, I think we can still give him credit for that, does end up getting punished here as they commit the heal forward. Flashes for this, gets the kill, and then this is the moment where he flashes for the stun, but it's instantly cleansed. And then he gets the full stack of passives here with his autos, flashes, gets the double. Yeah, and you know what happens next. And now Viper doesn't have flash. He is Ezreal, but let's see if he can even get close to the wall. The answer is going to be no. Perfect time for Cuz. I mean, that is just pristine. And right when it's pushing in, they can even freeze it here if they want. Cuz can use the oh. Ezreal shift, oh. too, to get over the wall. <laughs> Oh, that bottom lane is just over. It's nasty now. <laughs> it's not looking good. Um, the kill was also barrels, by the way, I believe, with Ignite there when he flashed for it. So Viper's aggressive play doesn't pay off. Now, he does get an early Sheen. Yeah. But the early Noon Quiver feeling much better right now for the 2-0 Kai'Sa. You know, sometimes uh, the play backfires. Yeah. Sometimes you just get too aggressive. Maybe uh, maybe a little bit too much time spent in the LPL. Okay, that was my one for whoa, the year. That was whoa, my one whoa, for the year. Whoa. That's it. That's the last one. I respect Viper. He's a great player. Actually, I think he would have yeah, he would have been fine actually if he didn't take um, the turret shot, right? He was pretty yeah. close to not having to take that. And in that case it wouldn't have even been close. Like Def would not have gotten any kills in that in that case. So uh, jokes aside, here is Team Faker going for the Drake. And yeah, Faker teleported bottom, didn't use his ultimate, so still has that here. But this is very greedy. Yeah. Again, their, their bottom lane is kind of getting crushed right now, but at least as of this moment, exactly somewhat item parity for the bottom lane, I suppose. Steph still has to go back and spend some money. Jovi gets a lot of pressure relieved during this moment here. He's finding himself about 20 CS down nearly. Baker looking for the greedy ward clear again. He'll be fine. <laughs> but what, like last time, does not actually get the last hit on the ward. Yeah. So yeah, a little bit less slippery than the Akali. This is a really calculated play from Faker to teleport bottom, though, because he has his ultimate, so he can head back to lane. Doesn't need to use it uh, inevitably here, but actually had the lane pushed out enough because he's winning that matchup so hard that he could actually send himself over there, look for the contest on Drake, and then come back mid. Neither team ends up with a Drake at the end of the day, however. We just panned to the top side for just about three to five seconds, and that was like the first time of the game. It's like, okay, yeah, you guys have seen Gwen versus Nar. Anyway, uh, let's look at the more interesting lanes. I love. It's so funny how we just go back to comfort. <laughs> I love Peter coming over here and getting that cannon minion here for Chovy. Again, relieving the pressure, getting him that extra money, taking some time to roam while uh, Deft is backing. This is the punish. 
gets on a Viper here before he can close this is on the wall. Peter has the follow-up. Hook, very clean punish. And the gold lead for Faker right now is massive. Consider that he has Cull Gold on top of the TF passive on top of a 20 CS lead. <laughs> and the Cull's not finished yet. It's pretty decent, yeah. Morgan getting a little bit caught out here. He gets clipped just a bit. He has to flash the Sonic Wave. So that's going to be the end of the flash here on Morgan. He's going to have to TP back to this lane as well. So a bit unfortunate for him. Was at the end of his Meganar there when he did go for the trade. Yeah. So pretty big lane advantages here for Team Faker, keeping themselves ahead in gold despite the kill deficit here. But Death Squad will grab the first dragon of the game, and yet again we're robbed of the Chemtech Soul. I guess we'll have to wait for the other uh, show matches in the other regions to see that one. <laughs> yeah. Not happening here tonight. Now, bottom lane here is... Uh, it's going to be totally in control of Deft and his buddy Peter from solo queue. And they're not quite going to be able to push a turret plate, but it's fine. They're still getting an immense amount of pressure. They're denying farm away from Viper. Still keeping him very far behind. It's going to hit those Ezreal spikes a little bit slower in this game. It's definitely a game that could go longer, though. You know, this is... Uh, you do have a lot of proactivity in the comp of Team Deft, but it certainly takes a little bit of time to really feel confidence to start grouping up as a team and to look for those uh, opportunities. Toby has his catalyst now and starting to stack that tier. So, you know, we're kind of getting to the point where we know where he's going with this build. And this is going to be a pretty big spike for him in the lane because it gives him a lot more sustainability. Viper seen on a ward here. Looks like he wanted to come up and potentially look for a gang and control of this Herald, but doesn't actually need that much extra control. Just is going to go over to Willer here without a hitch. A lot of money in his pocket. 300 gold. As now they're trying to move up to the top side here. We do have Meganar about to spawn. And no flash right now for Duty. He's in a lot of trouble. He's going to have to try to somehow weasel his way out of this one. He's going the opposite way. As, okay, he's not going to get hit by the dredge line. But it does not quite matter as... Can't run away forever. Not against those champions. Yeah, no leeching Leer, so there was no way he was really going to be able to survive long enough there. You could see Willer was coming over, trying to set up for the kick knockback to give him some extra time. Doesn't take the Q. Viper going to grab, during all of this, an extra plate, so they don't hard contest the Herald. And he grabs money here. Herald goes over to Willer. Yes, Dudu dies for it. But you're feeling pretty good about... Uh, what you've got on the side of Team Faker here across the map. This is going to be a little painful, though. A lot of CS lost for Dudu. Yeah. Teleport almost ready as Willer's trying to pull this back. Yeah. Delay some of that. It is a cannon wave, so should just lose the one melee. And after all, Team Deft still enjoying the bottom lead, at least. They did get that early break. Here's another look at poor Dudu. It looked like Willer was going to be pathing up here to help defend him and then potentially look for a Herald drop with Faker taking ult. But Faker can't ult through because Caspin's on top of him. You can see that on the minimap. And, you know, he'd started blue buff. So, unfortunately, Willer isn't close enough to actually delay there for the Faker ult to come through. And if they end up winning that exchange, 3v3 top side, they can grab plates. And the Herald play is obvious if they can make that happen. But... And we're all on the same page. Didn't know that rotation was coming. That's why Dudu got kind of caught with his pants down a little bit, had to go so early. Yeah. There was like that one opportunity where he did dodge the dredge line as, okay, let's see what Toby can get done here. Stun card does come out. And Toby just kind of back away. Doesn't know exactly what's on the other side. Maybe got some things of barrel nearby as well. So, I mean, he doesn't really have any damage. Actually, none at this point in time. So, yeah. he's just chilling. Just farming it out. And uh, Viego, another one of those annoying champions for Glenn, which is uh, really can't get away from it. As here we go, we do have the TF up on the top side. Now it's going to be Morgan in trouble. Still no flash. He was able to get Willer back there, but it does not matter. As he will be made quick work of. Nice trade back in the top lane. Willer using that Lee Sin brain, you know, get the execute damage there. 
Probably would have liked to give the kill to Dudu there, but we'll guarantee it and locks it down. Picks up uh, his first of the game. He'll secured. Well done. And going to be the Herald drop right in the mid lane. Right after that, Faker will pick up some extra cash here. Should be able to Actually, get a ton of plate money. I mean, Faker has so <laughs> much money right now. He got two plates. Or actually, I guess the one. But the two plates stick it down. But either way, getting a ton of damage to that mid turret as well. This is uh, one of the issues of the Cassif in rank, which is uh, maybe why it's still a little bit early. Game not exactly panning out the best here for the side of Team Deft outside of the bottom lane. As Zingo's Deft, trying to make quick work of the bottom lane, able to get the flash out of an Ezreal is always pretty nice. It's now Barrel in a little bit of trouble. There's not much help. A TP is coming in from the side of Team Faker as the hex flash over the wall. And now they re-engage, and now everybody from the side of Team Faker is coming in. And as Toby's looking for the shutdown in that back line, but he just doesn't have any damage. He will eventually pick it up, and the Kaisa Depth just pick up another one on the front side of that fight. So two kills to the side of Team Death. Yeah, this is massive. I wonder if this is enough for Chobi to buy that first item here when he backs after this wave. Um, we don't have a look at his gold right now, but he's got to be getting close. We're hitting the 14-minute mark here, and he wants to be getting it soon. He is looking for a back right now. A lot of time bought there by Barrel in that exchange. His Glacial Augment slowed everybody on the chase, but there just isn't enough damage, unfortunately, for Team Faker to get out. Chubby trying to push this wave. Looks like he just needs a little bit more money. The timing of this is so critical for the Cassadin. Faster you get it, faster you can get your 16. The Death commits here to the ult, forces out a flash, but then he's up here pretty far. And then I think the idea here for Team Faker is, look, I've got Twisted Fate, I've got Teleport, but the, by the time Faker can TP in, the damage has been done. Glacial Augment buys a ton of time here on the Collapse, but look who shows up. It's Chovy, and Chovy has insane mobility. Even at this stage of the game, he's level 10, doesn't even have 11 yet. They just do so much. Picks up some extra yeah. money here, and this is a big swing back in the direction of Team Death. It's a huge lack of damage there for the members of Team Faker as well. I mean, it's it's a TF with one item, and it's an Ezreal who's severely far behind. I mean, you're not really gonna have enough to chip anyone down. Like, they nearly got Peter, which by the way, it wasn't the best target, but it was the only one on vision for Faker, I believe, at that moment, who did gold card him. And uh, that's what they had to work with, and it wasn't quite enough. And by the time they get this mid turret, because they've been trying to put the pressure onto Chovy in the laning phase, and then in the mid lane, right? Like, or rather, with the Herald in mid, trying to take uh -oh. out the turret. Okay, Morgan. He does have flash. He's not even going to bother using it. He knows he's dead. No hope for him. And this time, the kill will go over to Dudu. But Chovy gets a whole turret, right? And this is the trade-off, right? This is what I was going to say is they put a lot of pressure on Chovy, but now he's equalized CS. Now he's taking a CS advantage. Now he's taking a kill and a whole turret. He's free farming in the side lane. Yeah, he lost his mid turret, but he's casting. He's got high mobility. He's level 11. And that Rod of Age is going to help him hit those higher levels even faster. It's a little bit late, but better late than never. And now you've got some win conditions as Team Death. You have two Drakes. You have this Cassadin who's starting to come online. You, the insurance policy for the later parts of the game doesn't feel impossible. The game doesn't feel lost because you've got also this Kaisa that's super fed. Yeah. And I think some of the win conditions here for Team Faker are, are now falling by the wayside. You're really going to need to try to control side lanes with this Gwen if you can. Get her more fed. Use this Twisted Fate. Pick people off on the side lanes. Try to punish Chovy somehow. Because if he gets free farmed, it's looking good for Death right now. <laughs> Yeah, he's already level 11. It's going to be a Rift Tail tier to the side of Team Dept. Chovy only having the one stack on the Rod of Ages, so maybe just a 15 minute -er this time around. It's okay. You can tell he was stifled for farm. He'll get there eventually. There's that second stack. So, yeah, maybe 1430. Still pretty good. Yeah, seems so. You saw Faker was trying to push that side lane. Definitely will have an option. You see, even due to his. Roaming down towards the bottom side. Maybe they could try to bait Morgan in or something like that. And notice the gold difference we've been talking about all game. 1,200 delete for Faker, despite a 0-0-2 score line versus a, you know, Cassidy in that matching CS on one kill. It's just the Twisted Fate plus the Cull. But what he can do with that money when we get to the later parts of the game is not going to compare to if Chovy can have the right setup in these team fights. what he can do especially with the change to the E that you were talking about earlier in team fights itself. And now he's just gone over here to the top side. No punish yet. He's going to get a large portion of this turret's health. In fact, maybe all of it. Does in a little bit of a wonky spot. Has to Heartbreaker over the wall, but he is being 
pounded down as the Romp is going for a little bit of a run as well. And because of this commitment, Toby gets free turret damage over here. Cuz gets away, yes, not for free. We'll have to expend his flash. But Chovy is just ticking the clock forward. He's Hashtag got the, worth. Yeah, he's got the winder at the back, and he's setting the clock forward. One more level, one more level. Now we're getting to the scarier parts of the game as Chovy starts to get money online. That Chovy CS starts to show through. We'll get a free back here as well as delete a ton of the farm on the map. Yeah. Still some of those win conditions you mentioned for the side of Team Faker, but definitely much more difficult to execute them from behind. You know, you, you get a little bit less of a leash in the side lanes. You, you don't really have an Ezreal who's popping off in the, in the three, right? He's not getting huge amounts of damage done if he's not farmed up. And I think that Team Death are, are doing a really good job of controlling the tempo. You know, they're really trying to push the envelope here. They already have the first couple of drakes pretty early on. They're going to be in a good position here with the Rift Heralds coming in. It is a little bit early for the timing of the Drake, but still got a very nice chunk on the turret at least. There's a lot of vision here. Notice the control wards left of pit in that brush that Dudu, or rather Morgan, looks like he just barely didn't stand on, and the one to the right side here. So a lot of angles for Faker to teleport to. Dudu can teleport uh, flank. Dudu? Not if he dies. Okay, I mean, he is a Gwen, but he is... <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, he's miles down the lane. That is way too far. This might just be a, impossible to recover from at this stage. Yeah, that was definitely a pretty large mistake. And, uh, you know, Cuz had one, but this time it's too stern, I suppose. Everybody I mean, gets a chance. Morgan just Goomba stomped him, man. It was like yeah. plus 100 points. Just way too far down the lane. Did not have enough control. Maybe considered that his team would come over and kind of help, and they would try to group up for the dragon. But and in depth, they, they found the opportunity, and they made the best of it. That control ward right next to the hex gate, just to the right of where Viego is right now, because I think it's going to go clear it. Looks like he just barely missed it. That would have been an angle. You know, you have an angle as Dudu. You have Faker's old plus two teleports here, maybe try to look for a flank angle there, go on the edge, and try to wrap around, but Dudu was trying to be greedy here on the bottom side, and clear this wave, so as a result, he gets punished, gets slowed by the smite, the follow-up from Deft is easy, Deft is so fed, and Morgan's just gonna jump on his head, not even necessary here, Deft's probably like, man, I would've liked that kill, but I guess you can have it, we're so far ahead <laughs> in this game, this is not to yeah. mention Chovy's five stacks in, Already got a needlessly large rod. Yeah. What patch are we on with this Cassidin? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, a Cassidin's just it's it's ten out of ten for him. Like he is just having the time of his life right now. Like he could not want anything else except maybe a slightly more free laning phase. Didn't even need it. He's like, I'm not even hitting champions. I don't have my tier fully stacked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just killing that. minions. Takes a little bit longer to get that 360. Yeah, this is like the perfect Jovi champion. Like, don't even team fight. Just, just farm in the side lane. Just don't even interact. And then eventually just show up and kill everybody. After having the most farm in the game. He won't have the most farm in the game at this point. That goes to Deft, who is trying to carry Team Deft very hard in this one. That turnaround on the bottom side could be the big difference maker in this one. The Cassidy might not even be a big um, player in this game. You know, it might just be essentially over on paper before the Cassidy is even a factor. I mean, it's second item Runins at this point. If Morgan has a good setup or if they could trap these side laners, I mean, it just becomes so easy. Speaking of trapping. Yeah, this is what this composition can do. They can collapse so quickly. Depth pretty far forward. This would be a shutdown. He goes into the cleanse, but it's not quite enough. That was incredibly deep for the side of Team Deft. And yes, they got the kill, but that is a massive sack of gold now into the hands of Faker with the shutdown. This will save the turret here for Team Faker. Luckily for Deft squad, the Drake is three minutes away still, so there's a lot of time to set up and prepare for that. And Toby can just go straight back into side lane. Little opportunity here. This mist is going to help him out, actually, as nice amount of Viper damage will come through, but is it enough is the question. The answer is no. Toby is already getting in there and popping off. He just flashes back. He knows he's not going to need that. He's about to hit level 16, as that's a couple of kills now to the 3-0 Cassidy. Full mana, easy setup, comes in with a punish. The mobility that Cassidy offers you with the amount of damage he has on this buff Seraphs is just <laughs> insane. And he's already peaked. 
Like, this is a this is a, a really big overextension here because Willard can get so far away before that Nautilus ult goes off. The Death has to chase deep. And then Faker comes over here. He's got his ult and the Everfrost. But then just backing in plain sight here is going to really come back to bite Team Faker. As Peter just kites away. And then Toby's like, yep, no one's CCing me. There's an E, there's an R, R over the wall, powered auto, bam. Clean. Viper, I, I thought that ult connected a little bit better. It actually only, I think, clipped Peter? Or Looks like perhaps yeah. Morgan. Like, it didn't even really connect, and he's pretty far behind. Like, he's got two items, so he's kind of shelling out some damage, but it's not necessarily the carry Ezreal that they need at this time. It's Kraken Slayer it Ezreal, too, which I think, you know, considering the game state, in some ways is good because you need that extra big damage. You know, you're running a Twisted Fate. You need to hit those big autos, but it means that your damage output in team fights relies on hitting several autos. It's not as great as, you know, a lot of other builds for hitting Q damage. So Viper has to be up in the thick of things, which means he's in Chovy's Kassadin range. Chovy's about to hit 15, and there's one minute left on that timer <laughs> for the Rod of Ages, and the Rod of yeah. Ages will shove that clock to 16 one extra hour forward. Yeah. I think in about 25 minutes he'll hit it as Barrel's trying to make something happen. There's so much pick potential on the side of Team Faker, but feels like desperation at this point. You're you're kind of clutching at straws. You're not really going to catch a Diego or a Nautilus at this point in time. They both still have their flash available. And Toby's all 15. So yep. here we go. 30 seconds. 30 seconds until that rod hits. Set, set your timers, guys. Yeah, this is... <laughs> get your monkas ready. I mean, this is everything that Kassadin could could be, right? And we were talking about how difficult it is to work in this comp, but when you get this much map control and every fight becomes a crazy skirmish where Kassadin has free reign, full, full mobility, he's super yeah. fed. He's got a, he wants. Yeah. He has a stopwatch now. He's building towards the Zonias, which I don't know if he'll ever need to activate considering the game state. In about five seconds here, we're going to hit that rod timing. There it is. There it is. Boom, 16. The clock 30. has reached doomsday. <laughs> Here comes Shobi. He's just fearless. He's got to be a little bit careful. There's a lot of lockdown, but again, he has that stopwatch. And he's already done a nice amount of poke damage already. As oh, Peter, Peter on the flank. Nice buffer on that dredge line. Got to be a little bit careful. He's going to take the gate here to come back to the team. Probably a good idea. No need to take risks. You are in such a comfortable spot here as Team uh, Deft. Deft just going to clear this wave. And he can sort of put some pressure on this turret. Going to take it out. He's in the pit. And then he's out of the pit. And so much mana, it doesn't matter. That his ult costs a lot of it. Yeah. Even better. He's trying to do that extra damage. As in goes Barrel. They're trying to get the Wombo combo. Nice ultimate from Viper, but it's, it's kind of... It just doesn't match the damage right now on the side here at Team Deft. Now, a decent amount of poke damage has gone down onto these members, but already it is 5v4 with Barrel going down. Yeah, this is the scary part. Okay. Toby. Stun, in goes Deft as he is going to go invisible. They're trying to lock him down. The kick over the wall right into Viper. Not going to help him out at all. As trying to teleport away, I believe, was Faker. And he is not going to go to out, get out of here either. That is going to be the X-Tech Soul. And that might just be game. I mean, they are so far ahead. Yeah, wow, two back-to-back -back extremely one-sided games. We've traded it both sides here. Um, red side looking good right now. I, I mean, look. The crazy part about this is Chovy is isolated, right? And he's the one that they're like, okay, we might be able to focus him down. So much damage comes through here on the ult from Viper. And Chovy doesn't have to stopwatch. It's a crazy thing. Like, he's he's so vulnerable, but he's able to live so long. And everyone's a low health bar. Dudu can't close the distance. They want to focus down the Drake. Look at Chovy. He's like, nope, got my shield over the wall. And then this kick. Yeah. <laughs> not, not the best. And, I mean, Chovy did that into a gold card. Like, you know, the, the ref is holding up a yellow card, a gold card, whatever. <laughs> and he just charges him. And it's essentially trying to open it up for Deft to just, of course, hop in and uh, do what he did. <laughs> Which was uh, quite a lot of boom boom. And, yeah. Hextech Soul. Team Deft. Okay, trying to get on top of Deft himself. I don't Baker. know if you want to be on top of Deft right now. Yeah, Toby just getting on in there as he does have Zonius now, and that is just going to open up this fight. Everybody's just going to be thrown into the bin, as that should be it. In comes Dudu. He's like, oh, God, what happened here? The room's on fire. 
I've got pizza, but that's not going to feel too good. That is a clean sweep, and Team Depth will take this best of three. This time they got minions. There's no Victor walking out of the base this time around. Depth going to stop watch here as the minions approach. They can clear these turrets. Death time is super long, and looks like Depth has done it again. Defeated Baker <laughs> one more time yeah. in another series here before the spring season starts. And Deft and crew are going to get a set of emotes. So this is the victory moment presented by Mercedes-Benz. Valdez, what a beautiful game from Chovy on this cast and staved off pressure early. Fell behind against this cold twisted <laughs> fate, but really a seized opportunity. Deft getting those kills early on in the bot lane. Yeah. I feel like Deft got them to where they needed to be, and then Chovy was like, I am a plane and I am about to take off. And he did exactly that. Great team effort. I loved Cuz's timing to go back down to the bottom lane and really put the nail in the coffin and essentially just take Viper out of the game extremely early on and get Deft even farther ahead. Just a, a great overall game from five fantastic players. And maybe that early cuz pick from the side of Deft was was one of the key factors in getting them there. He had some big moments himself. Either way, Team Deft will get those five emotes for the five different players. And they will also play in our OnePlus POG selection event match right after this. It's, it's pretty crazy, um, the spread of player age that we have in this in the show match, right? You have players like Faker, right? Viper, Deft, right? And then you have younger players like Peter, right? You've got Willer, who's pretty young. Morgan, who's starting to get quite a reputation, but still a fairly young player in his own right in the LCK. This clash of veterans and newer players and new blood just feels like it's becoming a recurring theme, right? Both of our teams that we had in the World Championship Finals is like veteran leading newcomers, right? For both DRX and for T1, you put these two teams together, you can see what the potential is of all 10 LCK teams in a weird way. And no one is going to tell you that Peter is the best support player in the LCK, but he was the one who was left. Depth trusted in him, right? And he's performed extremely well in this best of three. And What's amazing about this series for me is, yeah, we got all these legends, etc. but we also got to see a taste of just one piece of each and every LCK team, and this series was pretty exciting. Yeah, two of the three games were pretty one-sided, but I think 10 players' skill level was showcased on all three, and the LCK's power and, and the new yeah. rise of these small or less-known teams is, is starting to come to the forefront. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got to see, you know, a little piece of the puzzle from every team, as you mentioned. We also got to see Legends popping off in a huge way. Faker having huge moments on the Akali. Deft having a gigantic game on the Kai'Sa. Uh, Chovy getting to just be Chovy and play Kassadin. I think that uh, first impressions of Kassadin on this patch, quite good with the, uh, with the new Seraphs. Um, I don't know, though. I think that teams can still find ways to shut him down, but he certainly does feel like he's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I think part of the problem for uh, Team Faker was their loss of control in the game there on the bottom side. But we're going to take a look at the Mundo dodgeball highlights. This was the top one, which ended up being the, arguably the least interesting of them. <laughs> Former teammates at it again. It was close. Morgan got himself very close to range. Lived with like 13 health. Okay. Cuz oh. was like the best <laughs> out of all of them. Okay. Uh, Cuz Cuz looks Good. extremely clean. No smart cast diff. Chua. Windowed mode diff. Ah. TD aka team diff. Okay. Okay. Love how confident. He's just so he confident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's done this before. Not not his first rodeo. Toby Faker was also a really fun one. But I think the real... Oh, <laughs> no, I messed up. <laughs> I love how he goes right up to the line. He gives him as little space as possible. That's what you got to do. <laughs> Good luck, uh, bottom team, bottom fighting. Oh. <laughs> 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 Oh, okay, okay. Yogi! 
Peter, get, he got oh. so close. He really did. Yogi, da! Get out, get out, get out. Kyukuro, I'm not going to do it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 I love how Viper played it on the top yeah. side. His mana was so low. Yeah. And like the the cooldown of the Karthus is so much faster. You can spam that one a little bit more than the Mundo can, but you spam it too much, you run out of mana, it's like, that's it. Yeah. Well, guys, we are going to, again, have the after series interview handled by Z-Sun during the break. So stay tuned for that. We are going to take a little break, and then we'll have the OnePlus POG Selection event match after that. So we'll be right back. Thank you very much, guys. We are here joined by Team Faker over here. Let's start off with Dudu. That was the last game of the season kickoff event. How was it? I got to play with such a great player, so it, you know, this never happens that often, so I enjoyed a lot. I wish I can, you know, participate one more time in the future. And during the draft, Faker mentioned Zeus told him to pick Dudu. I saw that too. When I found Zeus out, you know, maybe, I mean, Zeus is the best, one of the best top laners in the LCK, and I'm, I was so happy that he actually said so. And thanks to Zeus, I was able to play in this, you know, great event, so I feel so honored. <laughs> Little V from Zeus <laughs> in the crowd. <laughs> and let's move over to Willer. You know, it's a bummer that you guys could not get the win, but who do you think performed the best among the Team Faker members? <laughs> Me, obviously. <laughs> well, if that's so, I have another follow-up question. Who played oh, 네, the worst? I mean, last time when I saw Gwen, you know, <laughs> he was so good at it, but this game, his <laughs> Gwen sucked. <laughs> it's all of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and Faker, everyone really wanted to see your thumbs up emotes. Any words over to the fans? We have so many thumbs up emotes in League of Legends already, so I don't think they need Another thumbs up emote. And this was, you know, a show match. I had a lot of fun. I'm so happy. Last time I heard you actually wanted to do a line, um, you know, all star matchup based on the positions and roles. Next time I'm going to be a support in the mid team and 100% win rate secured by me, confirmed. Looking forward to the lane. And position all star matchup next year. Hopefully. And Vista, I watched some of your streams and you were so surprised to get picked. Oh, yeah. Well, our team you know, has a lot of talented players, you know, Zika, King and even from Worlds last year. So I was not expecting this, but, you know, uh, I'm so happy to, you know, say hi back to the LCK fans. And you also said you want to be friends with Burrow. Did you become friends with him? Oh, I'm a little progress, maybe. Burrow, what about you? Are you sure? I mean, Viper was like, let's be friends, you know? I was like, okay, I used to call him, like, Sir, <laughs> Sir Viper, but because that's his nickname online, you know? And then, like, I'm not using that Sir nickname anymore, I'm just gonna call him Viper. And Beryl, everyone, probably like everyone, chose you as the person they wanted. 
want to be friends with? Why is that? I mean, when I'm like working, I'm actually pretty strict. But when they just look at me in real life, like they might not feel the same way. It's kind of different. What about your idea? Who do you want to be friends with among the Team Faker members? I did something like this two years ago, and la that time I actually chose Viper, and then he changed a lot in the past two years. He became a new person. So, yeah, I wanted to be friends with him. Dreams come true for Viper and Vero. Congratulations. And lastly, any last message for all the fans? Thank you for showing up to this season kickoff event. And I hope you guys also stay tuned for the LCK 2023. Thank you. 네, 팀 페이커 선수들과 이야기 나눠봤고요. 저희는 잠시 후에 팀 대표팀 선수들과. <목소리> 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 We are now here joined by the winner, Team Deft Players. Congratulations. Morgan, you said you were really confident to win this match and you made it. How do you feel? After losing game two, you know, we didn't really have many options in terms of the champion pool, so we had a lot of discussion about it and it turned out great. Same question I asked to the Team Faker players. Who do you think played the best among the Team Deft members? Chovy, you know, <laughs> long time no see, bro, and you're still popping off. What about the player that didn't really perform well today? Maybe me, because I died a lot in game three. <laughs> Because, what was the theme of the draft in game three? I mean, we tried so hard to come up with the best comp during the break time, and we came up with a dive comp. And like in the previous interview, you mentioned you're going to camp bot for depth. Did it work out well? Obviously, you know. I gave him all the gold, all the resources, and he popped off. So you are the MVP of the set of team? <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work, I want to say so. And Chobi, you have so many former teammates over here. How was this season kickoff event? I had a lot of fun, especially I was able to see a lot of my former teammates, so I, I had a lot of fun, you know, great memories. For sure. And you were also a teammate with Viper and you guys were enemies today. Has it become a lot stronger than before, you know? Three, four years ago? I'm not sure, to be honest, because I didn't really get to encounter into Viper a lot. I didn't get hit by him. I also was not able to reach him, so... So we'll have to wait until the LCK begins. What about playing again, playing with Deft again? I mean, he's a great player. I would always thought so. And then he's become his performance has become even cleaner. So yeah, it was great playing against him, playing with him rather. And Deft, you said for Rascal, I really want to win today. Any words over to Rascal? I lost them, you know, I lost our friendship, but still, I was able to win this match. Rascal. I hope we get another chance like this. And I really, really wish we can play together. I mean it.
How was this event in overall? Was it fun? So this was my first time playing with Peter, but other than them, you know, other than him, we were able to have a lot of synergy in the past, you know, great memories. So this series kind of brought back all the good memories, so I loved it. And you said Peter is so cute. <laughs> then how was Peter in real life and playing together on the bottom lane? Was that uh, even cuter? Like, just like I imagined, he played so well. 네. And he's good at games. He's really cute in real life. <laughs> awesome. And then Peter. What did you feel when Duff said Peter is cute? <laughs> I was <laughs> grateful. <laughs> How was the game together with them? I mean, like, I was playing with so many legendary players on the LCK, so I was so happy. I hope to do this again. Last words for the fans. Thank you for showing up today, you know, to support us. And LCK is just around the corner, so I hope all 10 teams can have a lot of fun. Thank you. There from Team Peter, I mean Team Deft. Uh, either way, guys, we do have one plus Pog. The POG yeah. selection match It's about to happen from the winning team. So it's going to be a 2v2 with Deft excluded. He's actually going to commentate it on the Korean side. The teams will be drawn randomly. Okay, so that's the phase we're in right now. Yeah. First part, 2v2 minus Deft. Yeah. So, so you got to pick the, this isn't side selection. This is team color. Yeah, and it, it may end up being side selection, but we don't know yet. Like, Jason was like, maybe, <laughs> but we'll find out. <laughs> All right, so Cuz is not with Morgan. <laughs> they both won. They no, the other team. I mean, this is no, this is no question, of course. Wait until Peter just wrecks everybody, though. <laughs> he was pretty good at Mundo Dodgeball. Oh, there it is. He's with Morgan. Which means that it is Cuz and Peter. Okay. Which, yeah, it, yeah. The two v two. If you lose this two v two, you don't have a chance to get the one plus POG prize money, which is, by the way, one million Korean. Won. One million. One million won. So, after the two v two happens, the captain Deft in this case will actually choose one player to one v one. The winner of that will face off against the other two v two winner in a final matchup. So. Yeah. I know that sounds really complicated, but just, just hear win. us out as we walk through, <laughs> walk you through it. Um, yeah. Eventually, it'll narrow down to one final player. So, two v two, and then one v ones will be played uh, on the Howling Abyss. Yeah. Deft gets a buy. He's the captain. It's Team Deft, right? So he gets to watch this two v two, and then he'll play against one of either. Yeah. Deft gets the buy. Gets one of either Morgan or Chovy if they win, or one of either Cuz or Peter if they win. So he'll get to choose one of them. And then if he beats that person, then he beats the other person on that same team. Yeah, so, so he's you not in for, through the 2v2. Yeah, players. so he's not in the 2v2, as we mentioned. He gets that by. So he's going to commentate. And then on the caster's desk, we'll actually make his selection as to who he wants to face in his first 2v2. Um, next time, I hope he gets to commentate on the global side. But Yeah, let's get him over here. <laughs> <laughs> You and I will just start commentating in Korean with him. With well, how many uh, interviews he had to do in America, you know, I'm sure he's, he's ready to, to hang out Hell with yeah. us Western yeah. casters over here. They got to get him an al alpaca kind of hat next time, not a rabbit one. I feel like we're messing up because the Korean commentators are wearing the Year of the Rabbit hats. All right, here they go again. All right, guys, by the way, it is the Year of the Rabbit. <laughs> and... Uh, while the players are setting up, we thought we'd just wave at you like this. Um, yeah, we're having a lot of fun here. Next week is when the real serious stuff begins with the beginning of Challengers and the beginning of LCK. That's right. Um, for today, it's 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 been out. Hats. The word's out. You know, we we might do a more formal announcement again at some point, but it's already been announced. We are gas casting Challengers in English uh, for the LCK Challengers League this season. Um, and it, uh, we'll give you guys the stream link and all that stuff as soon as it is finalized, but spread the word. Uh, more 
Korean League of Legends content is coming. Yes. And we're also casting the LCK. That's right. Big surprise, but we're back. The Challenger starts first. Um, True. It's on Monday. Monday. And I guess it's pretty obvious. Most people know this, but there are kickoff events happening around the world. So follow your respective region's channels to check that out. Um, and uh, this is not going to be the only such show match that happens around the world, but it's the first one and it's the best. <laughs> it's the Got region em. of the two it's champion the teams, or two, <laughs> two finals teams, and Faker and Deft were playing together, and Deft won again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You tell him, Wolf. Um, He's right, though. Sorry, I just, you know, I, yeah. Monty and I have kind of been the obnoxious Korea guys for a while. And hey, you got to do what you got to do. When we win, I got to do it a little bit. Yeah. Not a lot, but a little bit. Okay. Especially because we had a couple of years there, which, you know. Yeah. Few game fives off, you know? Yeah. Few game fives off. It's okay. We got our clutch factor back, let's say. Well, DRX, you know, the former DRX roster was the clutch team, like clutchest of all time. It's, all right, here we go into draft. <laughs> yeah. So what are they going to choose, first of all? Uh, there are bands, so three bands, no Karagas. Um Just banning out because is all right. So artists three there. <laughs> My first thought is like it depends on what the enemy team picks, but just Callista Renata, you know, <laughs> like a real two v two lane. But I don't think that's actually what's going to be the best. Um, Vex is Vex? very annoying to deal with. <laughs> Gragas also has insane combo potential, so I'm not shocked uh -huh. that's banned. Maybe ban Yasuo if you're playing against Chovy. Seems like probably a good idea. Yone also yeah. a scary <laughs> thing. Also um, another choice, Yumi. <laughs> Peter has played Yumi in this time. And it is Yumi. Yeah, I mean, you could just play the sustain war with Yumi, and Yumi's untargetable, so... OP. Very frustrating to deal with. Yeah. Morgan and Chovy versus Cousin Peter. Aurelia is a good call. <laughs> it's top and mid, two solo lanes versus <laughs> jungle and support. Who made these teams anyway? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Daryl did say that jungle and support have a higher level of understanding of the game, though. Will that push them to the next level? Defeat one of the greatest laners of all time and Lord Morgan. It also works out really well for the art. <laughs> They're next to each other like the way they are. Yeah. Okay. No Morgan Renekton. Meanwhile, okay. Baker's just getting a, a closer look. Is it blind pick? I, I guess Sante. so. Three bands into blind pick. Yeah, it must be. It must be blind pick. Wukong plus Malphite. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Yeah. I'm kind of leaning towards I like the Cassante Rengar situation a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of on the same page with you. I think pre six for like, that one. Mm, there's a lot of slows. It could be very frustrating playing against a Malphite, but look, I'm not a 2v2 expert. Okay. Really? <laughs> Used to have to commentate it in Pro League sometimes. Uh -huh. but <laughs> yeah, back in the day. All right, they're going to lock it in. Double Ignite also. Yeah, you can see the reaction as it happens, too. They're like, ah, what is this? And, I mean, the Malphite is going to be rock solid against the amount of AD that Morgan and Chovy will be bringing. The, the Wukong as well. I mean, he's got some nice armor in there as well. The Rengar is an interesting one. I mean, obviously, um, you can use those side brushes very well on this map, so yeah. that's, that's one thing where the Rengar is going to be quite nice. But because both of the Cousin Peter champions here, the Wukong and the Malphite, are pretty difficult to burst down, uh, I think it's going to be really difficult to actually pull this off. Not impossible, mind you, but Morgan's going to need to stack his Q three times. And <laughs> People are, like, Alt talking behind him. People are talking behind Chovy. He's like, who is that? <laughs> Who's talking? Uh, I'm uh, the, uh, the words they're exchanging are, you know, kind of difficult to, like, get the context of. 
think they're talking about the items yeah. in a Yeah. They're like, oh, what, like, what item is here? <laughs> like, yeah. Because you think. have obviously a lot of more gold. It's like, oh, this is here. Like, oh, okay, you can do this. Like, but we don't know what the necessarily they were referring to. But see what Malphite buys here at level three with the extra gold he has. Looks like it's just going to be last. Chapter. Weren't there some big ARAM changes on this patch? I am not Peter's. an ARAM guy, so I, I, that's not my expertise. Now, Oblivion Orb seems like a wise call. He, <laughs> he's late to lane. Maybe it's a strat. Okay, here he is. Here's Peter. So, first turret blood. Sudden death starts after seven minutes. Um... And then I believe the other win condition, the first one, is two kills. Because what it says there in Korean, it was missing in the English translation for some reason. But two kills to win. Or if you destroy the turret, and sudden death begins at seven minutes. I think they're AFK wolves. <laughs> I think they just want to wait for ults. I think that's what they're trying to do is just, like, farm up level six. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, skirmishing power, not going to be... Potentially as great here on the side of the Malphite and the Wukong, but they have fantastic matchup potential against these two teams. Right? It's just like stay away. Like gold doesn't really matter. Um, it's just like stay away from Chovy's, you know, bush range. Pretty much. And then farm up level six. And then yeah. maybe they can have an ult combo. Either going to try to heal. Yeah. Try not to lose your turret, you know. Make a stand at your turret if you can. Actually, decent damage for Chovy there onto two players versus the trade back yeah. onto one. It feels like uh, Malphite certainly struggles a little bit with the mana. I, I would like for him to not use everything before. Uh, okay, there it is. By the way, right in the top right, there is the full uh, win conditions. Yep. That was pretty long. <laughs> Chovy just yeah, Rangar popping is, over. He's wise, man. Wings. Yeah, he's like a flying squirrel. He's, he's like Buzz yeah, Lightyear, like falling does. with style out yeah. of the bush. <laughs> kind of does. He uses his blades to glide. I don't uh -oh. know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was an overextension. Or maybe a bait. The ignite came out. Buzz has to back away. Peter has almost no mana. This is looking yeah. really bad. A thing. And, like, they don't have any wave there, right? So eventually they have to go in. There's the dive. Morgan tanks it up. Toby not quite able to put in the damage, but it's still a good trade for the side of Team Deft. Or rather, they're all Team Deft. Morgan and Toby. All right. Gets a back off. Well, all available here for Morgan. So Peter is like, yep, yeah, I'm just going to leave. But they might just lose their turret, uh, which would be the end. Out. This is why I was saying, like, money doesn't necessarily matter because if you back, I mean, you're going to lose so much here. And what you won't you won't regain that same value. Notice the CS numbers here are much higher for Morgan and Chovy as well. They're sitting on a lot more money. I mean, especially Chovy. Like, he's 900 gold ahead. Let me get some sustain with the Sphage and also the Bracer. Like, I think... Unless, I mean, this is just my weird theory because I, I, I'm not trying to act like I know exactly how this 2 people Give us the hard-hitting analysis. But I think unless they get a nice Wukong Malphite ult combo off as Peter hits six here, like, I just don't know how you win this one. Yeah. They could try to burst Chovy, maybe. I, I think he would be less tanky than the Cassante at this point. Even just looking at the items. And if you don't do that... Then you might eventually get worn down here under turret as Cousin Peter. They do have wave advantage for now. And this is going to force Chovy into an awkward spot where he has no rush. And this is where it gets a little bit awkward for the Rengar, right? Because he can't operate with rush here defending turret only if he has control of the lane. Oh, look at this combo. There's the ult into Cuz, but he immediately goes into his clone. So, yeah, they get a nice trade for now, but are they going to get much more? There's the ult combo coming out from the side of Cousin Peter, but the damage is not quite there. They don't layer it quite well, and Morgan is still getting huge trades out of the Wukong, but no, the knock up on the Chovy as he tries to come in. This is looking pretty good for Cousin Peter now, as Cuz is able to survive. Yeah, that last tick of the Wukong ultimate stopping Chovy in his tracks really hurts, but the all-in just so unsuccessful here, they don't quite have enough damage. Chovy's not able to harass beforehand without that brush. 
And this is going to be a really nice advantage here for Cousin Peter. Now, it's not that you have to kill both of them, if I understand correctly. It's just first two kills. So if Chovy dies here, that's the end of it. And he wants to hold control of this brush. If he backs right now, they're going to have the same problem where the minions push through and he won't keep control of this bush. So he's trying to, despite the low health bar here, I think try to push this wave in so that when he returns, he'll actually have maybe the ability to come over here. Maybe he needs, like, 50 more gold as well. Could be, like, in an awkward spot. He's just going to stay, but take a look at the items now on the side of Peter especially. I mean, he is a thick malphite. <laughs> All right, at least they got the brush. Malphite old really long cooldown here. Morgan's going to have his first, so, I mean, they got control of the wave. They can try to wear down this turret. This is actually really interesting. Yeah. Like, I'm actually enjoying this way more than I thought. I'm like, all right, let's <laughs> figure this one out. Yeah. They're just slow pushing this wave. They're trying to build up as big of a wave as possible. And if, I mean, they're pretty close, right? They're not going to stick around, though. Okay, so uh, not going to be the wing condition just yet. I think this, the the problem for this is that Chovy once again going to lose control of his Where's the timer? <laughs> Where are we at in Oh, this yeah, game? that's a good question. I'd like to know what time it is in the game. Yeah, the in-game timer. We don't know. It might be covered by the, one of the options below to win. <laughs> or covered by the top overlay. I don't know where it is in this. But uh, certainly as it is one of the win conditions would be nice. Uh, we're we're going to know by the giant circle that does uh, begin to close in. Yeah. As, by the way, it has started. So, <laughs> here we go. We don't need the timer. We can just see it on the map beginning you to close in. You willed it into existence. Yeah, I'm like, by the way, <laughs> this is a thing. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get this circle. I was just so mesmerized. I was like, I don't want the time to ever happen. I just want to know who can kill the turret or whatever. Okay. So it's sudden death now. So it's whoever dies first. Is my understanding. I, I think that I the so. the two kills doesn't really matter now. It's just down. I mean, here we go. Dies first. Circle's coming in. There it is. Nice knock up. This could be their opportunity. Ignite is in onto Peter, but again, he's just so tanky. Down to half. They've saved their stuff for now as over the top they go. Really nice layering off the combo this time. They're trying to get onto Morgan. He's so incredibly low and down he will go. That is win to Cuz and to Peter. What a really interesting matchup we saw. And the Ringar seemed suspicious from the beginning, but they used the brush so well and pushed the turret and got half of its health down, but weren't able to ever continue to control when it was time to back. They lost a lot of momentum, and by that point, the two enemy layers were just so tanky, right? The Malphite and the Wukong, who has all those extra resistance, they're super tanky, plus the layering of those ultimates works so well. <laughs> Can't win them all. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... It's just the Peter diff in the end, let's be real. Yeah, I just... It's the only way to, to understand this one. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it was a little bit of a draft diff, right? It's a no. little bit of the blind pick Arino and uh, a good read from uh, the guys on the right side, Cousin Peter. They played it out well. That first trade from both sides was quite messy. But uh, the second time, once sudden death began, that was, that was nice. So in a moment, Deft is going to choose his opponent, uh, be it Cuz or Peter. There and is. there he is, so see what he says. Look at Caster Johnny, he's got little bunny tails tied together. <laughs> Caster John looks like he's about to go on a bunny expedition. <laughs> he picked Cuz. Oh. And with how much how much Deft had nice to say about Peter this whole time, I didn't think he would pick him either. Yeah. No, he's gotta save Peter for laughs anyway. It's the final boss. And uh yeah, that's the way it's going to work, guys. If you were confused before, uh, the two winners were Cousin Peter. He chooses pu uh, Cuz, rather, and Peter will wait for the winner of the second match. So Peter just goes to the finals, basically, yeah. and he will wait there. He will still have to defeat the winner. And the rules for the next one, which is going to be a 1v1, I believe are the same. Seven minutes, and it still is two yes. kills. But, I mean, if you, if you die, like... You're probably not going to turn it around, but we've seen crazy things already today, so I don't want to judge. Yeah. Usually 1v1s are based on first kill, but 
We'll see. I'm gonna wait till the official rules come up, but I was told two kills even for the 1v1s. Yeah, I think it is. Stepping into the ring. Not sure though, because uh, we saw Faker kill Beth in the 1v1, right? And yeah. Was, uh, one kill format, under. perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Because it's like, God, you really had to pick me? <laughs> like, I wanted to go straight to the finals. Well, Cuz also got to see that Faker versus Def match, which for those who were here at the beginning or watched it a few weeks ago, no, didn't go so well for Def. Yeah. I don't think Def is going to agree on any brothers duel this time. No, no Yasuo versus Yone, I would say. If I'm Def, just pick Callista. That was my first thought. Because Callista is just so strong into almost everything. And if it's blind pick as well, if it's any squishy champion on the other side, you might have a might have problem. Now, I don't know if there are bans. There may be. There were for the 2v2. Yeah. <laughs> Toby with perhaps some advice here. Yeah. Don't Seems pick like Rengar. Figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's tense. You know, we don't normally have 1v1s like this in this type of setting, obviously, unless it's an all-star match. Well, this is essentially uh, an all-star match, but it's for it's a lot a of money. It's a golf event. Yeah. Wolf. It's a lot of money on the line, and <laughs> it's just kind of hype because it gets to this tense moment where you're like, all right, some some skill sets are going to be tested that are not normally tested, and this is a 80 carry versus a jungler, right? There's no solo laner in this matchup. It's yeah. just about your knowledge of so many intricate small things in League of Legends, how they would interact in a blind pick matchup like this. All right, now we can hear them. They're talking about the rule set. Yeah. They're like, oh, you can hear me? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, how much do you want to talk now? Yeah. <laughs> I like how the fans just awkwardly giggle when they stop talking. It's like, oh. Here we go. Bands. Yeah, he's asking for counter picks here. Doesn't want to play against Rumble. I feel like Rumble would be pretty good into Callista, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Like, yeah, try to kite me, I'll just burn you down. Yeah. I, I'm not an aficionado in Rumble versus Kayla. out. <laughs> yeah, that's the one in the skin. Zach, Zach's pretty strong right now, and I think that's a reasonable one as well with his passive view. Can't finish him off early. It'd be a problem. Plus his sustain just in general. There's the collision. Yeah, there it is. Olaf band. Yeah. What should I do? Yeah. <laughs> Please let me know. I don't know how to play 1v1s. Lee Sun's banned. <laughs> Let's just get rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> he locked <Okay>. Gragas. <laughs> he actually locked Gragas. That is official. We might have a Gragas mirror match. And I don't know if this was discussed ahead of time. I don't think it was. No. Because we could hear them like right in, from the moment that they could hear each other. Yeah, and Death was like, <laughs> it was like, I don't know. I don't know what to play. Like, I just play AD carry. And then he like locks in Gragas. <laughs> and then Cuz locks and Gragas. He locked it. And they're both like, oh, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, well, a Gragas mirror for our... <laughs> We're talking about like what spells are good in this case. Yeah, I think like, it's like yeah, didn't you see earlier like Double Ignite was uh, what ended up winning it. He's like, did you copy me, by the way? The game is perfect. This is perfect, Cuz says. Yeah, I mean... It's like trying to do runes, I think, right at the end there. As we have Snowball here for death. 
And uh, yeah, this is Cuz's one of Cuz's best all-time champions versus Death and AD Carry Parker, <laughs> who obviously doesn't play a lot of I mean, Gragas. Yeah, like to put this in perspective, you guys saw the art of Cuz in yes. the uh, in the you know he is Gragas. He is Gragas in the art. Um, just for just you know, if let that sink in for a second. <laughs> We're looking through the eyes of Deft at the moment. So I think a lot of this is going to come down to obviously the you know, unfortunately misses. A lot of it's going to come down to how many of these uh, pokes from the Q come through and then the all-in combo that finishes. <laughs> so I was like, let me show you, then also misses. Yeah. He's like, it's your first time, so you don't know, but... I think I think he was saying, like, we were talking about the items. So, Verdant, uh, I saw Verdant Barrier yeah. was taken um, versus the last chapter here in the potions. Um, Death used a lot of mana, obviously, but... You know, it's not going to end up being too impactful right now. But you see those level ups are going to come through big time for him with the last chapter. So he's going to get a ton of mana back. Here's Cuz's POV. Cuz will need to do damage with the Doran's ring to get the mana back. The funny thing about this as well is that Cuz is a jungler, so he's really good at Gragas, but his laning 1v1s might not be as good as even Death's, you know. So that's like the other part of this. Yeah, that's so fun to think about. And every time De Death trades like this and gets another level up, like he's getting closer to six, he's getting more mana back. Oh, that's still a good trade for Death. He's up on mana. Yeah, that's the big thing. Like the last chapter here ends up being such a good item. Yeah. Oh. oh, takes a turret <laughs> shot, though. <laughs> they all have the same reaction. Oh, yeah. uh oh. Oh, this He's is a dead. problem. He's oh. dead. He's oh. 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 oh! oh! He lived! Oh. He's alive. Always drink your potions, kids. Yeah. He drank his potions. He had the spell shields. He actually hit that barrel. He's okay. six now, and he has mana. He's looking for him with the snowball. Well, so on. This is going to be a lot of turret damage, I think. Cuz has to back. Well, I it's, mean, as yeah, much wait, turret damage as, like, yes. well, as much turret damage as a Gragas can allow you, and the wave is awkward. Oof. He's just, just trying to push into the turret in the back. Yeah. So he will get that done. You could say advantage depth here. He's like, what are these items? <laughs> yeah, well, <let's laughs> Which one is good? Okay, so, I was just buying MR. Never frost is the call. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're getting teaching from behind you, and Def's like, I can't hear them. <laughs> Tell him to be quiet, I think he said. Ever frost is trying to set the ult potentially, but doesn't commit. Cuz has got like all these little cat freezes that's yeah. going in. I got you. I'm going in. The the first cast, okay. Everfrost follow up to get an extra Q, but that's a long cooldown now. Cuz has a lot of MR. But mono wise, like again, Deft is gonna hit level nine and then he's gonna get more. <laughs> These Whoa. comets really Whoa. hurt. <laughs> no, that would be uh like against Sagragas, you can't actually get in there. One v ones, man. Sometimes you just let him when you cast a one v one, sometimes you just let it speak for yeah. itself. <laughs> oh the cast! Oh! The cast! That's it for him. That is kill number one to Cuz. Lines up the cast. 
He's like, I don't know if it's one or two kills. <laughs> so we're not the, the only ones. The rules did say two, yeah. but uh, he wants that um, Banshee's Veil super bad. He's going to have it in 35, and he's got enough turret health where he can just sit for it. Oh, he doesn't have quite enough. <laughs> like, you got to figure it out, dude. It's like asking questions to Cuz, Cuz is like, I don't know, man. <laughs> cooldown boots for death. <laughs> That's why you didn't get a solo kill. <laughs> why? Why do you keep trying to take my stuff? You're, you got like bad hands. Literal translation. And he's like, that's not it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Literal translation. Cuz is very much threatening him. Oh, look at that. That is the prime recall bait right there. Yeah. He wants to he wants to get him into cast range. Yeah. We've all seen this in the solo lane, right? You think you could dive the Gragas, you die. Yeah. Combo to death. Uh, the timer, by the way, shows top right. You can see it's now at 6.30. Yeah, we're so getting there. We are getting there. <laughs> 20 seconds. So the circle will appear very soon. Def keeps asking him questions because <laughs> he's like, I don't know, <laughs> you figure it out. Def's going to get one more buy before the circle starts here. A stopwatch. That might be useful for the circle, I yeah. suppose. Def just won my heart. <laughs> what a stopwatch. <laughs> and he has futures. I'm going with the, with the border, he said. It's a good day. It's a good day. So you can see it, right? He's like, oh, I see it. It goes in pretty fast. I mean, he's he's got to be careful. <laughs> okay. Seems like it is the speed of a. I I assume champion. the stopwatch blocks the circle, but like I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen this interaction before. Well, it's certainly going to deny a cast if you're fast enough. So. Oh. Oh, Cuz is up a level. Yeah, Death spent a lot of time out of lane. Uh, that was. <laughs> well, I mean, it did some damage, I guess. Push him into the circle. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a way, right? And oh! <laughs> Ignites down. Death is desperate. It's not looking good for him, though. He does have the stopwatch. Uh, no, he's. <laughs> There's the stopwatch, and he's probably going to die here. The sustain, though, the sustain. Nope, not quite enough. <laughs> Jeff will go down, and Cuz will fight Peter. Oh, man, what a silly way for it to end. Just one silly <laughs> cask, and then Cuz is like, all right, push him out of the circle. Cuz, Cuz was like, uh-uh-uh-uh. I feel like Cuz knew the whole time like what the ending of the story was. And yeah. I thought the stopwatch buy was cute, but it's not going to do much for you in this situation unless you could dodge the cask. Yeah. That, he had to be quicker on that. He had to dodge the cask and the combo. If you dodge, like, everything, right? Because, like, the other Gragas is going to buffer. You know, he's going to throw cask. He's going to buffer his E. It's going to all kind of come at you at once. If you dodge all of that, and even he could, like, potentially body slam through you, it probably wouldn't happen with the minions. But it was it was a cute idea, as you said. But because just stacking the MR, said. And the circle came in, you know, at a... You know, almost create like a sumo ring, you know, mm -hmm. um, and there's just not there's not much you could do with the range or the splash of cask. Like the knockback of cask is like you get knocked out of there. <laughs> Look at this. What is going on here? It's like, yeah, you got a good idea. How about you, Toby? You got some <laughs> you got like coaches. What is going on? Two supports, you know, Yeah. two supports ganging up bonding together yeah i mean if i'm barrel i'm like I, I i've got some i've got something riding on this this is support pride right here it's like let let's show those other guys 
because they were saying like support is fifth, you know. I think it was it might have actually been Cuz who was saying like oh support is like fifth in terms of potential skill level in a one v one situation. Might have been yeah, it might have been Cuz. I feel like it might have been Rascal. I can't remember either who said it. Because Rascal was interviewed. Of Maybe it was Ra It was one of those two. I think. Um, I mean, this gets tense, man. I. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what... Teemo. No, that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not it's not great. It's definitely not great in the short lane. What level were they when it ended, actually? Do you recall? 11 like to 12. 12, right? 11 to 12. Def was down a level. So you can't really get... Like, there's no champion you can really get 16 on. No. Um, I'm trying to think... What would you do in this situation? Yasuo. <laughs> I think I might just go Callista like you were talking You might about. get countered by some stuff. I think especially against Death, the Callista was a great ban. You, it's hard because you have to think, like, does the other guy, is he good at Callista? Or, like, is he good at some pick that I'm considering banning? It might just be a wasted ban. There's, like, so many champions. <laughs> What if you went for a Leandris champion and then built Leandris early and just kept burning carefully, like some sort of mage champion, even something like Orianna? Syndra. You might die to a lot of stuff, though. Like, you might end up just straight up getting exploded on yeah. by a more aggressive champion. But if you're expecting it's going to be a tank again, maybe just a Leandris build might eventually burn them out. Yeah. That's the fun part of blind pick. It's like, well, <laughs> you got to pick something that's going to be good in pretty much any scenario. The um, the other problem too is that like, from, just from what I've learned from these matches so far, the turret angle matters a lot more in two v two because you have twice the champion damage to kill a turret. Whereas in the one v one, it seems very unlikely the turret will actually be killed. So yeah. if you don't get those two kills, whatever champion you're running needs to be one that can actually survive in the circle. So if you ran a Leandre's champion, didn't get those two kills, you'd have a big problem if you're a control mage in that tiny circle against a champion that wants to close the gap on you. Yeah. And now they're just going to ban good uh, champions for their role, which is <laughs> what we saw Cuz uh, do against Deft as well. This is like one of those moments where I'd want to like phone a friend to LS. I'd be like, what would you do? You know? Um, all right, Gragas is banned. He's got a video coming out, right? <laughs> yeah, Gragas banned. Probably a good idea against Cuz. Poppy as well. Karma ban is interesting. I mean, Karma, especially if you build her in a certain way, yeah, that, that, that could definitely be very annoying. The Peter is definitely very good at this the, now. Like, Running out of time. The angle of fighting, you know, reworked Olaf in that uh, pit, you know, in the, in the circle sounds miserable. Fighting Poppy in the circle sounds miserable. Yeah. <laughs> Nunu. He's asking, what are you going to play? He's like, I'm playing Nunu. I don't think he's yeah. playing Nunu. I think Cuz is going to play Nunu. You think so? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I think Cuz is just a pro he's, troll, man. He just didn't ban. Cuz, oh, Cuz is a fantastic troll. He's got a great trolly personality. He didn't Warwick. ban. The Warwick sustain is pretty crazy. If you think about it, the barrier Warwick, yeah. he just all ends you. And you die. <laughs> Listen. Okay. I'm just going to play what I want. Do they know yet? I'm not sure if it's locked. Yeah. No, it's not. Okay. Darius could burn in a different manner. Yeah, Darius is a different a different idea of the same thing I was talking about. And he's going to be strong in the circle, too. <laughs> he said, oh, it's not bad, the matchup. He says he doesn't think it'll be bad against Warwick. The Q, the Darius Q is going to be so important. Yeah, I think Warwick will have trouble in the laning situation. Like, Peter might have to just kind of sit under turret, right? For yeah. a little while. It's either that or you kind of like all in, but it's, it's kind of rough. I mean, 
I don't like Cuz's chances here in this one. I one. really do too, especially when you consider that Peter is a support player who's playing Warwick into a Darius, and obviously they've both played a ton of games top. I mean, they're League of Legends professionals, right? But... I, I don't know what happened with the runes, but I guess it all worked out. I don't know if he was talking about a summoner. Yeah, summoner yeah. spell. I think Ignite is correct. He's, he's like, he's, he's good because he's young. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. Showing respect to the younger players. All right, let's see it. All right, Sheen double longsword. It's like, ah, I don't know. Sword, gun, sword. That's smart. Executioner's calling, gonna reduce the healing for Warwick in the lane. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. This is, I mean, a lot of this is going to come down to what Peter decides to do here. I think the Darius aspect of this is pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> Land cues, get in there, you know, take the trades. Warwick, I think, is a lot more nuanced. If you get hit by a sweet spot Q from Darius, it's like almost over, right? I mean, well, he's like, I need to read this. <laughs> he like, doesn't know what Warwick's W does. I think it was, I think it was Barrel's, uh, Oh, they're going in. I mean, there's the fear, but uh, how did that not hit? Uh, he it. might just die anyway. As the barrier, yeah, I think he's going to bleed down anyway. Yeah. Peter's like, wait, what does that champ do? <laughs> okay, well, that's one kill. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's talking about how this is what the top laners should teach him. Yeah. I Chovy and Morgan are uh, are literally tutoring him right <laughs> right next to him. I like the Darius pick. It certainly looks very good against the Warwick. <laughs> Why aren't you saying anything? Why aren't you talking? Don't you want to check what the skills do? <laughs> You're not a bad bro. You're not gonna. You wouldn't do me wrong. <laughs> I'm strong. Yeah. <laughs> if you try to get CS, you're gonna uh, literally faint. You're gonna, you know, fall over. Oh, 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 <laughs> you gotta fight! You gotta fight! Cuz is trying to bait him so hard, man. The thing is, I think Cuz is right that I don't think he fights him at 7 minutes either. <laughs> Peter's saying that uh, probably Barrel, but someone told him that uh, he wins at 7 minutes. Oh, well, there's a little bit of damage there. I mean, the ult is going to be a game changer for Peter if he can ult him under turret while clearing a wave or something, but I mean... Or if Cuz messes up and takes turret aggro and Peter ults him, like, there's a way, but... Like, if Cuz messes this up, I think it's it's... Feasible. Seems unlikely. Even the then, yeah, it had it would have to be like sudden death, because even if it gets the one kill, it's just one to one. It's like ah, it's not gonna be enough. If Peter, okay, hear me out. Peter saves his flash, and then fears Cuz out of the circle, and then ults him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, very, very nuanced, as I was saying. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Peter dying very early is a big problem for him. Yeah, I mean, he's just uh -oh. on nothing. This might be it. Uh, yeah, this is this is rough. He's going to get pulled in. Fear comes in, but the bleed is down. I mean, cuz doesn't even need to ult him. Yeah, he, he could have, like, potentially gone for it. Doesn't need to. <laughs> Three minutes left. Oh man, getting that heal was risky, but he knew he had just enough cooldown time. At least that's what I assume he knew. <laughs> I don't know how well he knows the Darius cooldowns. Cuz is just trolling him the whole time. He's like, I'm going back. No, I'm really going back. 
Oh, he is incredibly strong. <laughs> the Korean commentators also just kind of letting it sit, you know? Yeah, they're like not commentating this at all. They're just letting the players cast. Yeah, he's like, I know you're in the bush. And he's like talking about the W and stuff. He's like, I'm, a, I'm home. <laughs> There's the pull. Oh, the pull, though, the timing on it was yeah, a little off. Yeah, the fear lands onto him. I think Peter has to somehow fight for the circle kill, but he's already lost a life. I don't even know if it matters. We're one minute twenty out. <laughs> just wait, just wait, yeah, just wait for the uh, seven minutes. Uh, <laughs> Fear is going to land, but it doesn't matter. He's dead. That is the end. As Cuz is going to put an end to that, and he will win at the one plus POG selection event match. He will take down the other 2v2 of Chovy and Morgan, and then he will wait and take down Deft, and then Peter. Yeah, you know, not not our most likely hero, I'd say, in the one plus here. Jungler, the best laner. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz will take it, and... Yeah. You know, I mean, it, once once that first kill came through, it seemed pretty doomed. Mm -hmm. Peter may have been able to ult there at the end under turret, but didn't do it either. Yeah. Cuz just <laughs> doing his pose, he says he's going to put on the emote. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. He, I think... Oh, no. We'll, we'll, we'll see what he uh, is going to do with the one million won. As the player of the game presented by OnePlus ends up being Cuz at the end of this all. It all started off with... Him and Peter, actually, who ended up fighting in the finals. They had to start with the 2v2. He was playing Wukong. Peter was playing Malphite. So he was very happy to take down uh, Chobi and Morgan. Yep. And then we had the Gragas match with Deft. And in the circle here, Deft just totally whiffs, unfortunately, and uh, <laughs> is doomed. Oh, stopwatch. All the poros coming out to cheer. Morgan is like, <laughs> just play Darius. He's like, you know what? <laughs> and it really was just that easy. Peter got killed early, which kind of led to this very eventual, obvious death. Look, everybody, everybody can relate to Peter because everybody has had their first lean opponent, Darius. Yeah. Like we've all had that. It's miserable. It's not fun. You have to. It's it's a little bit nuanced. You have to learn how to play it. Yes. Uh -huh. And guys, we do have an interview. I'm going to hand it over to Jisung for the translation. Thank you very much, guys. We are here joined by the one plus player of the game, Cuz. He won a million Korean won with this win. Congratulations, Cuz. Thank you. Thank you. I have so many questions right now. First off, how do you feel to be the one plus player of the game of the season kickoff event? A lot of people underestimated junglers whenever we talked about, you know, the role all-star event match, and I kind of proved myself, and I kind of proved that junglers are so strong. Which game was the trickiest among the player of the game matches? Well, playing against Rengo was really hard, but after oh. winning that one, I felt pretty good. Well, your opponents got a lot of advices from Burrow, but you also got a lot of tutoring from Chobi and Morgan. Yeah, and also Faker and three people were watching me, you know, the solo laners were watching me, so, you know, that's what matters in terms of what we won. Yeah, I mean, Morgan was giving you so many advices and you were like, yeah, thank you, thank you. So what kind of communication were happening? It was like giving me a lot of tips, like, Heimer Dinger will be so good when the circle closes. So I was like, I can't play so I'm just going to ban it. So that was a great kind of call from Morgan. 
So what are you gonna do with the prize money? I got a lot of you know support, support from my teammates, and then like they were also you know we got you, bro. I was helping you, bro, and I was like maybe I'm gonna you know share this with my teammates. Lastly, any messages over to your team captain, Def, to pick you and your teammates. Even after Rascal asked him to pick him, he decided to pick me instead of Rascal, so I want to say thank you. And I had so much fun playing with this like, amazing player, so I was so happy. Now let's invite all the remaining players onto the stage to wrap up the season kickoff event. Thanks to the 10 players, we were, able, we were able to have a lot of fun. I want to invite Faker and Daph to close out this day. So how was this season kickoff event? Well, you know, I got to play against, you know, the LCK enemies before the season started, so I had a lot of fun, and I wish this um, happens more often, and I get more chances like this. Even though I lost today, I was able to, you know, hang out with players from other teams, and also playing, you know, games before the season starts, kind of, become a huge motivation for me as well. I can't wait for the season to start. Then any final message over to your team faker, team dev, teammates, and also the fans? They did great, but it's a bummer that we lost. But still, you know, I think this was a really nice opportunity and experience for us. So thank you all. And also for the fans. I, I saw so many fans out here today, so I cannot wait for the LCK to begin, and I will do my best for the fans. Yeah, I played with Peter for the first time, and also my old friends are here as well. I got to play with so many of my former teammates, so it brought back so many good memories in the past. And also, thank you for coming out to Lowell Park to watch this match. And this will be the end of the SKE Events um, interview brought to you by Subin and Jisun uh, translating. And I'm going to throw it back to Valdez and Wolf. Thank you. Oh, there we go. There I am. Thank you, Jisun, for that awesome translation. As always, absolutely fantastic. Was a really fun match uh, tonight. You know, I think the 1v1 match at the end was really exciting. I think my favorite was just taking a closer look at 13.1 with all these elite players and the amazing skill that was showcased today. Just a bite-sized appetizer for the 2023 season that will be starting just next week. We're just eight days away from the LCK season starting and just a week, uh, or just under a week away from the Challengers League, which we'll yeah. also be covering. So. It's a good time to be a Korean League of Legends fan. Absolutely. There's going to be Korean League of Legends cast here in English every single day of the week. So if you want, you can watch it with us. Seven so days a week, baby. Seven days a week. We'll be here. Probably not going to have these cool rabbit hats, but uh, we had it today. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy the kickoff event here for the LCK. Hope you did it justice. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and of course, we will see you guys next week, so thank you once again for watching, and we'll see you then.